Um, are we back? I think we are back. Just waiting for some confirmation. Aha! The um, stream is back. Oh, I can hear myself. Back. Great. So that's cool. Yeah, basically, what happened, oh, guys, it wasn't like a huge issue. But basically, um, I needed to end the stream and restart the stream anyway. Because the stream limit for YouTube is 12 hours. So I had I would have had to restart it at some point anyway, and it just happened. I was we were up, and Beth decided to make some toast, and the toaster blew the fuse in the house, and the fuse that it blew is the same fuse that my router uses, and the, so the router went down, which meant that the internet went down, which meant the stream died, but I've fixed it now. So now we have internet once again, and we can continue on our mission of staring at the screen. Um, uh, waiting to get to an encounter, basically. Oh, yes, there's no slow mode. Oh, goodness. Oh, my gosh. This was a... Uh... I remember this being a massive pass. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. I'm going to flip the uh, the ship back into this. Actually, you know what? I'm going to make it a little... So for anyone that wasn't here... Um... Anyone that wasn't watching yesterday, I'm not intending to use these little quick saves that I'm making every now and then, but I just want to capture some of the key moments in quick save files, so that if I wanted to go back and take, like, screenshots or, like, f thumbnail photos, potentially, for the video when this is all done, then um, I can just reload those quick saves. Uh, I don't intend to use them. Cool. So if anyone wants to know my local time, it has just gone 8 a.m. You can see my system time, so I've woken up. Didn't sleep that well, to be fair. Um... So I sound a bit groggy. I, I always sound a bit groggy, to be fair, in the morning. Um, yes, I know there's not slow mode. It's fine. There aren't many people here right now. There's only 300 people or so. Uh, once we get closer to the mun, I'll do an at everyone on Discord and make another Twitter post. Then we'll probably have a few more people coming in. Although, that being said, it's probably... It's probably going to go to the sub boxes, isn't it? And then people are going to start flooding in. So let's uh, try and sort this out. Uh, oh, this whole thing again. It's so... The live dashboard on YouTube is crap. And um, it's really hard. I think you've got to go into edit video. No, I remember what to do. You've got to go on your YouTube account. Oh, you can't even do it from YouTube Studio. So you've got to go back to YouTube homepage. This is really engaging content, I appreciate. Um, uh, YouTube Studio. Oh, there's a new summoning salt. Oh, Starliner docked to the International Space Station as well. That's cool. I'm just looking at my uh, news feed of the stuff I missed while I was asleep. That's cool. Um, live dashboard, that's what I want. Uh, there we are, slow mode. We'll set the slow mode to 45 seconds. So that should be... That should be done now. So, how long did the previous stream go for? Let me uh take a ganders. Because I need to... Oof. The problem is, I didn't want the stream to end that soon, because I've basically now got to get back to Kerbin in 12 hours. Which should be okay, because 12 hours is 8pm, and my plan was this would be finished by, like, 6. <laughs> um, oh, how do I... 
Okay, so the previous live stream was 10 hours 50. So that was pretty close to spot on, actually. Sorry, I'm not being that engaging at the moment. I'm not looking at the chat or anything. I'm just sort of setting up the live stream still. YouTube's live stream interface is just garbage. <laughs> and they've just like try. They keep trying to revitalize it. And what it does, it makes it more confusing for everyone. Because then you come back and everything's completely different. And everything's moved again. And it's changed all the tags. So it's now the, the category for this live stream is how to and style for some reason. Even though... All my live streams are always gaming, and the game is always Kerbal Space Program. But I have to set this up every single time I do the live stream. Uh, and the tags, the tags have gone. I mean, I guess you don't. Apparently, you don't really need tags anymore. But I'm just going to type in anyway. KSP, Kerbal Space Program, Matt Laun, Matt Laun Mon. Probably enough. Uh, don't want automatic chapters because I just don't trust YouTube. Um, schedule it. Well, it's it's scheduled for a time before right now, so I guess that's okay. Okay, I'm now going to check the page and make sure everything is still there. Here it is. Cool. Oh, I was going to... Now, now that we can just relax a little bit, I'm just going to open my curtain. I think let some light into this dusty room. I'm just going to finish my uh, my drink. I forgot to say, I just realised that my um, stream UI has gone, hasn't it? But I don't know why. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh, I'm such an idiot. I was like, where's my stream UI? It's because I'd scrolled down the page slightly and it had, like, cropped off the top of the live stream box. Um, so, yeah, I'm an idiot. It's early in the morning, guys. Should we check on the Kerbals? After their long night cruising to the Mun. So C S uh, L J R one has suggested. Um, uh, uh, sorry, I was just looking at something. <laughs> so, um, making like a third stream and make it easy to make the video. Like, um, my plan is to not edit this video. I'm just gonna literally just like publish the live stream as a vod. Um, cause I don't know, I don't know if it needs editing and um. The quality of like editing a YouTube video is just gonna like be a bit weird. But if I publish it as a VOD, the quality is like a bit more understandable because it's it's a YouTube stream. <laughs> and I think oh, I think we had a new um, channel member, didn't we? Uh, Academic Sports has become a member. Did I miss any super chats overnight? Um, Isaiah Jankowski uh, sub super chatted two dollars. Thank you very much. Uh, Joe Colvin Super Chatter, ten dollars. Ruffle, I need to sleep now too. Night all. Wolf Horzo Super Chatted, five dollars. Hey Matt, if you were if you were to name a space agency, what would it be? Other than Matt Lown Aerospace. Well, I would probably call it Lown Aerospace then, if I can't have Matt Lown Aerospace. <laughs> uh, I'm not really sure, to be honest, what I would call it. <laughs> The problem is, like, going through the Super Chats from, like, nine hours ago, it's a bit awkward, isn't it? Because all these people are probably asleep. Because, uh, obviously, it's uh, early in the morning for the UK, but it's still, like, uh, it's early hours for most of America, isn't it? Like, 3 a.m. But, like, it's midnight on the West Coast. <sighs> Slow chat is off again. No, it's not, is it? So 
Someone says, how long will this take in all? It, I imagine it'll take another eight hours. No, nine hours, I would anticipate. We're now 8.11, aren't we? Basically, the Mun landing should be done by 10 a.m. today. Slow chat is off. Oh. Yes. God's sake, YouTube. Why? So let's go back into YouTube Studio. So, I mean, it is, it's saying that slow mode is on. Obviously, I, I believe you guys <laughs> that it's not. Because obviously, if I were in the chat, for some nefarious reason, I would say, like, a YouTube studio literally cannot connect to the live stream. It's saying connecting to live stream and... Like, it used to be, like, a video editing thing, so you can just edit the live stream on the fly, but now YouTube insists on making, like, this whole YouTube studio platform, and everything is separated, and, like... I, I, I don't know. Oh, hang on. I think it's on again now. That's so dumb. I think it's fixed. I'm going to test something. I literally, I don't know what to tell you, because it's not possible. Like, YouTube's, like, garbage, garbage stream UI won't let me edit my current stream. It will only let me set up a new live stream, and I'm not setting up a new live stream. But it can see the live stream. That's the thing. I can click on it, and then it just has a, an infinite loading bar. It won't... And I'm pressing the edit button, it won't, it just freezes. Um, let's see. It's fitting that both live streams begin with, like, me just struggling with tech issues. <laughs> Aha! I have found another way. You can force the old stream UI by using a Chrome extension. And I've used that, and that has allowed me to enable slow mode! Aha! <laughs> it is done. And now the fuse is going to blow in the house again, and we're going to drop the stream, and it's, we're going to have to do all of this again. Whew.
Yes, but thanks for letting me know slow mode is on. <laughs> Sweet. And now the chat's dead again. Epic. That's what we want. So, um, I'm actually getting a bit scared. <laughs> um, because... Actually, I'll have a sip of water, actually. My throat's very dry. <laughs> I'm a little bit scared of like crashing because the toaster's died. Okay, Beth, can you unplug the toaster? I'm just gonna message Beth on the stream because I don't know if she can hear me. Beth, unplug the toaster. There. Thanks, guys. <laughs> this is like <coughs> how how this is how Gen Z talk to each other. We just one of them starts a live stream and then chant messages the other of the stream chat. Oh, oh God, there's a nail in my back pocket. That was really painful. Let's go. I didn't miss the stream. Well, the stream is like literally 20 hours long. So, I mean, you'd be doing, you'd be a pretty strong, you'd probably struggle to miss it. So, let's see, you've got 56 minutes. It's a little uh, pan around. Look how far we've come from Kerbin, though, eh? And it's kind of cool that like that's happened in real time. <laughs> like it's, it's kind of cool to wake up and like yeah, they've just been like cruising all night, and now we're nearly at the run. Can you imagine if like this is what KSP multiplayer is like? Because <laughs> I don't know how they're gonna do it. Because obviously you need time warp for Kerbal Space Program, right? Because obviously this is like possible it's possible to do a mun mission this stream is evidence of that so far but you can't do like an Ely mission <laughs> in real time so you need um time warp but then how do you implement that so when one player time warps it doesn't just time warp for everyone sort of thing it's like i've been playing a lot of um open ttd and T open TDD, you kind of in single player, you kind of need the ability to time warp every now and then, just to generate, just to let your trains and stuff generate you some money to carry on expanding your network. But when you're playing with multiplayer with friends, you can't time warp, so you kind of build a little network. They have to sort of sit there for like half an hour, just waiting for money to come in. You can start building more, and it was a bit of a painful experience. So uh, I'm gonna flip the camera back to the man. Actually, I'm also going to set a timer on my phone for 55 minutes. So, 9.10 will be when we're sort of looking at doing that burn. Burn time 0.2 seconds. That can't be right. Oh, yeah, I know. So, you've got to activate this. 28 seconds. So, it's fine. So, let's see. We want to set an alarm. What time is that? 8.20. So, if we go to 9.10. 50 minutes. Cool, that gives me four minutes to sort of faff around. Oh, we had a super chat, didn't we? Let's have a little look. Um, it's just a scroll up and it scrolls on KSP as well. Uh, Dreddink7 has super chatted $5. Matt, in all the years I have been watching, it's the first time I've caught a stream while I was kerbling too. Cheers and fly safe, my dude. Fly safe as well. I, I guess I couldn't, can't really steal Scott Manley's MO, can I? Pilot cautiously as well, my good fellow. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not doing something as crazy as this, a real-time mun mission. What was I thinking? <laughs> I will literally be so sad if it crashes on the mun. Like, I'm literally, I'm petrified, and I'm worried that my, like, the pressure I've put myself under, um, 
I'll just like crack under pressure and I'll crash it or it will land and it will flip retrograde or something like that and flip over. Luckily, I think the lander itself is pretty foolproof. Like, it's it's a wide base. It's pretty, like, squat. It's got very good landing gear. And uh, I imagine that if it did flip over on its side, it would be fairly easy to sort of roll it over. Haven't tested that, and I don't plan on testing it. But I think it could be possible to salvage. And yeah, I've got loads of um, redundancy solar panels as well. Hopefully your save file doesn't corrupt. Yeah, I mean, it should be fine. This is a fresh save file. I didn't want to introduce other craft to, to, um, <laughs> to potentially mess things up. So this is a fresh install. Whew. Yui says, just use quick saves. No, that's against the rules. Like, you might see me use it. Watch your Discord. If you want my Discord, Quasar Blade, it's in the description. Um, I don't want to use quick save because it's not really in the spirit of things. There's no RCS on the lander. Yeah, I know. I, uh, I noticed that about 30 seconds after I launched, but I couldn't be bothered to go and add it. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know, we've got RCS on the command module, so we can just do all the docking with the command module, and I'll just be doing the lound lazy method of docking anyway, so we don't actually need any RCS at all. What time does the Kraken show up? Yeah, that's what I'm worried about too. That's why I am, you'll you'll see me making occasional wick saves like now just then, just in case the Kraken attacks. Like, sometimes I've got a Kerbal out on a ladder, the Kerbal has climbed down the ladder, and then when they get to the floor, they glitch out and just explode. And I'm like, well, if that happens, I am just going to load a quick save because that's not my fault. <laughs> like, so, um, yeah. Oh, I need to um, quickly close this notification on Streamlabs. I can switch to map mode, yeah. There we are. So that's where we are. And, uh, yeah. That's why I've, uh... That's why I've not been using map mode, because this isn't, this isn't as fun a screen, I don't think. <laughs> but also, my nice stream UI, it doesn't really... doesn't really fit. I suppose the map filter's kind of... Can I drag this about? No. Whereas it fits beautifully with the altimeter. Alt altimeter? I don't know what it's called. The the altitude gauge. Actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to switch that to terrain. What about being a space center? Is it me? Am I the only one? Like, this is like a map of the Kerbal Space Center. Like, there's the runway. There's the launch pad. But I only ever see a helicopter. I never see the Kerbal Space Center. I just see a helicopter. Does anyone else have that? Let's start a little chat conversation oh alpha cat face has pledged um donated two dollars with the word space thank you very much oh the starfishy um super chatted as well i just completely missed that uh 9.99 hopefully your safe file doesn't corrupt i hope so too and thank you very much Quasar Blade, yes, this live stream is instead of a, a normal Ker Kerbal video. <laughs> Golden Top S, I legit just thought it was a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> well, have I just like blown people's minds that this is actually not supposed to be a helicopter? It's a map of the Kerbal Space Center. <laughs> yeah, look, it's, a clear, it's clearly a map, but yeah, it does just totally look like... I've got to be careful not to click the abort button because that's going to just toggle that decoupler. Uh, 
uh, Lin- Lunius or Ionius. I don't know if that's an L or a capital I. Uh, what tea? I don't, I don't drink tea, actually. I'm not a big fan of tea. Prefer... Well, I don't really drink hot drinks. If I want, like, caffeine, I'll have, like, a, an energy drink. And if I want any other drink, I'll just have water. Or, I guess, if I want alcohol, I'll have beer or whiskey. Um, don't really drink hot drinks. Um, occasionally, in the evenings, I might have a caramel tea to um, wind myself down. But caramel tea, even. Oh, yeah. Um, other than that, I don't really drink hot drinks. Ooh. I'm still sort of waking up. <laughs> I don't usually wake up this early on Saturdays. But I do it for you guys. So keep them super chats. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I want to actually check a couple of things with the live stream, actually, because if I had to edit the slow mode stuff and all that. Okay, that's working. So I'm just like going through the uh, video edit settings quickly. <laughs> Space Rocks 290 US five dollar donation. Thank you so much. Hey Matt, I don't know if you remember me, but you actually talked to me on Discord. My Discord is Green Dog 19. Back then, it was the astronaut. I, I don't, I don't, I don't remember. I'm afraid, but I hopefully it was a, it was a nice exchange. Thank you for the donation. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 45 minutes. Great. <laughs> the stream overlay isn't masked out properly. Yeah, it was like super lazy. Um, the I did change it slightly, so the red bar at the top was just solid all the way through, and I'm like, actually, it'd probably be good to see the. Uh, the altitude gauge so i just took like a uh the eraser tool in photoshop turned down the uh hardness to like zero just did a couple of taps with the eraser to get that fade and i was like that's fine that looks great because then if i do a different game i'll change the eye so the middle of that bar isn't faded out and that's my uh that's my that's my fascinating tale <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we had another super chat. Musical Wolves uh, donated two US dollars. Coffee on the Mun fund. Keep helmet on, though. <laughs> I didn't read that very well. Should I try that again? Coffee on the Mun fund. Keep helmet on, though. Uh, yeah, that'd probably be a good thing to do. Oh, there's been another super chat. You're going to nail the landing, Matt. I believe in you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something to say, and I, I couldn't. Uh, yes, I, I I hope it goes well. Like I say, like I don't remember the last time I messed up a mun landing. Like I, I I like to think that all things considered, I'm reasonably good at Kerbal Space Program, but I'm just sort of deathly afraid that I'll accidentally land on like the side of some crater or mess it up in some other way and screw myself. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't happen. Ugh. We've got another 44 minutes. Hey Matt, console player. Not a good one though. But I was wondering if this will be posted as a VOD. Yes, it will be. Uh, the other stream will be posted as a VOD as well. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, for those of you who weren't here earlier, the live stream went down. Uh, Beth decided, to, my girlfriend decided to make some toast. And then the toaster decided to die. And it short-circuited the house. And the tripped the fuse and the fuse that the toaster uses is shared by the uh the internet router in my house so when that happened the internet went down and the stream died so the game was fine like my pc continued to run my pc wasn't affected 
but all the plugs downstairs were. So uh, I sort of, I, I paused the game, like I, I didn't time warp or anything, but I, I paused the game, had to sort of faff around, get the stream up and running, and uh, and now we're back. So that's why there is, um, if you, you can't rewind the stream very far, you can only go back about half an hour, and that's why. Um, yeah, so the uh, other stream that was like 10 hours 40, I think, before the great toaster debacle, uh, that will go up as a VOD. I'll just publish both at the uh, the same time because I'll probably change the thumbnail a bit. So I'll probably, the thumbnail for this stream currently, I'll probably use that as the first VOD. And then this VOD here, well, it's a stream at the moment, but when this is a VOD, we'll probably have like a screenshot from the MUN, which is another reason why I'm making quick saves every now and then. Like you'll see me making quick saves. I don't have the intention of using them. I'm just using them as like a place. I'm just make use. I'm creating them as as a way of bookmarking certain events in the uh, mission, so I can go back and take pictures and stuff at a later date, which is what I generally do in videos. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys, can we? St we we get it. It's funny. Um, do Elu in real time. Ha ha ha. It was stopped being funny after the seventy fifth person who wrote that. Let's let's just leave it now. Yeah. <laughs> um, Fell Knight Gaming has uh, donated two Canadian dollars. Uh, thank you very much. I wanted to go to Mars, but this is making me. I wanted to go to Mars, but this is making me. Is that a reference to something that I'm just too out of touch to understand? <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, Makundan, the space enthusiast, I will give you a shout out. There you go. I think I'm starting to wake up. Uh, ho de oh, ho ho! Oh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Name. Ho Hodiok has donated two thousand of that currency. I love your videos. You, this is the, the latest super chat, guys. Go check out that channel. He's um, much better at Kerbal Space Program than I am. So, um, yeah, go check that out. Good channel. Uh, ho I always pr just see that as Hodek. Even though I know that's not even how to pronounce it. Um, so I'm like, oh, it's Hodak. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wait, that's not him. It's a bit like how earlier we said, like, I just see a helicopter when I see the map of the KSC. And as it turns out, I think everyone <laughs> sees it as a helicopter. So I'm, I'm glad to know I'm not alone there. <laughs> what the hell? How are you not tired? So, I actually, um, I went to sleep. <laughs> I woke up about uh, half an hour ago. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been, I've been asleep for like the past 10 hours or so of this mission. So yeah, I haven't just been awake, just staring at a uh, non-moving spacecraft. I know it's not non-moving, right? But it's moving so slowly you can't, it's not a discernible amount of movement. Harrison Fenton Fern has pledged a very specific £1.79. Why don't you use Maneuver Node UI in the bottom left? Um, I'm not sure what you're asking. Oh, you mean this? Whoops. I am using Maneuver Node UI. That's it there. Can you change it? Advanced Orbital Info. Oh, look at that. Oh, Musical Wolves. Again, thank you. <laughs> I see the capsule and think it's Starliner. So far, none of the thrusters have failed, which is, uh, it puts us better than Starliner. <laughs> Pushcat has just landed on Juna. Everyone give Pushcat a little congratulations in the chat. <laughs> I've been watching since the beginning and very tired, about to sleep. Who's been like... <laughs> has anyone here like actually been watching uh, since the very beginning? Because <laughs> I feel like... For like, you know, eight hours or seven hours, however long it was, I wasn't here. <laughs> 
So the stream is probably much better, admittedly. Matt Lown, favorite planet? Ooh, I do like Juna. Juna's a pretty fun planet to visit. Uh, I don't know if I really have a favorite. I mean, if we count moons, then I guess Late's pretty cool. And I quite like Drez, because it's a bit of an underdog. And Drez does have like a lot going for it. Like it's pretty boring in the sense it just looks like the Mun, right? That's where the joke comes from. But there's a, a lot there now. Like there's a um, there's the canyon, which is like one of the most interesting geological features in the whole of KSP, in my opinion. Then there's the Dresteroid belt, which again is really, really interesting, I think, hopefully. And um, I'm sure there's an Easter egg on there now. I don't think it's the crashed Tesla. But there's, um, there's something. Hmm. Random seed. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, when did you start playing KSP? I started in 2014. Um, bought the game, got into it, and uh, the rest is history. Made my uh, first KSP video in April 2015. And uh, yeah, been uh, going ever since. Just chugging along. It's somehow been seven years since that fateful day where I uploaded a uh, submarine. I don't know if anyone really knows my origin story, so I'm just gonna whilst I've still got 35 minutes to talk. <laughs> Basically, I was a member of the Kerbal Space Program subreddit, and I noticed a lot of the users had these like custom flares next to their name. So some users would have Master Kerbal Nought, some would have Super Kerbal Nought. And I'm like, I want that. How do I, how do I, how do I obtain that? And it turns out that every week there was a thing called the Weekly Reddit Challenge. So they started off as things being quite mundane, like, you know, just go to the moon and back, post screenshots showing evidence that you did in fact do that, and then we'll give you a flare. And then by the time I sort of started playing the game and joined the, the Reddit, it was things like, well, the, the first week I did it, the challenge was to build a submarine and launch it to Eve or Lathe. And if you want to do the uh, hard mode of the challenge, you um, have to launch a Brahmos style missile from the submarine. So um, in order to get the, so there were three, wasn't there? So if, if you wanted like a little logo next to your name, uh, like an icon representing the challenge, then you had to just do normal mode. If you wanted to have Master Kerbal Nought next to your name, I believe you had to do five hard mode challenges. No, no, if you wanted to get Master Kerbal Nought next to your name, you just had to do a hard mode challenge and complete it successfully. And then to get Super Kerbal Nought, you had to do five lots of hard mode, I think. Or you had to do Super Mode Challenge. So that, there was a mode above hard mode in these relevant Reddit challenges where it was just the uh, ambiguous impress me and uh, I'll give you Super Mode. It was something along those lines. Anyway, to cut a long story short... Um, I was like, I don't really, I can't be bothered to make an Imga album showcasing all the bits because I'll, I'll worry I'll like miss something important or I won't quite show the right bit of UI and it won't be that fun. But I really enjoyed making silly little videos in my spare time because that's how much of a nerd I am. So I'm like, I'm just going to make a fun video. So I made a fun video and it got a lot of views and then I just sort of didn't stop. And now it's sort of become like a sort of second career, really, <laughs> which is kind of crazy to think about. I feel like I've sort of cheated life a bit. Like, I'm a very lucky member of my generation. Most people my age can't afford, struggle to afford, like, a house and stuff. So I'm so lucky that I've got kind of a second income to sort of help, help with things like that. <sighs> Matt, do you play Space Flight Simulator? That's the mobile game, isn't it? SFS. I've got it. I've got the full version of the game. I didn't really like how power trippy the Reddit mods were on that subreddit and it sort of turned me off the game a little bit. I mean, I just, I'm not a mobile gamer. Um, I, I'd never really enjoyed playing games on my phone. Like, mobile phone games to me, I just like, it's like Flappy. I still play Flappy Bird. That's how much of a boomer I am. Like, I, if I'm going to play a game on my phone, it'll be for like a minute or so whilst I'm like waiting for the bus or something like that. Um, usually, I'll just go on like Reddit um, if I'm on my phone, just wait, trying to pass the time. I don't really play mobile phone games. 
Wah. Wah. Right, I'm just gonna go to the loo, grab another glass of water, guys. I'll be AFK for a couple of minutes. I'll be right back.
and I'm back. <sighs> Let's see if I missed any uh, super chats. No. SFS is on PC and on mobile. Oh, that's interesting. People want me to make SFS videos, and I'm like, but it's going to be vertical video. So I guess, to be fair, YouTube Shorts would be a good conveyor for that, but I don't know. I feel like it's sort of... Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't really have that much interest in playing it. <laughs> it's like I've got Simple Rockets, too. I think I've fired Simple Rockets, too, up for like, like five minutes. Didn't really get it, and then uh, never played it since. <laughs> Musical Wars again! You're too much money now. Stop super chatting. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, though. Yeah, uh, you're two two US dollars. Thank you. Um, AFK appreciating floaty kerbals. Oh, Mars man, no maidens. I can't wait to play Elden Ring. I. Uh, I still haven't got around to playing it. <laughs> I was kind of waiting for like FromSoft to fix all the issues with the PC version of the game. Um, which I've heard it's better. It's still not perfect. I'm in no rush. I'm I'm still... I'm, I've, I'm replaying through Dark Souls 3 at the moment. Just to kind of get myself hyped up for Elden Ring. And I'm on the Nameless King. And I was just sort of like, Ugh, I'm just going to take a break. And then the last time I played was like six weeks ago. <laughs> so I need to get back into it. I need to finish the Painted World. I've defeated Champion's Grave Tender, and I'm just working through the village to get to Sister Frida, but I just hate the Painted World. It's just such a rubbish area. The Sister Freed fight is cool. Uh, very frustrating, but cool. Um, but it's just such a slog to get to it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then I've got to do the Ringed City and Soul of Cynthia. When's the next burn? So there is a timer on the bottom right of the screen, which is rapidly ticking down. And what's good, guys, as well, that you might have noticed, is that I have Earth time here. So you can see the total time elapsed. And it's not the normal Kerbal thing of, like, one day, six hours, or one day, four hours, or something. It's just going to show the hour count in total, so 11 hours, 24 minutes. Normally, that would have said one day, five hours and 24 minutes. But, uh... You can actually change it to be Earth time. So in Kerbal Space Program, a day is six hours. So normally the timings with like time to maneuver node, etc., etc. Sorry, I knocked a nail off my desk and I had to pick it off the floor because otherwise I'll just forget about it and then stand on it at a later date and stab myself. Uh, yeah, so a day in um, Kerbal Space Program is six hours long. So it's that I, I thought for the purposes of this live show, it'd be easier for everyone to plan timings and stuff. If it just says the normal hours, normal timing based on a 24-hour world. Ah, oh, the jam has given me five pounds as mum mission funding. Thank you very much. I've never enjoyed staring at an ominously approaching rock more. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, the jam. Yeah, it's uh, it feels like we're not moving, but then every time I kind of glance at the screen, we are definitely getting closer. And actually, this is quite a good moment to bring this up because you can see my cursor happens to be right on the edge of the moon. You can kind of see the movement of the moon relative to that cursor. It is slowly infiltrating the cursor space. <laughs> <laughs> if any of that made sense to anyone other than me. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, man has donated uh, five dollars. Uh, this reminds me of that charity stream where someone drove a rover to the North Pole for eight hours. That sounds horrific <laughs> to me. Like, at least for this stream, I don't have to actually do a lot. Most of it is just sitting watching the screen. Uh, and letting the ships do all the work. Really, there is only one challenging part for this mission. I guess there's two. It's the landing on the Mun. That's, like, the hardest part by far. And then there's taking off from the run. I've got to make sure I don't accidentally crash into the side of a crater. <laughs> and I guess I um, decided to make this an Apollo-style mission. So um, that adds a layer of complexity as well. I guess it's also difficult to do the ascent from Kerbin, because like, 
when I did it, I was like, I'm under so much pressure, I can't make the rocket flip over or anything. But at the same time, it was so early on in the mission, it wouldn't have really mattered. I could have just done a launch abort and then relaunched because uh, it was only like three minutes into the live stream. Whereas uh, now we're uh, clocking on to almost 11 hours or over 11 hours into the stream in total. This is like a second live stream though, because if anyone just joined, I aware there are, I'm aware there are more viewers now. Um, what was I going to say? There are more viewers now. You might be aware that the stream died because the uh, my toaster short-circuited my house and the internet went down with it. So we had to flip the fuse and then the route took like about a minute to come back online and then the internet came back. So the stream went down. But I would have had to stop the stream at some point around that time anyway because YouTube videos don't have a time limit. Or like the time limit is something stupid, like 100 hours or something. But... Um, if you want to make a VOD of a stream, it can't be longer than 12 hours. So I would have had to split this into at least two live streams because my anticipated mission time for this is uh, 20 hours in total. Whew. Cool. I've got another sip of my uh, water. Yeah, I should probably elaborate. My toaster didn't short, short circuit the house. The toaster died, and it tripped the fuse. But I don't know. Is this what is this the case for other countries, like in American houses? There's a fuse box, like a consumer unit, and there's a load of switches in it. And if uh, a fuse gets overloaded, it just flips the switch and kills the power to that particular circuit. And this particular circuit was shared by a, most of the plug sockets downstairs, including the, I want to say plug sockets, that's what we call power outlets in this country. Most of the downstairs power outlets are on this circuit, um, and that includes the router and it includes the uh, toaster. So I think if I'm doing live streams more in future, I should probably get an, a, a UPS for my router. That would be a good investment. Can you get UPS for routers? You must be able to. Although I guess then it's complicated because then I'd need a UPS for my modem as well. And then it's like, uh, I'll probably need a UPS for my computer. And at that point, there'll be like batteries all over the house. I think it's just, we just chalk it up to just one of those things that happens. Wow, we are rapidly approaching the moon. We're 20 minutes until moon orbit. Let's see where we are. Oh, we're still not that close, are we? This is 32, 32. The other question is, where do we land? There's a mun arch here. But I think we should probably just keep things simple. The other question is, do I land immediately, but we land on the dark side of the mun? Or do we wait and then do the burn like here? So we land on the light side, but then that's going to add, you know, 20 minutes more to the live stream. I think we're going to do that, though. We'll land on the light side, because really, I can't afford to mess the landing up. And um, that's it. <laughs> that's it. And uh, if we're landing on the dark side, we'll have to um, launch on the dark side as well. And it's like, let's just, let's, just, let's just get to the light side for a minute. I think we'll be better. We'll be better, I think. Ugh. is getting a bit sore from just talking so much like all day yesterday and today just having a, just a little soaking in the ambiance
someone's been, people have been super chatting. So I'll just be like staring into the void for a bit. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, we've got that one. So Simon has super chatted $8.99 New Zealand dollars, I believe. Matt, thanks for educating me in KSP, but I still can't get further than out on the Mons. Just keep trying. I mean, the Mons is not the easiest destination. Like, Minmus is much easier than the Mons. The fact you can get to the Mons is a great start. Go to Minmus, you'll be pleasantly surprised how easy it is. And then it's not that much more difficult to get to Duna. Um, I suggest just doing a one-way mission to Eve. Like, <laughs> lol, every mission to Eve is one way. But, uh, like, just send, like, a rover or something to Eve, because Eve is by far the easiest planet to get to. And it's the easiest planet to land on. But it's also the hardest one to leave. <laughs> so, um, go do, like, uh, Eve Lander. Just a one-way Eve Lander, like the Viking Landers that NASA did on Mars back in the day. And um, that'll give you some practice on how to get into planetary encounters. And then you can try and do a Juna return. Uh, that would be my advice. So, uh, question mark, the VTuber Ch, which I think is short for channel, has super chatted uh, $7.99. Hey, is it Armenian dollars? I have no idea. Sorry about that. But uh, you can get uninterrupted power supplies with multiple sockets built and a built-in power board. Uh, yeah, I know, but like my modem and my router and my PC are all in different rooms of the house. Like my PC is upstairs. The router is in like the hallway by the front door. And the modem is in my living room. Because where the... When the people... Like when I moved into this house, it was like an old couple that had died, basically. So that's how I, that's, I bought the house from like the chain. Chain free. And uh, they literally, there was no internet line into this house. For the first couple of weeks, I had no internet in this house. It was really annoying. So I had to have um, the internet company come around and install a fiber optic cable coming into the house. And the only place they could run the cable was into the side of the, uh, into the living room, basically. And I'd already kind of set up where my router was going to go in the hallway. So I had to run cables underneath my floorboards to connect everything up together. It took about three attempts to get it all, like, set up properly. Because um, I've got like a, I built like a server cabinet in the cupboard under the stairs. When I say server cabinet, I mean I've got an Amazon Basics shelf with like things like my uh, my backup hard drive, like my cloud backup, and uh, the Hive heater and a few other sort of internety things that I don't ever need to look at. They can just stay there. Um, so they're all connected to an Ethernet switch. Then in the hallway, I have my router because that's sort of central to the house, so it's got good Wi-Fi for everyone to access on their phones. And then I got my modem, and I thought, well, I'll run an Ethernet cable from the modem under the floorboards to the Ethernet switch in the server room. Have a single cable go out to the router, because then the router just handles the Wi-Fi, and that's it. And then everything else comes out of the Ethernet switch in the server room. I then, when I did that, I did that, sealed the floor up, and then I realized that doesn't work. It has to go from the modem to the router, and then to everything else. Like, the router has to still process everything. I just, I'm that tech illiterate. This is probably like really basic to most people, but I didn't realize that. So then I had to reroute everything. So it went all to the router and then all to the Ethernet switch in the server cabinet. So that was annoying. And, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's all done now, basically. <laughs> and in 10 seconds, we'll have been streaming for an hour. One hour post toaster debacle. Uh, baked pixel eater don't seem to be getting any close to the mum. We definitely are. I mean, it's kind of crazy how, like, I remember I was eating some cereal. Like, I was actually lurking on the stream before I started talking. Like, I was downstairs eating some cereal, and I just had it on my phone just watching the stream to make sure it was still up and running and stuff. And I was thinking of watching it. And I was there when the view suddenly changed to be in the mum swim. And I was like, ah, oh, mum swim influence. <laughs> The toaster then died about a minute after that. So, yeah, I'm glad I caught it, though. I'm glad I saw the shift in sphere influence. Um, Ors is the Australian dollar. Yeah, I know that, but it was like, I thought it said a dollar. Like, a dollar was just the word a, not the u. Unless I just... Yeah, I'm looking at it now. I mean, I'm looking at Streamlabs for my Super Chats, not YouTube. So maybe Streamlabs just didn't just show the UI properly. But anyway... Thank you so much for the uh, the super chat, uh, Blind Eye nineteen ninety five. Um, hey Matt, how is the weather here in Germany? It storms and it's thirty degrees Celsius outside. Um, we've like had warnings about thunderstorms. Supposedly, there's a lot of static in the air. My girlfriend is, always gets migraines when there's a thunderstorm due, so and she's been getting a lot of migraines. So I guess there's one due. I mean, it's not too bad at the moment actually. It's just a bit drizzly and. 
miserable. We've had some really sunny weather these past couple of weeks, and now we're sort of paying for it, I think. <laughs> it's been a bit rainy this, this past week, although the weather's looking pretty mild today. So I'll probably go for a bike ride or something later on. My plan is that, well, I mean, if I crash on the man, then that's the stream over, isn't it? <laughs> but if I land on the man and take off and re-rendezvous with the ship, I'll then perform a burn back to Kerbin, and then that's going to be like a eight hour cruise in which I'm probably not going to just, I'm not going to sit here for eight hours. I'm very sorry uh, talking. So I'll probably go off and do something. You guys can all go off and do something as well. And then we can all come back. Everyone can set an alarm on their phones of when to come back. And, uh, thingy. Um, here we all come back to watch the final re entry uh, where I discover that I forgot to add parachutes. <laughs> Yeah, I guess most people here will probably be Europeans, right? Because uh, it's kind of morning for us. Like, the UK is one of the last European countries to be morning. <laughs> That's a terrible way. Because obviously the, the rotation of the Earth means that, like, Europe is behind, like, the UK is behind the rest of Europe. Most of the rest of Europe in terms of time zone. Because we're very far west. Favorite space movie? Mine is Interstellar. Um, that's a big question. It's not an Interstellar for me. I mean, I guess you'd have to say Star Wars, right? Like, um, uh, Star Wars: A New Hope. I guess. I get. I get that that's not really a space movie, though, is it? I mean, the correct answer is Into the Warp. Is your favorite space movie? Um, two thousand and one: A Space Odyssey. That's like a timeless masterpiece. And I watched that, like, I guess I can't say I had a nostalgic connection to it anyway because, like, it's much older than I am. <laughs> like, it came out in the 60s. Um, but I watched it in, like, 2018 for the first time thinking, like, it's probably going to be super dated and it's just one of those things that's like Citizen Kane where, like, today it's not a very good movie, but, like, for its time it was amazing. But, no, it's literally incredible. And it's even better considering the fact that they didn't even have a photo of the Earth when it came out. And, like, now so many things in that film are, like, it's... It's like looks like it could be designed today, if that makes sense. Oh, Daniel Sykes is in the chat. Hello, Dan. That's my cousin <laughs> here to moderate. Ah, oh, and then Beth. Beth has also seen, so great. <laughs> oh yeah, The Martian. The Martian's great. I really liked The Martian. I've got it on Blu-ray actually. <laughs> Kiko Latte, hey, what's up, Matt? I'm still awake watching this stream all the way from Canada. I hope you're not one of these crazy people that have been watching it from like the very beginning and never turned it off. <laughs> Oh god, look at this. Eight minutes to go. And like we're so close to the mun now that you can actually see the movement as well. Like that's how you know. That's how you know we're getting closer. Like it's no longer an immoving object in the distance. We can actually see the movement. And what are we on? So on free cam? Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, the stream cut out because YouTube has a limit and also slightly unintentional because I had a fuse blow in the house when the toaster decided to die and take down all my other things with it. So yeah, we'll have to get a new toaster today, guys. Does anyone... um? So that might be what I do. We'll do an unboxing on stream. <laughs> During the uh, coasting back to Kerbin phase, in which it's just going to be like six or seven hours of just nothing happening, I'll probably nip out to Sainsbury's or somewhere and buy a nice new toaster. So any toaster recommendations in the chat? 
Okay, actually, I could look at Amazon now, actually. No, I'm not, because it's seven minutes away to the next burn. And I know, know me, I'll go down an Amazon rabbit hole and uh, end up looking at UPSs and stuff. <laughs> <sighs> oh, I'm so tired. Where's my water bottle? There it is. Just bought this yesterday. I love it. That's a Fly Mountain Bike Elite. 950 milliliters. Didn't know you could even buy water bottles for, like, bikes that big. Like, bicycle water bottles are usually about 600 milliliters. The Science in Sport one is great because it's a bit bigger. It's 800 milliliters. And I found this one, and it's 950. And it fits in a cycling bottle cage. It's great. And I, like... I just need loads of water. I drink so much water <laughs> when I'm out on a bike. I think because I'm so unfit. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. But yeah, it's really nice to just have a big water bottle. <laughs> head cannon and the Kerbals cut the feed making their breakfast. I always like my actual head cannon for the Kerbals is that they uh, create energy through photosynthesis. Like, they have um, chlorophyll in their bodies. That's why they're green. So that's how you can justify how they can survive long distance. I mean, it doesn't justify it entirely because they would still need water, for example. But they're aliens. Maybe they can... Maybe they can, like, create energy using the radiation from space or something. I don't know. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. That was so disgusting. <laughs> I just didn't even know that was coming. I just yawned and then burped. Oh, disgusting. Imagine time warping by mistake. <laughs> Two people just said that back to back. Kwe K Kusa and Jokalinen. <laughs> um, yeah, my big fear actually is accidentally just through muscle memory. Like I'm so used to just doing a burn and then just immediately hitting time warp. It's a bit like, I'm assuming a lot of you have played first person shooters, right? Oh, my alarm is going off. I set to remind myself I went to do the burn. So I'm gonna activate the engine. There we go. Uh, yeah, like when you die, you're like, oh, I need to watch the kill cam. But then as soon as you like die, you just immediately start spamming the F button on the keyboard to just automatically put you back in the game. So even when you wanted to do it, you just naturally pressed skip, like, kill cam anyway. And it's a similar sort of thing I'm worried about doing. So, I think if I do that, we'll just accept that I wasn't doing it to cheat. I literally just forgot. <laughs> Rebind the time. Yeah, there were a lot of things I should have done. If I ever did this again, like, maybe I could do this like a yearly thing. Like, on the anniversary of Apollo 11 every year, I do a real-time mum mission. And I think if I were to do this again... I would write some sort of auto-clicking script, so it would just, like, cycle from, like, outside the ship to inside the ship to the map screen and then to uh, outside the ship again. And it would just cycle through that, like, once a minute. Um, and when I say I will create a script, I mean Veneer, my Discord moderator, will write a script <laughs> for me. Um... <laughs> just, just kind of make the live stream a bit more visually interesting, especially when I'm asleep. And the live stream is basically just having to sort of entertain itself, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, look how close we are to the man now. Oh my god, guys. I'm like getting really... I've got butterflies. I really don't want to mess this up. <laughs> oh my god, he forgot. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, to be fair, someone jokes saying, now do this in real solar system. But actually, that might be quite fun, because then that is literally the same as an Apollo mission. But obviously, that will take multiple days. And the problem is, is like, I have a full-time job Monday to Friday, so it's hard to work that into my schedule. That's why I started this uh, Friday night. Because I come back from work, had enough time to sort of have a quick bit of dinner, set up the stream. And it wasn't even that simple, because there was massive issues with the computer constantly going blue screen of death for no reason and none of us troubleshooting could figure out why uh, but it hasn't blue screened of death uh, you know for this stream so i don't know what fixed it i uh, we did so much we ran some like windows diagnostic script in command prompt i updated all my geforce drivers which are my cpu temps check my power supply temps it was all fine so 
And we looked at the system logs, and none of us could figure out why it was blue screening. But then it sort of stopped. Like, it blue screened about five times whilst I was trying to set the stream up. And it made no sense at all. But I'm glad it's not done that so far. God, the skybox looks so good, doesn't it? Okay, so. This is very exciting. Got a minute to go. If you have the fuel, you should land on Mimus. I think we probably do have the fuel to land on Mimus, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, Windows moment. Kilroy713 has donated two US dollars. Uh, some new toaster money and put the router on a UPS. Yeah, I mean, I live stream so infrequently that, like, it shouldn't, in theory, be an issue. But uh, <laughs> it might be worth something considering. I'll, I might consider it if I do more live streams going forward. The thing that always turns me off live stream, though, is, like, having the, the face cam. I'm like, oh, I've got to, like, look presentable. And I'm like, I've got to make sure I'm not, like, picking my nose or something like that. Or, like, slurping my bottle in a weird way when I'm taking a drink, like... I've just feel a bit self-conscious. I'm always on camera, like having to look at the camera, look at the chat, and look at the game. I feel like I'm a bit more relaxed, not having to, like I'm just sitting there in my pajamas, basically in my disgusting stained T-shirt, because <laughs> I got to do some work on the house later on, so I'm not gonna put clean clothes on because um, it's just gonna get covered in dust. Got to drill some holes in the wall of my garage, hang my mountain bike on the wall. Anyway, here we go, guys. Nearly time to do the burn. I'm going to do a quick save, actually. Actually, we're going to do a quick save here. Uh, ready to mun burn. Okay. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Execute. So cool, isn't it? After all these hours, the ship then fires its engine up again for the next phase. I'm a bit on retrograde now. Just watch. Ah, oh, that's fine. Let's get Paris to like 30. There we go. Oh, it took all my strength and concentration. Like, I mustn't now time warp. I mustn't now time warp. And there we are. We are in Mun orbit. So look at that. I think uh, just as a stamp, like as an achievement alone, that's pretty good. We got all the way from Kerbin to the Mun, and we're now orbiting, and it was all done in real time. Oh, Felix Sadel has become a member. Thank you so much for joining the squad. Enjoy those emojis. <laughs> so we probably want to perform a burn, like... Like, like this. Like, just get our parapsis into the ground. So we'll do a nice sort of steady descent like this. So then that gives us lots of time to sort of coast over the surface and pick out a landing spot. And that'll be in 28 minutes. So yeah, it's adding about half an hour to the live stream schedule, but it means that uh, you guys have a slightly more visually interesting experience in fact we probably needn't delay it that long right we can probably do it like there there we are efficient so we can probably just start transferring some crew right get Jebel Dyer in there and who should go down, Bill or Bob? Probably Bob, right? Because he's a scientist. And we have a scientist uh, EVA. Uh, we have an EVA science lab in the lander. So, in case anyone wasn't here yesterday when I showed off this vessel for the first time, I'm actually going to create another quick save. LMO1. 
I'm creating these quick saves, not, uh, I've already said this ad nauseum, so I'm sorry to repeat myself. I'm just doing this for the benefit of new viewers, because I'm aware there's a lot more of you now. Now that we're getting somewhere exciting. Um, what was I going to say? Um, oh yeah, I'm not planning on using these quick saves. I just want to like have sort of chapters that I can then go back and like, because if I want to grab like a thumbnail shot or something, I've got now got like a little archive of like all these um, events that happened. So I can go back and like look for sort of thumbnail shots and stuff. So that's uh, that's uh, that's my thing. So I'm not planning on using these quick saves for like their, in air quotes, intended purpose. I'm just using them so I've got like bookmarks of like so I can go back and grab any screenshots that I want to from various parts of the mission because I can't really do that with the video because like the the YouTube chat and stuff are in the way. Cool. So yeah. Anyway, and also I'm petrified of like accidentally tapping the space bar or something as I'm like reaching across my desk or something. So I'm kind of making intermittent quick saves <laughs> just in case. Uh, although I don't know what I'd do if I did accidentally stage. I think I'd probably just go and cry. So make sure the lander definitely has fuel. Yep, because I did disable crossfeed. Yep, I did. Okay. Um, oh yeah, that was it. So we actually got an external lab. So let's see. Uh, so this is the lander can here. What I'll do is I'll just rotate the vessel so you can see a bit more easily. Here we are. So this is how the lander works. So we've got our little communications dish aerial there. I'm not going to extend that in case it hits the command module. Not that it would matter because it doesn't have any collision physics on it, but for, just for realism's sake. We have the, uh, the main ladder here. Uh, we've also got the doors and there's the little science bay. And then, basically, on the surface, Bob can use this ladder to uh, access the experiment base. He can go up this ladder, um, you know, do the experiments, and then he can, like, jump down when they're all done. The ladder then folds back up, as does the main ladder. Yeah, we'll see. I, thought that was, I thought that was quite neat. I quite liked that uh, little uh, <laughs> design. I guess there didn't need to be doors there, right, because this... Lander can is never exposed to the elements like it was inside a fairing during launch. Oh, just having a stretch. Uh, I'm getting really nervous, guys. <laughs> I really, really, really don't want to mess this up. How do you create action groups? Um, to be honest, just Google it. it you'll, it'll come up really easily, and I, I just I don't know how to really explain it on the live stream. <laughs> Matt, can we get a window view? You can indeed. Oh. Oh no, they're upside down. <laughs> he's seen some stuff, hasn't he, in his time? <laughs> they're all excited, and he's like, I have seen the many things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating a little uh, a little Twitter post and stuff just to notify the masses that this is a big part of the mission. Just over 20 minutes. So yeah, we're going to be passing on to the dark side of the moon before we perform our landing burn. Oh, good morning, Klaus. Or Klaus, I should say. <laughs> uh, good times, eh? Good times. Should we uh, have a little look at Jebel Dyer? Well, there's... Bill, all alone, just like Michael Collins. Whew. 
No, actually, I probably want to be pointing some prograde, right? Because the land account is going to be going in an opposite in the opposite direction to the to the current control point. So this nav ball is back to front from where we actually need to be. Needs to be pointing. There we are. So we'll watch the sunset from this angle, I think. Okay, and that is the twenty-minute warning. So let's see if I can. I don't. I'm, I don't want to do it on my f computer in case I get blue screen again. I'm so paranoid about that. So I'm just gonna uh, do it on my phone. Oh. Oh my god! I hate the YouTube phone UI. Like you can't choose the quality anymore. You gotta go advanced and then. Is it only in 720p? Wait, guys, is the stream only in 720p? I've got to minimize it now and check. What the hell? Why is it only 720p? Is that just all you can do for YouTube live streams? Um, settings. It's a good bit, right? It should be better than 720p. Oh man. I mean, I guess it's fine, right? 720p is reasonable. But it should be streaming at 1080 60. Like my stream labs is saying it's out. So it's obviously this seems like a YouTube thing. I'm trying to work out if that's 30 FPS as well. I've just moved the camera about a bit to see if it is 30 FPS. Just waiting for the stream to catch up. Whew. Oh, there we go. Oh, that looks like 30 FPS as well. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, 70 is good enough, I guess. Yeah, I'm sure. I live streamed before. This is the first time where it's been stuck at 720. So I guess for next time, and YouTube's stream UI is just terrible. It's awful. I don't. I don't know how to. Uh... Yeah, I don't know how to change it. I don't think I can without stopping the stream. Um. Uh. No, I can't. Oh, it's Streamlabs. It's Streamlabs has defaulted it to 720p. So yeah, it's not a YouTube thing. It's Streamlabs. I don't know why. This might be a legacy of when I lived in like shared housing and the internet was terrible and it wouldn't be able to handle 1080p. I'm sure that's... Uh... So sorry about that, guys. Next time I stream, I know what to do to fix it. But I think 720p is fine for the purposes of what we're doing. Because this is more about the achievement. It landed about 20 minutes. Probably a bit longer than that. I'm anticipating it's take about... Pro I would say 30 minutes from now we should be touched down. If all goes to plan. Uh, right, I've got 15 minutes. I'm going to go to the loo and grab my laptop and stuff. So I can make some dense social media posts. So uh, you hang in there guys. I'll be right back.
Hello. Oh, my stupid laptop. It's got a fingerprint sensor. And it won't let you type in the password until you try and fail to have it read with your fingerprint. Because the fingerprint sensor is terrible. Right. Just want to check a couple of things that only a laptop can do. Oh, let me just uh, close a couple of things on here. Someone's saying it's buffering. I think it's just your end because everything on my end is saying the stream is still healthy. Oh, Joe's Reptiles super chatted one pound. Thank you very much. And uh, Felix Sadov has become a, mem a member as well. Thank you very much. Enjoy the emojis. I'm going to shut down this engine, I think. And activate this engine. And where are we now? Ten minutes away. <laughs> I'm getting a bit nervous, guys. All right, let's uh, make some Twitter posts. Discordies, you will now have a, a nice notification. <laughs> sorry, not sorry for that. Whew. Why am I doing this? <laughs> That's my battery doing. 84% again, that's what I like to see. Oh, I need to have my taking medication. <laughs> Do you want to just burped earlier? I was just talking about bleh. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, everyone. That's almost happens when I'm just doing like space this week. Like, in other news, SpaceX at bleh. Ooh, let's try that again. Ooh, the Chaos Insurgency has just joined the Lounge Squad. by water bottles so I could stay hydrated in this like boiling hot sauna of a room. <laughs> so I'm gonna move me microphone so I can access my keyboard. I'm like really paranoid about brushing the space bar and staging by accident. That fear will like disappear once we've undocked from the command module because our lander is single stage. Please say I didn't enable staging on this. No, yeah, that's fine. Ooh. I haven't really planned what sort of descent I'm going to do, so, which is probably, I probably should have, like, 
what I should have done was rehearse this mission with like this same rocket, do the mum descent, make a note of when I started that descent, how long I burned, how long I had to wait to do the next bit, and then I could just do a carbon emulation of that. But where's the fun in that, you know? <laughs> actually gonna do this I realized that my current plan was done because I thought I'll point the correct way now but then I'm gonna need to just basically crash into the command module so what it is I'll point the wrong way undock clear this bit and then this bit can then just burn retrograde I think is what we'll do Whoa. Matt please kill at least one cur why is this guy wanting me to kill curls I'm not gonna do that uh, intentionally anyway <laughs> So nervous. Oh, God, this is literally, I can feel like. My palms sweating, and it's just a mon descent. That's the thing. Uh, but I think when there's like actual pressure, like you have people watching you, and you've kind of built your whole career on being good at this game, and also there's no possibility of quick saving, and it took you 12 hours to get here, there's like a little bit of pressure. <laughs> And I, I know 100% that if I do crash, which I think is fairly unlikely, but if I do crash, it'll 100% be due to nerves <laughs> rather than like my inability to land on the mun. I like to think that at this point I have proven myself to be somewhat competent at this game. How is Beth? Beth is currently uh, locked in the gulag after she uh, short-circuited the house and caused the stream to die. I fully hold her responsible for... Um, with the toaster short circuiting. <laughs> My palms are sweaty. Mother's spaghetti. <laughs> oh no, three minutes. I'm so nervous. And the problem is, I'm gonna just do like, I'll do a retrograde burn, and then we then just have to wait like 10 minutes to descend down to the surface. I did have a little look at some of my, or like, I don't know why, but generally speaking, whenever I do MUN missions, Apollo-style MUN missions, I should say, or I guess not even Apollo-style, just any MUN mission, where my parking orbit, I always set it to 30 kilometers. I don't really know why. It's just a habit I've got, I guess. But it means that I can go back through my video back catalog, and I can sort of see how I my descents go. And generally what I find is that with missions like this, like it's just a regular lander cannon, not something big and clunky like a nuclear powered SSTO. Um, generally, I'll do a retrograde burn and then it generally takes 10 to 15 minutes of time warping down uh, to, uh, to when I need to start doing the actual landing burn. So uh, that's how long I'm going to leave it. I'm obviously going to look at the screen. But it's hard to gauge. Like, I'm just so used to just spamming time warp. And I'm just, I just like eyeball. And I kind of know what the terrain looks like. Like, how close it looks relative to the lander. To know when to start doing the burn. And this time, I, uh... I don't know if that's going to be easy. Because obviously, the land is coming up so so Like, you know, it doesn't... You can't visually see it moving. But... It is moving. It's like when we were cruising down to the mun. It didn't really look like we were getting any closer. And then, 
But then suddenly, oh, we're here. Oh, look, guys, sunrise. Here we go. Sunrise, sunrise. You guys are all saying, like, when are you going to undock? When are you going to go and undock? It doesn't matter. Like, I'm not actually going to do this maneuver, though, that I've plotted. I just set this as, like, an indication of when I need to do a retrograde burn. I'm not going to follow the maneuver node, though. Like, I'm just going to delete the move node and burn retrograde. I'm aiming. Well, I don't know if you can really see now because I <laughs> I'm streaming in 720p, apparently. But basically, I have my uh, things down here. I'm just basically going to get my periapsis to be zero and my apapsis to be 32. And then we're just going to coast down on that trajectory. Uh, so this maneuver node is really just, I'm, I'm more using it for this, just so I can sort of plan timings and stuff. Yeah, so where are we now? So we're a little bit behind my schedule, actually. My plan was that we would reach the surface by 25 past 9. But obviously we're a little bit behind now. Uh, we're almost 20 minutes behind. Okay, so we're going to start the burn in a minute. Where are we looking at for our location? Oh my gosh, it's in this middle of this massive crater. Hmm. Where are we? It'll probably be... Whoops. Just sort of trying to work out where our landing site will be. Perhaps it's 2000. So if I set my periapsis to zero. Try to get as close to zero as possible. There we are. I'd say that's. Oh, it's like gone massively over. 500, that's fine. And we're going to add a maneuver node. I'm aware I'm past the node, guys, don't worry. Uh, so we're around here, which is dangerously close to the edge of this crater, but I think we should miss it. So let's... Uh, thank you, ship. Right, here we go. We're going to make a quick save. Burn, begin. Which I admit is not a very helpful title, is it? So we're going to undock. Helpful if I click the right one, wouldn't it? Right, let's just back off. Okay, here we go, guys. Three, two, one. So that's pretty good. Oh my god. I I naturally just reached for the time warp button. Do you know what? I'm paranoid. We're going back to the ship. <laughs> There's our target there. We're not going to hit it though because it is getting further and further away. And that's it. So let's, uh, let's deploy the little communications aerial. We'll do the landing gear as well. Lights are on. All good. And now we just, uh, now we just wait. Uh, yeah, you're right. It would be helpful to switch this to surface or nav ball. And we're going to also change the altimeter. Oh, look! Earth rise! Or Kerbin rise, I should say. Oh, and now it's like a painstaking 15-minute wait. <laughs> Where are we going to end up? Uh, we've got a really good thrust to weight ratio, so it's actually going to take not very long at all to land. Let's try to work out the altitude. Right, 
I probably want to start the burn. 3,000 meters from the surface. That seems like a safe height. And 3,000 meters is actually pretty close. So 15 minutes or 3,000 meters, we'll say. So we're currently 28,000 meters. So I'm just keeping on these two metrics. I've got the time here. This is this this time has started from when we undocked. So 15 minutes ish. Like we we burned pretty much just the second we undocked. And then obviously here, this tells us the height. And it's not the height from sea level. It's the height from surface. See, there's a difference. This is sea level. This is surface. I know the moon doesn't have a sea, but you know, if it were, if it did, that would be sea level. Uh, which isn't always that helpful because if you're landing on a mountain you'll crash and it will still say you're like a thousand meters off the surface so uh, i really really like the fact that squad added this feature this actually tells you the real that's your distance from the surface it will bounce about all over the place as i go over the undulating terrain terrain cool oh my god i'm like literally shaking Whew. Is this an orbital rendezvous mission? Asks Tom Weir. Yes, it is. Probably a bad idea, but you know, <laughs> no going back now. Uh, Dimitro uh, Ch Chakilov, Chakilov, is that how you pronounce it? Has super chatted uh, five, I think, Polish currency, I think, possibly. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the Chaos Insurgency. Oh, I already said the Chaos Insurgency. Yep. Great. I need to go to the loo. <laughs> Which is not a great time, I admit. But, you know, when nature calls, nature calls. Uh, Cosmit asks a good question. Is this on a save with any... By the way, I'm back, everyone. <laughs> so I asked, um, is this on a save with our other crafts? No, this is a fresh save. I wanted to leave nothing to chance. Uh, I wanted to give the game as little reasons for the Kraken to strike or the game to crash or the computer to blue screen of death as possible. So I just made a new quick... I made a new save game literally just for the sole purposes of this ridiculous challenge that I've set myself. Oh, <laughs> the surface is getting closer. This is so scary. <laughs> I should have brought fireworks. You're absolutely right. I should have. Oh, well. Maybe I could do this like every, every, every once a year on the anniversary of Apollo 11. I do a real time Mun mission. Might be a fun little uh, yearly tradition. What do you think about KSP2 being pushed to 2023? So on that video, I actually commented, and I think it's I think it's the top comment. 
um like it's, i think it's got about three thousand likes or something i get notifications about replies to that comment quite a lot now uh, so i think it's got a lot of traction so basically uh i um, would rather the game be delayed and be good than it be rushed and be ugh. especially because like my career sort of depends on this game being good <laughs> and i said that ex I, I, I said that to nate so i've like spoken to nate simpson like directly um, and I said that much to him. I was like, you know, no pressure, Nate, but Maya, and if you're watching this, which you're probably not, but if you are, he lives in, um, he lives eight hours behind, so yeah, it'll be, he'll be asleep probably by now, but point still stands. <laughs> <laughs> when are we doing a whiskey review? No, no. I actually woke up a little bit hungover today. Because I did a live whiskey review last night. I didn't even have that much. But I didn't eat that much during the day. Because I was faffing around setting up the live stream for far longer than I thought it would be. And I woke up I was like, I've got a bit of a headache. I think I'm a bit hungover <laughs> from that little bit of whiskey. Um, I'm not doing a whiskey review now. Because it's the morning. And I actually, I don't actually like getting drunk. Because then I can't do anything. <laughs> or any of the things I want to do. So I'll happily do a whiskey review before bed where it doesn't really matter if i'm a bit tipsy because i don't need the uh, ability to do anything other than sleep but now it's the day i want to be able to get stuff done <laughs> oh my god the ground is getting closer oh my oh my christ laugh along i notice you now guys when i do the burn I'm trying to think of how I'm going to do this. And honestly, I'm such a bad multitasker. And I've got myself so stressed out over this. That I'm just going to swing the microphone away. And I'm just going to focus on the burn. I'm not going to look at the chat. I'm not going to talk, really. Um, I'm just going to do it. And then when we land, I will then return. <laughs> is how I'm going to do it, basically. I'm just going to clear some cables out of the way. Like, I've got so much crap on my desk. <laughs> Oh, I've had a Japanese donation, so I'm going to try and pronounce the name, but I'm probably going to get it wrong, so I'm very sorry. Uh, Nakajima Yosuki, maybe, uh, given 200 yen. Face on gravity, are you ready to stand your feet? Mm. Well, hopefully, hopefully I pull it off, eh? <laughs> oh. What did I say? 3,000 meters would be a good place to start the burn. Yeah, 15 minutes or 3,000 meters. So we're now half the distance from the mum we were when we started the descent. See, there's our mothership. <laughs> yes, it is the most stressed I've ever been for anything in KSP ever, class. <laughs> like, because there's just, there's just so much built up to this. That's the problem. We've not had any crashes. I've not had to quick load or quick save at all. I mean, I, I've quick saved, but I've already gone over several times. But I'm only making those so I can go back and get thumbnail shots later on. Not planning on using them as, like, legitimate quick saves. That now would be a good time to make one. Nearing the surface. So if I want to get a nice thumbnail for the VOD, I can just load this bit. And then it's, like, real. I didn't just cheat to get the same shot. I'm using it from a genuine part of the mission. Return trip yes oh yeah where is my delta v reading that's a good question it should be here shouldn't it i think the game's got confused with the docking and all that but the delta v is down here so it's uh way more than you need it's way more it's 2292 meters per second you only need uh 580 meters per second for a mun landing you obviously then need another 580 to get back so really you only need 1200 to do a mun landing so i've got almost double that because i really didn't want to risk crashing and speaking of crashing it looks like i've really lucked out with my landing site it looks horrific down there huh. where are we are we going to clear this crater no it's only going to get worse great that's in a minute okay in one minute we'll clear the crater so with th this horizon is a minute away so that's fine. Okay, so this crater is what I wanted to avoid. There's actually a little canyon, which I really wanted to miss. And it looks like we are, in fact, going to miss it. We should be landing around here. Which looks okay. Like, this looks a bit iffy. Where's this? Two minutes away. 
Yeah, so we'll definitely miss that. We'll be landing around here. Or crashing. <laughs> oh my god, you guys. <laughs> I'm just like staring trying to gauge when's a good time to start the landing burn I definitely want to get past all this stuff underneath me like I'm fairly confident this lander can land on like steep surfaces because it's very squat and it's very heavy so it's got a lot of excess fuel it doesn't need Okay, I'd say we're getting pretty close to when we want to start our burn. Whew. Okay, I'm getting a bit more relaxed now. This area is looking pretty good. Okay, guys, I'm now going to stop talking. I'm just going to swing the microphone away because I really want to concentrate and get this. Thank you. 
Oh! <laughs> it's sliding, but I'm calling that a successful landing. Oh my god. We did it. It is sliding though, which is making me a little bit nervous. Can we come? Right, I'm gonna now try and lock the legs. Do brakes do anything? <laughs> uh, the the ground the ground did look flatter from this from the from the from the sky, and the problem is I can't just like I have to now wait like an hour for the uh, the mothership to come back around. And the other thing is like, um, I'm a bit nervous about it being at this angle because I want to be able to like switch to the mothership and stuff. There it goes. So we can have a look at Michael Collins or, you know, in this case, Bill Kerman. But if the lander is on an inclination like this, I'm worried that if I switch back to it upon loading, it's going to just explode. <laughs> so yeah, we'll just let it slide to the bottom of the crater, I think. We've got all the time in the world. We've got it takes like an what an hour to get to complete a man orbit. Let's see. Um, um. Yeah, it's about 50 minutes for a, uh, for a man orbit. Right, well, let's do a crew report. Oh, I can look at the chat, actually, see if I missed anything. What <laughs> during our descent? Is it slowing down? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh, I mean, I, I, I saw that I was coming down here. You guys might have seen I did a lot of, um, you know, vertical flight my vertical speed i started descending just because i wanted to clear this i thought this looked flat obviously it wasn't it was flattened <laughs> there goes the mothership there though right i'm gonna make a quick save if this gets destroyed i'm just reloading the quick save because it won't be my fault but let's see i'm just trying to make this like settle Oop. There. The engine is now taking the strains. So that's not great, is it? I basically remove this one from symmetry, don't I? Again, guys, I'm really, really having to concentrate. I feel like I have just made things worse. Hmm. I'm just going to let it sit on the engine, I think. <laughs> because that at least makes it safe. <laughs> and the sliding was making me nervous. Cool, right. Let's do some science, shall we? There we are. One small waddle for Kerbal. One giant stumble from Kerbal Kind. And there it is. <laughs> Let's go. We'll grab a surface sample as well. Uh, 
Wow, let's do some seance. The goo seems to be less dense here at the Munns Midlands. I'll keep that. I'll keep that, mate. Log some seismic data. Oops. Yeah. Log gravity data. After calibration, the sensor is able to detect the interplanetary... Oh, sorry, the interplay of gravity between Kerbin and the Mun. I think I read the seismic scan, did I? The seismic sensor picks up distant impacts on the surface, reflecting along the interior of the Mun. I'll take the temperature as well. Oh, I forgot to add a barometer, didn't I? Oh. Oops! Oh, I didn't read the temperature scan, did I? Uh, collected and recorded temperature data from the environment. Okay, not that fun, is it? Oop. Oh, I didn't bring a barometer with me. Oh, well. Right. Unless I put one on the other side, but I don't think I did. Because I kind of wanted, like, just the batteries and ancillary power to be on this side. And then the science to be on the other side. Oh, well. Lovely little view there. Well, <laughs> probably go back there and grab a proper shot for the thumbnail later on. All right, Jebel Dyer. Oh yeah, do I take a surface sample? <gasps> I just saw the lambda shift and panicked. <laughs> okay, let's review the sample. The dark and midland surface appears to be made up of basaltic rocks. I'm just gonna use my jetpack to store the experiments. There we go. Oh, I already had the surface sample again, never mind. I mean, where are we? We've got ages for the ship to come round. It takes about 50 minutes. So, let's say half an hour by this point. I don't know how long I've been on the surface for. Um, so, where are we now? 10, 10. So, probably like 10, uh, 10, 40. It'll be back. So, we can probably do like a little trip up here. Although I'm a bit scared that, um, I'm just kind of scared of something happening to the lander. I think I'd rather just babysit the lander. Yeah, look at that. I mean, that's got to be one of the more satisfying moments I've ever... Like, that, I was getting, like, flashbacks to, like, my first ever Mun landing. Like, how nerve-wracking that was. Wow, I have landed on one heck of a hill, haven't I? Yeah, I was thinking, like, oh, I should have let it coast a bit further, but actually, this is as good a spot as any, really, isn't it? Like, the flat bit's all the way over there. I was kind of hoping I would end up here. Obviously, I started burning a bit too late. I mean, that is kind of on me. I had plenty of time to just sit there and calculate using trigonometry exactly when I should have started burning. But who's got time for that, you know? <laughs> Let's see, did I miss any... Uh... I missed a super chat, didn't I? Uh, Dubs Z or Dubs Z has super chatted eight pounds ninety nine and has said superb. I'm assuming that was when um, I touched down, which is helpful because it says eight minutes ago that super chat, so that means I touched down eight minutes ago. Cool. Right, let's get back on lander then. And yeah. We're just going to wait. 
probably shouldn't be doing this, should I? No, I shouldn't. Let's just leave it. <laughs> right, let's uh, retract that ladder. And we'll close the doors. There we are. Right, and now we just wait. We're definitely not sliding, are we? I feel like we are. We are sliding. I'm super paranoid of that flag interacting with the landing leg and like messing us up. So I'm just going to take it down and plant it elsewhere. There we go. Is that an Undertale, Undertale reference, maybe? Undertale is such a great game. Yesterday, on this same stream, because <laughs> that's how long it's been going, someone asked me, what, to, what, you, what are your favourite games? I said, there's that classic question, isn't there? If you could erase your memory of a single video game just so you could play it again, like, as if it was the first time, what would it be? And my, without a doubt, answer would be Subnautica, like, the first one. Um, it's a crazy good game. Amazing. Like, it's... I, I was blown away by Subnautica. It was incredible. But the other one would probably be um, Undertale. Freaking love Undertale. I've got like 30 hours in Undertale. Even though it's like a four-hour game. <laughs> and I don't really like J R um, like not JRPGs, just RPGs in general. But like the Earthbound style RPG. Oh. Oh, we couldn't read it too blurry. Sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, someone said pointed out there've been loads of quick saves, but no quick loads. Yeah, that's what I mean. But like, no, uh, I should have clarified there were no usage of quick saves. Is what I kind of meant when I said no quick saves, because yeah, I've been creating a bunch of quick saves again just for the purposes of ensuring myself against kraken attacks like if the lander were to right now suddenly do a massive flip and one of the legs exploded through absolutely zero fault of my own i would have no shame at all in loading a quick save um but obviously if i crashed or something that was entirely my fault then i wouldn't use a quick save so that's kind of why i'm doing quick saves to safeguard myself against game glitches oh there they are i love the interior of this little lander can actually look it's quite detailed really there's our MUN surface samples. And there's a... I mean, that's far more planning than I have done for this mission. Although I... Uh, is that an explosion? Or <laughs> I love the labels as well. <laughs> Junk science, more science. Board games! The biggest thing of all of them. Rock storage, snacks, parts, tools, space. <sighs> I love the little ladder as well that actually li lines up with the uh, service hatch, although in my case I've got a docking port there. Ooh. How are we doing? It's getting round, isn't it? Should we be able to see these very slight grid lines around the chat window? Yeah, th that's part of my, like, six stream UI. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Do you guys like them, or are they just kind of annoying? I don't know why there's this, there's that, like, diagonal one, like, here. I think that's, I changed the UI, and I've only now just noticed that there's a grid line there, so sorry about that. <laughs> Have you played the Portal games? I have. Not for many years, though. 
Oh, I mean, I probably played Portal 1, like, on the train or something, like, a couple of years ago, pre-COVID. Uh, Portal 2, I only played it once, um, when I was maybe 14, 15, I want to say. Oh, I trying to stretch. Oh. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, the loo again. I've been drinking so much water, guys. This room is like... Sorry, I realized I was quite far away from my microphone just then. I said, I'm just going to go to the loo now because I've been drinking so much water because this room's starting to get quite hot. So uh, I, uh, I shall be back in a bit.
I'm back. Um, I just gotta open the window though, because this room's become unbearable. So it looks like, according to the nav ball anyway, um, our anti target is there, so it's probably opposite us. Yeah, it is. So, yeah, it takes about 10 minutes, I guess, to do a quarter orbit. Are we still sliding? Yes, because I can see the flag is slowly getting further away. Let's just retract that ladder. Oh, it's so nice. Literally, I've opened the window and the heat is just escaping. And it's nice. It's a good feeling. Matt, do you ever play The Outer Wild? No, I've never really liked that sort of game. Like, I've never liked Fallout. I've tried getting into Fallout so much. I tried Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, and Fallout 4. I think like I must be missing something because everyone loves these games. I just never got onto them. I never I could never get into them. And I've heard that Outer Wilds is basically like Fallout. Like it's better than Fallout, supposedly, but it's still ultimately the same sort of game. It's a bit like Inscription. Everyone would not stop talking about how great Inscription was. I tried it, and it just bored me to tears. I just didn't get it. I just, I hate card games, and it is literally just a card game. Everyone's like, oh, no, it's not just a card game. If you don't really like into Gwent and stuff, it's not like that. It's like a meta. And I'm just like, this is just a card game, and I don't get it. And it's boring, and, yeah, I just don't get it. So I think I'm a bit of a hipster when it comes to games. I mean, obviously, Kerbal Space Program is pretty niche, isn't it? <laughs> oh, this is, this is my favorite song in the whole soundtrack. <laughs> Oh, is Outer Wilds different to Outer Worlds? I thought it was called Outer Wilds. Is that which one's the Fallout like game? Oh right, what's Outer Wilds then? Well, oh, I've left my phone in the thing. Hang on. Be right back one more time. <laughs> Outer, outer wild. Just googling out my phone. Oh, that looks pretty cool. Oh, I've vaguely heard of this game actually. Oh, it's kind of neat. Is it on? What's it on? Is it on Steam? Oh, it's on sale on Steam. Hey, let's just fob off this mission and play out wilds instead. Overwhelmingly positive Steam reviews, and it's on sale. Guys, I will um, I'll give this a go. I mean, I am playing a lot of other games right now, so I don't think I've got time for this. Is it like a long game? How long is like... I heard the DLC's on sale as well. Okay, I've just read some of the Steam reviews and they said, just go in blind, don't read any reviews. So, you know what, guys? I'm buying it. I'm buying the DLC bundle. I'm literally purchasing it on Steam right now on my phone. Oh, I'm not signed in. Let's just try that again. How are we doing for time, by the way? Are we, uh, 
Oh, we got ages. Which we are. Trying to get a nice sort of cinematic angle. There we are. How's that for a shot? That's probably what the other way around. Like, there's the chat. Uh, do you know what? So speaking of Portal, one of my big regrets in life is that I used to have a PlayStation 3. That was all I played games on. I didn't have a gaming PC, so I didn't have a Steam account. Uh, hang on, I've got to find this. Logging in. Right, let's buy this game. Oh, I'm probably not going to make a video of Outer Worlds, by the way. Just FYI. Like, I'm trying to, uh... So I'm trying to sort of convince YouTube that I'm a space channel. So by play, I suppose Outer Worlds is a space, a space game, right? I might just do an off the hook of the entire thing, I don't know, but... I don't know. It's not that fun doing Let's Plays, like, compared to just, um, just playing it. Because when you play games, like, you just sit there, don't you? You don't really, like, like, what I'm doing now, like, whoa, and reacting stuff. That's not how you play games normally. Um, so it's kind of like a bit of a, not stressful, but, like, it's a bit exhausting. Just have to constantly try and just react to it. Matt Lamb playing No Man's Sky. I've played No Man's Sky 2018. And I got loads of crap from people for that video because I didn't. I wasn't very good at it. And I didn't get it. And I found it a bit confusing and I made a few mistakes. And it's boring. It's so boring. And this was before the gigantic. This was like a couple of months before they made that gigantic update that basically just made the game what it should have been from day one. But by that point, I was like, no. We can, like, say, well done, hello games, well like, and yeah, it's great, they could have just abandoned it, but I don't want to reward this behaviour where you can just release a broken game for full price, and then fix it three years later, and then just get, everyone's like, oh, it's fine then, it's fixed now, it's, you, you know, like, no, that's bad practice still, you shouldn't be releasing it, and it's still, like, 50 quid in it, or something like that, I don't know, I don't like supporting that sort of practice, but I tip my hat to hello games for following through when they didn't need to. Those are my, that's my that's my hot take on No Man's Sky. I agree to the Steam subscriber agreement. Oh, it's got my old debit card. It's expired. It's so difficult. Ugh. Um, I think it purchased it. It's just taking me back to the Steam page on the app. Yeah. It's still stuck on purchasing. It may, I may or may not have bought The Outer Wilds. I'll find out after this stream is over in 10 hours. <laughs> oh. Yeah, look, we're definitely still sliding. Look where our flag is now. <laughs> At least we're not going to be going inside a rock. That would have been annoying, wouldn't it? Quick save. So basically, for our ascent, I'm not sure what to do. We probably want to go up quite a bit, don't we? Because we need to clear that ridge over there. on the map screen for a bit. <laughs> when, when will you do RSS? I've already played Rainbow Six Siege, guys. I did that for April Fools. <laughs> Which real-life space mission are you most excited for? I mean, Europa Clipper, absolutely. Uh, 
as much as we meme on it, obviously Starliner, crude Starliner will be huge. Uh, same with SLS, actually. I think there's no denying that we're all very excited to see Orbital Starship as well. There's a lot. I'd say in terms of space missions I'm looking forward to, it's Europa Clipper. That would be awesome. Uh, probably disappointing and we'll find that Europa doesn't have life underneath its surface, but that's like one of the most likely places to have life is Europa. Because uh, it's got a, basically an ocean underneath its layers of ice. I'm assuming you guys have heard of this YouTuber, but if you haven't, a great YouTube channel is Lemino. He did a video re quite recently about kind of the history with humans and trying to find extraterrestrial life. And how that, like, yeah, before we actually sent probes to Mars and had telescopes that could image it properly, we just naturally assumed that Mars had life. It was like, yeah, it's obvious that there's life on Mars. And it was only really like last century that we learned that actually, no, Mars is just a dead, desolate wasteland. Just like my bedroom. Oh! <laughs> um, and then same for Venus. Like, we just assumed there was life underneath the clouds until the uh, Venera missions from the Soviets confirmed that, no, that's not the case. It's just, again, a dead rock, basically. But maybe Venus might have life, you know? There could be, like, micro microbes on the surface. There could be microbes on the Soviet lambas that, you know... The chat window's cut off on the right-hand side. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's... It's only a couple of chat boxes, isn't it? It's not all chats. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. It is cut off. Has it been like that the entire time? Oh. Well, whatever. We live and learn, don't we? <laughs> yeah, Venus probably has microbes in the sense that they, like, survived on the Soviet landers, but it probably doesn't have any native microbes. You finally caught a stream. I mean, this is one of the easiest streams to catch for me because it's literally a multi-day stream <laughs> where we go to the mun in real time. But this is, I think this is kind of a cool mission. Like, I've had this idea, like, this is a mission where, like, if you weren't a YouTuber, you'd probably have this idea and be like, ah, oh, that would be cool, but then you'd never do it because what's the point? But because I've, like, got an audience, it's, like, justifies it a bit saying, yeah, we can all watch this. It's, like, a group thing. We can all do this again. There's a bit more motivation to do kind of the more weirder, arbitrary challenges like this, so... Yeah. The Mun does rotate this way, doesn't it? <laughs> like, I'm suddenly... Yeah, we are launching on the 90-degree vector, aren't we? But yeah, there's our empty target, so... Whew. And it is our target. Yep, don't know why I had to check. I mean, we'll know soon enough. I can just watch it go over. 90 degrees is that way. Are you excited for the Dragonfly mission on Titan? Yeah, that would be really cool. I'm skeptical if it's actually going to happen, though. Like, Europa Clipper exists. Like, it's that's that's happening. That That is not going to not happen. Whereas Dragonfly, they're still working on, like, the ins and outs and stuff. So, yeah. But I'm looking forward to Dragonfly, obviously. I'll be an elderly person, probably, when that finally happens, which is sad. But such is the progression of time, I suppose. It's quite sunny out there today, actually. Ah. <laughs> Sasha's narrowboat life. Yes, I have made it to the Mun. Are you in a narrowboat right now? That's kind of cool. I've always like, not like like, like I would. It's not. It's not a lifestyle for me. But like, I was like, oh, it would be kind of cool to like live on a narrowboat. I can see it having its perks. <sighs> did you do EVA science? I did do EVA science experiments. I'm not sure if I did a crew report, actually, but, um... I know, because I've, I've, someone suggested you should turn off the SAS, and, like, I don't want to continue faffing around with things, because the lander is still sliding. And... I just... It's, it's safe. It's stable. 
I don't want to then start changing settings and stuff in case I destabilize it and the Kraken just takes a hold. So, um, I'm just going to leave it as it is, <laughs> basically. RT Ivankino, you missed the landing. Go away, you can rewind. It's twenty it's twenty twenty two. We have the technology to do such things. What are you waiting for, Maze Magic? That's a good question. So we're doing an Apollo style mission, so we need to get back to the command module, which is currently in orbit. If I launch now, I'll be on the opposite side of the MUN, which obviously is not great. So we need to wait for the ship to be I don't know, like here <laughs> for when we launch uh, in order to get a rendezvous. I want to get a rendezvous basically straight away uh, because I, 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 sometimes in videos I'll like spend ages faffing around with rendezvous and that's just because how can I word this without it sounding like a paradox? Docking the longest way in real time for the Kerbal, so burning towards the target, coasting, then burning retrograde, then burning towards the target, then coasting, then burning. Da -da. That's the fastest way to do it because you can use time warp to just get past all the coasting, so you can just get encounters really fast. But if you're doing it in real time, that way is very slow because when you can't time warp, there's just loads of times where you're just coasting. So I want to kind of do a proper, we'll just do an ascent, and when, when as we ascend, our apoapsis will just perfectly align with the target. Which uh, I can do. It's pretty trivial for me to do, but I feel that um, I uh, will mess it up due to stress of the, you know, the gravity of this mission. Someone saying, "Can we? Uh, you, are you going to round up electricity if there's no RTG? We've got solar panels, and we've got. Wait for it. Boom. Lots of batteries. Too many batteries, really." So we're good for Rebel um, Electricity, and the return ship has solar panels as well. Uh, someone says, can we get a return ship view? I wanted to do that, actually, but um, again, because we're kind of in a bit of a precarious landing zone, my worry is that if I switch vessels and then switch back to this one, it's going to glitch out during physics easing, and it's going to something's explode, or it will flip over, or get launched into the air and crash down somewhere. So uh, although this is not ideal, it's the most stable way we can do this, so I'm just going to leave it as is. Ooh. I'm just going to go grab my, uh, my fan, so I'll be two seconds. Oh, there we are. I'm back. 
Yeah, my fan is like a um a water condenser fan, so I have to top the uh the reservoir up. But it means I'm getting nice and cooled. Oh, someone likes my cycling channel. Assuming that you guys are talking about me. This is the Matt Lown ego stream after all. <laughs> <laughs> E2T Gaming. What is happening? Well, I'll tell you. We, we landed on the Mun. We landed on the Mun about an hour ago, actually. Um, I'm doing a real-time Mun mission, so no time warp allowed, no quick save allowed. Yes, I have been making quick saves, but that's just for the purposes of safeguarding against Kraken attacks, which is my one rule exception for quick saves. I'm allowed to do that if something goes wrong that isn't my fault. Um, and so I can go back later on and grab things like thumbnail shots. Like if I want to make a thumbnail for the VOD, I don't have to pull making screenshots of just the VOD itself. I can actually load like various quick saves of the mission and then, you know, grab pictures of the scenarios. So then I'm not having to recreate the scenarios again. After the fact, I can just, you know, quick load and just find the bit where I was on EVA and then just grab a photo. Basically, that's what I'm doing the quick saves for. <clears throat> What mods is those boulders on the surface? All of this is stock. Uh, this is the ground scatter. So I've got everything on ultra settings. So the highest settings possible. And I don't think... I'm not sure if by default, if you put everything on the highest setting, it won't actually put everything on ultra. You have to manually toggle ultra settings. Um, so yeah, you put everything on ultra settings. And these rocks are known as ground scatter. And you have to set the ground scatter density to high or something to get all of them. But yeah, the Mun surface textures have come a long way in the past couple of years. Oh, I like this song. <laughs> uh, Sammy197, have you considered an IVA-only Mun mission? I'm one step ahead of you there. Uh, seven years ahead of you, in fact. I did a mission like that in 2016. So not seven years, six years ahead of you. Still quite scary, isn't it? I still think of 2016 has been like a week ago. <laughs> uh, but I did do an IVA-only mission. The best way is just to uh, YouTube search Matt Lown IVA-only. Yeah, Link, there's uh, how much the lander has slid. <laughs> it's like slowly sliding. I've managed to calm it down by basically dampen all of the landing legs, except this one to a lesser extent, sort of flatten out a bit and then let the engine bell take some of the strain. So there's a bit more friction. But yeah, this is one of those downsides of KSP really is that the landing legs really aren't as grippy as they should be. Like, You'd think this would just, like, the landing legs would just dig themselves into the surface in real life and it would just stay still. I mean, if this were... Oh, look! Here comes the... Here comes the return vessel. Isn't that fun? I'll make a quick save, actually. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, in the, the Kerbal Space Program 2 trailer, like, the original one that, had, that was all pre-rendered, it showed the land these exact landing legs touching down and they buried themselves a little bit into the surface. Now, I don't know if that's just because it was a pre-rendered trailer and they wanted to make it look pretty. Uh, or if they're actually going to simulate that sort of thing. So the landing legs will actually sort of somewhat bury themselves into the surface and give you a bit more grip. Whereas in KSP-1, friction is just the non-existent. Everything is really slidey, like rovers just slide about. We've all probably had that experience with like planes taking off where the plane will suddenly just skid about on the runway for no reason. And it was fine until 1.0 or 0.9 version. Uh, they changed something out of the wheels to make them behave more realistically, but it came at the expense of making them vastly unrealistic in other scenarios. So yeah, that, that's just one of the things that's not very good about stock KSP, unfortunately. Now, it looks like... Oh, I need to set this to orbit. Our target is not equatorial, which is going to make rendezvous a tiny bit more complex. Not hugely so. It's not really a big deal, but something that I'm going to have to factor in during our ascent and we're going to get ready to perform our launch very soon. So I'm probably going to do what I did for the um, yeah uh, mine train, mirrored my thoughts exactly. I was like, I should have brought ground dank really. Um, your physics teacher is the devil from Balls of Steel, TSF71. That's hilarious. If they really are, that's incredible. <laughs> that's incredible. What a, t what a show. I was like 12 when I was watching that. That was one of the OG things we watched on Google Video. This is before the days of YouTube. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Set up a flag. I have set up a flag, but we have slid away from it. But the flag is there. Ah, just uh, 
pretend I'm on the other side. There you go. There's there's the flag. Where where is the mother? Oh god, it's there. Okay, guys. What I'm probably gonna do is just stay silent for the ascent so I can concentrate. So I'm just gonna do that. So I realised that I can actually probably start talking again, can't I? So I'm just being a bit cheeky, spending a bit more fuel since we've got the budget to just get an encounter a bit sooner. I'm just sort of playing around with the maneuver, try and get as close as I can. I'd say 300 metres is pretty close, isn't it? And that's a 52 metres per second burn, and we have 963 in total. I don't know why the game thinks I've got 0 metres per second of Delta V. It's probably because I've got cheats activated. <gasps> oh no! Oh, Veneer's awake. Hi, Veneer. You'll be pleased to know that we only had one technical disaster today. Um, and it was all Beth's fault, so it was fine. The landing was fine. Uh, Beth um, used the toaster, which then caused the fuses at the house to break. And the internet went down, so the stream stopped. <laughs> but apart from that, it was fine. So I'm probably going to do this burn from the map screen, to be honest. Now, we don't. I don't get an estimated burn time, unfortunately. I can't imagine it's going to be a particularly long burn, though, right? Um, let's do the burn uh, now. Do the rest of the burn by eye. I'd say that's pretty darn good. And we've got 911 meters per second to go. 
and how long is it going to take to slow ourselves down relative to our target. You can find that out by just basically playing around with maneuver node like this until your line roughly matches your target, which it doesn't, but it's close enough. Minimal amount, basically. Oh, I just had to stop myself from just reaching for the time warp button. But there we are. We've got ourselves a pretty, like, that's a pretty quick, like, we went from here to here. Like, that's a, that's less, uh, I'd say that's less than a quarter of an orbit, which I'd say is probably not too shabby. Don't forget to transfer the fuel from the MEM once you're prepared to ditch it back to the surface. Don't really need to, to be honest. Uh, the uh, command module has way too much Delta V. I, I, built it, I built in a lot of redundant Delta V into this mission because I knew I probably wouldn't be flying as efficiently as I normally would because of the pressures. <laughs> and I just wanted to make sure nothing, absolutely nothing went wrong. So we've got a six minute cruise to our target. We're doing all right for fuel, electricity. Cool. So we are a little bit behind schedule. I was hoping that we'd be on our way to Kerbin at this point. Obviously, you know, time is only perfect, and I didn't really calculate the uh, the timers particularly well. <laughs> So, Veneer, I basically, it was about an hour. Just I think it was about 50 minutes we waited on the surface. Um, you can probably just like use your mouse to hover over the stream, you can see. Um, I bas you basically have to just wait for the command module to make one full MUN orbit. That's why I kind of wanted the command module in a fairly low orbit, so it wouldn't take, you know, ages to get all the way around. But at the same time, I wanted enough room so that if I ended up coming in sort of behind my target, I'd have enough room to have a lower orbit so I could scoot underneath it and catch up. Um, but in the end, it was all fine. I launched a bit later than I should have done, really. I was too busy just talking to you guys and, like, <laughs> delaying things. I was like, oh, I probably should have launched, like, about two minutes ago. So I had to waste a bit of fuel doing a slightly inefficient correction burn to get our um, encounter a bit closer. But it was fine. Oh, my gosh. I keep reaching. For the, I'm actually just going to shift. I'm, my microphone's on like a boom arm. I don't know if you guys have ever seen my setup videos. Uh, and I can use it to sort of occlude the keyboard. So I have to consciously look at where I'm putting my hand in order to reach for the uh, time warp button. I mean, I can touch type, but I'm for this particular mission, I'm so paranoid about pressing the wrong button that I am looking at the keyboard before I do anything. Are you going to burn through all of the remaining fuel in the command module? I guess, um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, 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 we'll um, cross that bridge when we get there. Where is the target? Let's point towards it so we can see it. There it is. Ah, There's not going to curve it. Where's me water? So Python Protogem, no, it's not too hot for the weather. It's actually quite a cool day today. The problem is, is like to get the best sound quality in this room, I like tend to have the window shut and the curtain closed. So there's not like that. It makes the window, which is normally glass or hard surface, that sound bounces off. The curtain softens it and dampens it and it sounds a bit better. But that means the room gets very, very hot because it's a very, very small room. It's about two by four meters at best. It's probably a little bit smaller than that. The walls are covered in foam insulation foam again to dampen sound echo i've got two gigantic monitors facing me they're 27 inch 1440p ips 144 hertz so they're pretty powerful they generate a lot of heat and obviously i've got my pc that's been churning out heat all night it's got an rtx 2080 ti uh, gpu which is pretty hot running gpu and um it's got a pretty beefy um 32 th uh, core uh CPU and uh, it's, a, it's a Ryzen 3950 X and it's got a big three fan AIO. 
that's my story. Not in, can't see the target yet, can we? But we're getting there. How far are we from the uh, rendezvous? We're getting there. <laughs> Cheese Lord, I went to sleep and it's still going. God, God damn. <laughs> yeah, I went to sleep as well. I did my burn to the man and then I literally went to bed. And when I woke up, we had ju we were just about to enter the man's sphere of influence. It's about it's about an 11 hour trip to the man in KSP. So it's a, a long old time. That's why it's quite I'm quite glad that I'm like a YouTuber because it gives me opportunities to do missions like this. Like if I was just doing this to an audience of zero, why on earth would I subject myself to this? But when there's like an audience, like all of us watching together, I don't know, it's like, I just think it's a really cool idea for a live stream. Oh, we're going to be docking on the, say goodbye to the sunshine, everyone. I'm going to retract the aerial actually, so we don't need it anymore. Not that we ever needed it anyway, it was only there for the aesthetics. Goodbye, sun. What time is re-entry? Mary Ruth, if you hold fire for like maybe 20 more minutes, I will tell you exactly when re-entry will be. So we're getting closer to the target. The previous burn we did was about was 52 meters per second, wasn't it? And I'd say that took maybe three seconds to do the burn. So maybe at one and a half seconds to the encounter we'll perform the burn. So we're at 40 seconds. And there's 30 seconds for the one of the last burns we'll be doing with the uh, lander. And that's 20 seconds to burn. And there's your 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Burn there. Slow that right down. Okay, so then we're going to point towards our target and watch these nodes here swing around. There we are. Perfect. minute and 30 seconds to get there but it'll probably take a bit longer because now I'm just going to eyeball it. Actually whilst we're here. Gradually getting there, aren't we? Slow. Oh, look at that. Look at Kerbin. Isn't that beautiful? How far are we? 30 seconds away. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm so tempted to just hit time just to get this bit over. <laughs> I'm not going to, obviously. My integrity is better than that, but yes. Where's a good place to stop? Probably here. So now we're going to do the lounge lazy method of docking. So you guys watching, control from here. We're going to set this docking port as our target. And then we're going to point towards it. Then we're going to switch vessels. Just for safety, we'll uh, retract all this breakable stuff. We're going to control from here. Set that as our target. Now watch the two vessels align themselves. Ready? Boom. Boom. 
we just drift towards each other. It's great, it's easy. Make sure we're still locked on by a target. We are not, so we'll do that. Boom, we are docked. Jebediah can transfer. Of course, we'll need Bill to do an EVA. So we can take the data. Oh, I never actually removed the science. That would have been good, wouldn't it? <laughs> Just grab onto that. Take that. And we'll take that. Nice. And there's nobody aboard now. Great. So we'll just transfer some of the fuel out. Not that we need to at all, but you know. I'll make sure we're controlling from the right point. Control from here. Shut down. Activate. Now, let's see where we are. I'm going to go back to Kerbin. It's five hours away. Seven hours away. Let's just uh, see if we can speed that up a little bit by burning a bit of excess fuel. Risk blowing my perhaps any further, really? Maybe four, eleven thousand. I think that's safe. There we are. We're only five hours away then, so we should be done by four p.m. Cool. It's not in there. Someone's saying get the data out of the lander. I took the data out of the lander. There's no data, you guys. Cool, cool, cool. Save carry up to. That must be safe, mustn't it? Gonna open up the solar panels before I forget. And we've got 14 minutes. I'm trying to get to Eve with no time warp. Oh my gosh. I nearly had a panic attack doing this mission, and it's a Mun mission. I think with Eve I would just have an aneurysm and die. <laughs> so I'm not gonna do that.
Someone's written, what Dave are you playing on, or is it just a new one for this stream? I'm going to assume that's an autocorrect and they meant save. <laughs> yeah, this is just a dedicated save for the stream. Hey, after the Stranded, I'll do a no time warp, career mode, <laughs> complete tech tree run. Ugh. Like, guys, 11 kilometers is um, fine, isn't it? Like, that's there's nothing on the mud that's going to intersect that. I hope. I'm looking at it, that looks like it's going to be pretty easy. There's this iffy thing here. I think that's just a shadow. It's fine. <laughs> uh, no, the fuel level is not correct, by the way, whoever's said that. It's because I think I've still got the wrong. That's activated. That's shut down. I think the game is just getting confused because all the staging is a bit messed up. But no, we have um, 1,620 meters per second of delta V. I'm just going to leave the lander cannon in orbit, I think. Well, I uh, keep it attached for the burn. Actually, no. Oh, yeah. Actually, that's... Nah. Mm. We'll uh, detach it now. Goodbye, lander. So all you little need, all you really need in terms of RCS separation, probably want to back off a bit. You know, in 11 minutes time that thing will be miles away. Oh no, the space dolphins. Oh, Veneer, is there ever a danger of uh, KSP solar panels succumbing to G-forces? Not that I know of, no. Um, wings and stuff can, but I think that's only atmospheric forces, like or G-forces in an atmosphere. Kerbals can black out from G-forces, but uh, I don't think it's possible to get that level of force just through engine burning. I'm definitely getting clear of that lander before I start the burn. It'd be a disaster if I clipped into it. Guys, I may or may not have an audio file of Nate Simpson saying Among Us. If you uh if we get ten thousand viewers on this chat uh, on this stream, I will release the audio file of Nate Simpson saying Among Us. <laughs> That's not a joke, by the way. <laughs> I actually do. Uh I guess I don't need to retract mine out of paranoia anymore. To be fair, I d don't take what I'm saying as gospel because I don't actually know, but I mean, I've never experienced that. But then again, often I will just retract solar panels because I feel like that's more realistic. Like, I'll do a burn and then deploy the solar panels. So, I don't, but I, uh, to my knowledge, no, the solar panels can't be, can't succumb to, uh, to G-forces. Wow. <laughs> uh. 
Oh, I just realized I've got sound effects, which I didn't use. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I should have been using these for, like, whenever, like, um, something was going wrong. And, like, when I landed, I should have gone, Wow. <laughs> And if it had all gone wrong, I could have gone. <laughs> oh, so much missed potential. That gets an oof. <laughs> nice meme. Okay, I'm going to stop this now. <laughs> A song sound effect. <laughs> Don't want to get copyright claimed. <laughs> Not after 12 hours of work. <laughs> hmm. How long has this stream been so far? Because it needs to be under 12 hours in total. And there's. Um, Five hours, seven minutes. So five hours, 25 minutes remaining, effectively. Uh, we've been streaming now. Uh, let's see. Three hours. Four, five, six. So yeah, we're easily in the 12 hour limit. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Oh, because you guys, you can see what time it is for me. So, like, <laughs> we're going through. So, if people were joined when it was like 3 a.m., they can see, oh, yeah, for Matt, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, he'll be asleep. Yeah, I'll make so, guys, basically, once all this is done, we'll be coasting back to Kerbin. There's going to be another big, long period where I'm probably not going to be at the microphone the entire time because it's, like, five hours of basically not a lot happening. So I'll do, like, a tweet and I'll do a um, at everyone on Discord for final Kerbin re-entry. So if you guys want to just head off during the coast back to Kerbin, then I totally get that. I'll probably do the same. And um, then we can all come back for the Kerbin re-entry. We can all set an alarm on our phones or whatever. Uh, we'll do that. But we've got five minutes till our next burn. The final burn of the mission, in fact. Yeah, I noticed, class, that the chat's getting cut off a bit. Um, I'll see if I can change that. It's like we gotta hold old or something. Oh, I think that's fixed it. That should be fixed now. Probably should have done that like twelve hours ago. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for setting up the events on Discord, by the way. That was really helpful. This has been fun, though, right? Like, although I guess most of it has just been sitting around waiting, it has been pretty fun, like, doing all of this, like, in this, this ridiculous challenge I've set myself. We'll be getting a nice curb in rise in a second. Like, it's a, it's a good achievement. Like, a, a good sense of achievement. Like, yeah, I did it without using the time warp button. Which is dumb and stupid. <laughs>
Yeah, guys, I'm never going to do a real-time anything other than Moon. Like, you know, possibly Minmus. But I think Minmus is just too far away. Like, there's just too much time to spend coasting. I think the Mun is just perfect. Like, it's 20 hours total. That's, like, a manageable amount of time for me. If it's going to be, like, a 30-hour mission, which is probably what Minmus will be. Unless, of course, I just made a ridiculously over-engineered rocket that has way more Delta V that could basically just go directly straight to Minmus. <laughs> Software Sitter is about to land their first rover on Minmus. Best of luck to you. Make a lot of quick saves, because rovers will flip a lot on Minmus because of the low gravity. So make the rover as heavy as you can and get the center of gravity as low as you can. I mean, Gan, you did miss the landing, I'm afraid, but you can rewind the live stream. We were pleased to know we did, in fact, survive. <laughs> like so happy that <laughs> we survived I'm so happy we survived Ugh. is it minus nine hours transfer is it I don't know it took us six hours to get to the mud so nine hours I guess makes sense how far away is Minmus? Uh I don't know basically there's our lander Rest its soul. I'm gonna line this up. Oh, here we go. Kerbin rise, everyone. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. I'm making a quick save here, actually. Again, I'm not planning on using any of these quick saves. They're just so I've got sort of chapters I can mark. So when I want to go back and get a screenshot for the thumbnail or whatever, I just have the moments where I can just go back and reload to get the shots I need. I don't plan on using them for the purposes of, you know, what you're supposed to use quick saves for. <laughs> oh, you can see the Aurora Borealis. <laughs> okay, so we are now 30 seconds from starting the burn. Where is our periapsis? I'm a bit paranoid of hitting a mountain or something. Wouldn't that be such a catastrophic end to the video? But it looks I think we're fine. Three, two, one. There goes the lander. <laughs> Basically burning straight into the ground. Keep an eye on our periapsis height here. I don't really want it to drop below 10. Okay, now I'm just going to do the rest by eye. Just uh, I'm gonna point radial out just in case I need to. But we should easily clear the terrain, right? Like, there's no way we're gonna hit anything. <laughs> I'm just super paranoid. So it's gonna wait for our paralysis. Which our paralysis is in a minute. We're not gonna hit the ground in a minute's time, so we're fine, aren't we? Yeah, sheep boy, you said you weren't going to use quick save, and then, but I immediately said, said why I was making those quick saves. So if you didn't listen, that's kind of on you. I never said I'm not going to make quick saves. I said I'm not going to use quick saves. There is a difference. <laughs> Tricuzo, I didn't see your suggestion to do this challenge. Um, I think a lot of people have requested this over the years. It's something I've always thought of doing since, like, well, for years, actually. Um, 
but I just could never be bothered. And I was just so stressed. Like, what if I like mess up the landing? That's like undoes ten hours of work. <laughs> so, uh, so I never did it. See, so I put the batteries. By the way, I put the batteries for this vessel on the poodle engine. So they look quite neat there. We're just uh, we're just tea posing on the mun right now. <laughs> I think we're fine. Let's go into a more aesthetically pleasing prograde position. We may as well just shut this engine down, right? I should have used the chatter mod for ambience. That would have been a good idea, actually. I generally don't have music on in KSP, and I don't use things like chatter mod just because I... Um, what was I going to say? Because obviously when I'm editing the video, I speed it up and chop and change and any sort of weird niggly audio bits, I um, I don't want them in there basically. So the only sounds that I have are, uh, excuse me, engine sounds and other things like, you know, parachutes deploying, landing gear deploying, etc. That's where we're going. So when do we leave the Mun's sphere of influence? An hour and 22 minutes. So I'm going to set a timer on my phone for an hour and 22 minutes. So let's see, where is that? That's uh, it's 11.25 now, so we want like 12. Uh... An hour and 14 minutes there. And then I'm going to set another alarm. So let's see. Five hours and two minutes. So 11.26. So we'll probably want like... Uh, four hours 30, don't I really? So I'm going to set an alarm for four and a half hours for my periapsis. So I can kind of talk for the last half an hour of the stream. Um, and I've set another alarm. Is it ten past nine? That's not right. Where is it? An hour and twenty. So we want like 11, 12, 45 is probably a good time. Great. Perfect. Awesome. So I'm probably going to go FK for a bit because I've got some chores to do around the house. Uh, I'm going to make a quick save here just in case the Kraken or Blue Screen of Death strikes. Uh, leaving Mun. And uh, yeah, I shall return in about an hour probably to um, witness the sphere of influence change. I'll probably dip in and out every now and then, but I've, I've got stuff to do today, I'm afraid. And I'm sure you guys have better things to do as well. So I'm going to bid the adieu for now and I'll come back in at some point.
Yeah, there's still 735 people here. Why? <laughs> I just came to adjust the camera angle to make sure it was a nice little shot of the man as we rise away from it. Yeah, we've got like an hour to go. Oh, what have I missed in the chat, by the way? I assume that, like, are people that, like, are still here, you're, um, what's it, uh, just, you've just got this, like, second monitor or something like that. Oh, thanks, XX, Thomas, Thomas for XX. <laughs> huh? What, from the radiation? Nah, fine. <laughs> just have some beaming down. There we are. Might have a look at the, the old Twitter, see if anyone sent me any. Ah, the Shadow Zone tweeted. <laughs> yeah, John O'Davis and you here to check on my sanity. <laughs> Yeah, I sometimes like toy with the idea of just literally, because I've got a PC in my attic, in my old PC, and it works. Everything's still, well, I, I sold the GPU to my friend because he needed a GPU when GPUs were like impossible to find anywhere. So it is a 980 Ti, which is still a solid card. Uh, so I'd have to get that back <laughs> or get another GPU for that. But I could basically just set that PC up and just like have it run. Like buy some cheap crappy monitor and keyboard and mouse for it and just literally do a real time mun mission on it, a Duna mission on it. So just start off and then just let that PC just run in the background for like a year with an uninterrupted power supply ideally. <laughs> on like uh, like a new, I'll make a new channel for it just called Real Time Duna Mission in KSP. And um, and just have that run. I will probably never ever do that because that's going to cost so much in electricity to run and all that. And I don't think I'd be able to handle the pressure when it came to the Juno landing. I'd probably have to make it a one-way mission, wouldn't I? And then just spend the year practicing the landing with, a, uh, with an identical craft on like a different save file. Just so I know exactly what I'm doing. I get it down to the absolute, like minute second um, when it comes to the rehearsal so I just know what to do and it's not even stressful or I could just script it <laughs> like as in literally have a script execute everything which is obviously what um, NASA do NASA aren't literally piloting the uh, sky cranes by hand are they <laughs> Pumacron color. Are fuel cells worth it? I've never really used fuel cells. They're pretty good. Like, they are very efficient ways of getting a lot of electricity, but, like, I've never seen the point of them because why would you not just use an RTG or a solar panel? Like, I get it. Like, if you're early in the tech tree, you haven't unlocked RTGs. But, I mean, the tech tree is, like, a, so easy to fill out in KSB. Just grind some signs to get the RTG and just use that. I just don't see the point in fuel cells unless you're doing a specific recreation or a weird arbitrary challenge like this. Like, I wouldn't I'm not using fuel cells on this rocket, for example, even though the real Apollo missions didn't use solar panels, they used fuel cells. Um, I'm not doing that here. <laughs> Hello, 
And, uh, but I tell you what, actually, I did have one use for fuel cells. My, uh, Thousand Miles Piano <laughs> song, uh, video that I made a few years ago, where Jebediah flies around on a flying piano. Um, the black keys of the piano are just fuel cells clipped into a wing piece. They're either fuel cells or the edges of batteries, and I'm pretty sure they're fuel cells. So, uh, that's, that's the main use of fuel cells I've found in my time with KSP. GTX 1650, 4GB, good for KSP Ultra. I'm assuming 4GB is the GPU RAM. Yes, that's fine. Like, I jumped from a 980 Ti to a 2080 Ti, and there was no real difference in KSP performance. Like, KSP does not need much to run. I started this channel with a GT640M GPU. That's an NVIDIA. It's not even a GTX. It's just an NVIDIA GT640 mobile terrible processor like my phone has probably got a better gpu <laughs> uh today and it was a it was a second hand laptop from 2012 so that's the specs i was running and it was good enough for me to play and enjoy ksp for years and um you know i started a youtube channel with it so you know you don't need a you don't need a super powerful pc for ksp Yeah, people are saying that they can't, it's still really quiet. There isn't much I can do. I mean, this microphone is not very loud, unfortunately, because it's a uh, condenser microphone. No, it's a dynamic microphone. So I probably need to just, like, it's, it's literally back boosted all the way up on Streamlabs. I'll see if I can boost it a bit more, but... It's literally at the max on Streamlabs. I can't make it any louder uh. yeah sorry can't make any louder I'm afraid Yeah, I need to um, I need to get a uh, condenser microphone really for like the purposes of live streaming. So this is a really good microphone. This is a Rode Procaster microphone. So it's like what a radio station would use. It's great because like anything that isn't going like speaking, anything that's not directly in front of the microphone is uh, very hard to hear. So it's ideal for like interview situations or if you live in like a noisy house or you've got a loud mechanical keyboard like me. Uh, the microphone won't really pick anything like that. It just picks up your voice. But like moving slightly away from it and the volume changes dramatically. Whereas a, um, a condenser microphone isn't like that. It picks up everything really well and generally it has slightly better sound quality obviously it doesn't have that same cardioid filtering that this microphone does so i do actually own uh such microphones i own two i have the blue yeti and the blue snowball but uh yeah i'm using a cloud lifter by the way um i uh the blue yeti and blue snowball they don't sound very good like the quality's not great so i was thinking about getting either the blue ember or the blue spark the S blue spark blackout edition one of those haven't decided yet, but I, I, if I do more live streams, then I will definitely invest in that. But to be honest, like I don't think I'm going to do that many live streams. Like this is a very much a one-off thing. Like don't get used to real-time mun missions. This is a, this has been very stressful. How do you get encounters so easily? Have you just memorized where the body will be when you fly there or what? 
Well, we all know the uh, the classic line, don't we? If you were to draw a line from the sun to Kerbin... No, I said it wrong. <laughs> if you were to draw a line from Kerbin to the sun to Duna, the angle that that line forms at the sun should be about 45 degrees. Uh, I say that all the time, but yeah, that's how I get encounters with things, because I know when to launch. So basically, like, stuck to my office wall is a diagram of all the transfer windows. Just Google search Kerbal Space Program transfer window diagram and just print that out, stick it to the wall, and then that just tells you when to launch. Like, everyone always says, or oh, use mods that tell you the exact time and day to launch. Like, you don't need to, in my experience. Unless you're going for, like, super high efficiency and super accuracy, you don't need to. Just get the, um, the chart that has all the angles you need and just eyeball it in the tracking station. Or you can use the built-in, there's, like, a built-in alarm clock now. But uh, I'm, I'm scared of pressing it in case it starts time warping. Uh, but there's a built-in alarm clock in Kerbal Space Program now that basically tells you when the next transfer window will be. So there you go. Comrade, yeah, I am still streaming. I mean, it's a, it's a long old mission. We've got about six hours. Of, so it's going to be about six more hours. So yeah, 4 p.m. We're looking at, well, 4 p.m. British time. So that's 3 p.m. Uh, universal coordinated time. And about, I don't know, let's say 10 a.m., like 9 a.m. for Americans. Just kind of taking an average of the different coastlines. I hope you remember to forget the parachutes. It doesn't even matter anymore, does it? Because the Kerbals have parachutes. But no, I have not remembered. I have not forgotten the parachutes. Yeah, SM7B. That's like the uh, the meme microphone, isn't it? That's what everyone uses. <laughs> Somewhere like the... Um the, the, uh, like the holder is built into the microphone itself, isn't it? This is like separate. So it's in like a little bungee cradle, so that it uh, doesn't pick up any vibrations. Matt, can you speak German? Yeah. No, I, can't. <laughs> I know like odd phrases like Guten Tag and stuff, but uh, no, I can't speak German. I can speak a little bit of French. Most British people know a bit of French, like not much. Like, like parlez-vous en anglais? That's what you can say. This is like, how do you speak English? Uh, I can say, uh, je m'appelle, uh, je m'appelle Matt Laun. That's my name is Matt Laun. A little bit of French for you guys there. Uh, bonjour, that means hello. Salut, that means hi. Um, that's it. No, uh, jambon, that's ham. So you ask for a ham sandwich. Jambon. I don't actually know the word for sandwich, but you know. Les, le, le voita, le voita, is it? Is it? That means car. Um, okay, Beth, Julie noted about the, uh, the stream ending. Yeah, we're kind of worried about starting up appliances downstairs now in case it causes another fuse blow and the stream gets cut again. Um, I think it was just the toaster. It, it was just it was a cheap toaster. It was on its last legs. I think it was just that. Yeah. So Devin uh, Blankenship says face cam, and the reason I'm not a face cam is because this stream is so long and I'm gonna have to be monitoring it throughout the night and stuff and. Uh, like, if I, if I hear that the stream's, something's gone wrong, then I have to check, and I don't want to come in, like, half asleep in my pajamas and dressing gown, looking like death. <laughs> I mean, there's a face cam there, so, that's, and then, like, this morning, I woke up quite early to check in on it and sort a few things out, like, when the stream died, I had to bring it all back together, and, like, I don't have to worry about constantly making myself look presentable. There's a big difference between a stream like this and a stream where I'm just, like, playing Fortnite for an hour, you know what I mean? Uh, so I can actually make myself look presentable. <laughs> Uh, 
<sighs> Blood Atelier. Matt, can I use this stream as a corner overlay for a stream I'm doing? Bed Wars. Sure. Do what you want. <laughs> Feel free to stream this stream. That's why I've added this little UI, actually. So, like, you can see my stuff. You can follow me there. I'm going to check my Twitter replies. That's what I started doing before I started going down a bit of a tangent. Why are people asking for Discord links? Like, you could just look at the video description. <sighs> so someone said, um, have you eaten your dinner yet, Matt? Uh, for me, it's uh, midday, so it'd be lunch, wouldn't it? And uh, no, I haven't. I haven't got anything in for lunch, actually. My plan is to, uh, I'm going to go for a quick bike ride to the shops. Uh, there's just the local shops are about, it's like a 20 minute walk, but a three minute cycle, so <laughs> much quicker. I'm a very impatient person, so it's a quick bike ride out to the shops. Oh, the solar panels. Gone. Oh no. <laughs> they were just like exactly the wrong angles. I thought they might have broken or something. No. Exact wrong angle. There we go. <laughs> this makes me feel bad for astronauts having to wait so long to get anywhere. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's even longer in real life, isn't it? You know, the Kerbin is very the Kerbal system is very very scaled down compared to uh, you know with the real world. Oh, that's it, Monkey Man. Spetsy is a German drink where you mix cola and Fanta until it looks good and it tastes amazing. Never heard of that. <laughs> Mechazilla, has he landed on the mun yet? Yeah, well, as you can see, we are, we are now sans a lander and we are heading away from the mun. So, yes, and all three couples are here, so no one was violently killed. Um, we have completed our mun landing. It was all great. Oh, I didn't have time. We've still got like an hour, haven't we? <laughs> We're really not that far. 
in the man 42 minutes yeah yeah i saw that boeing starline had docked actually i've not looked at the uh videos yet but it, i'm glad to hear that it's docked uh not only because um obviously that's finally boeing starliner does it because they uh launched um la last not last year Whenever they launched. They launched previously. <laughs> I can't remember the exact date now. And uh, they failed to reach the correct orbit. So I'm glad to hear that they've not only got to orbit, but got to the space station. Um, as far as I'm aware, the only real major hitches they had was that two of the thrusters of the Starliner failed. So one booster, one thruster, I should say, shut down unexpectedly. So the flight control system uh, moved that thruster's job to a different thruster. Then that thruster failed. Uh, shortly afterwards, so then they had to switch it to a third thruster, which then managed to get the vessel all the way to orbit. They did, the Starliner does have lots of redundancies built in, so this didn't phase Boeing, but obviously they are going to look into why that happened. But I'm, as far as I'm aware, that's the only real hitch that happened in the flight. So, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad to see we've got another... Like, I'm not a super-duper SpaceX fanboy. Like, I'm, I'm really happy to see other companies, like, you know, we need competition, basically. Um, I think a lot of people get the impression that I only care about SpaceX because I'm basically just a dancing monkey when it comes to my space this week and I'm lo constantly looking at analytics and what people are watching. And the fact of the matter is, is that people only watch SpaceX news. <laughs> so SpaceX gets most of the uh, videos runtime dedicated to it just because YouTubers, we have to try and get the best possible watch time in order for YouTube to promote our videos. And... That means I just have to prioritize Starship and space and SpaceX. So yeah, it's a shame. I would have liked to talk about more. Like I, I, I don't like the fact I had to get rid of the history segment because I really liked doing the history segment. But no one was watching it. Like less than a third of people were watching the history segment, and that just looks really bad on a video. I like the, the 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 very video in which I I changed my format in around July last year, where I cut out the history segment. And I made the Starship segment much longer. And the second I made that switch, the views just trebled. So clearly, that is why. So, yeah. I'm happy to see there being competition in the space industry. Is my uh, too long didn't listen to that. Thanks, JB, watching the whole thing. <laughs> Matt, imagine you accidentally pressing the time button. I've had to stop myself several times in this mission where I've like set up a minute and I'm like, right, let's just time warp. And I've just, and I've had like, no. <laughs> yeah, I haven't really written the script for space this week tomorrow. Um, I've got ideas of what I want to talk about, like Rocket 4 has been announced, so Astro, remember guys remember Astro with Rocket 3? They've announced Rocket 4, which is bigger and badder than Rocket 3, so that's going to be exciting, well um, I'll talk about that. Obviously the Starliner success, we've had uh, Starlink as well, SpaceX completed the third of the three back-to-back -back Falcon 9 launches, so we had... Uh, two Starlink missions within the same 24-hour period, and then another Starlink mission a few days later. So basically three Falcon 9s in the space of five days, which is pretty amazing. So I'll talk about that. Uh, well, there was a China Chinese Long March 2C, I think, that launched some communication satellites. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, what else was there? I'm sure there was something else. I was thinking of the Boeing Starliner. Oh, I think we had some images from uh, the Solar Orbiter or something. I think. I can't remember if that was um, something that's coming up or not. But yeah, well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll look into my notes that I called, called, took during the week. Uh, blonde, Blue Dog 9110. This is my first stream uh, watching you. Yeah, I mean, I don't stream very often. My last live stream was in 2019, like two years ago. So uh, yeah, I don't stream very often on this channel, um, just because effort in it. <laughs> have you played Satisfactory? A few people have asked me this, unless it's the same guy asking me over and over again. I don't know. 
But um, I've played a lot of Factorio, and my understanding is Satisfactory is basically 3D Factorio. Um, and I love Factorio. Um, really, really great game. It's like cracking it. <laughs> and I got it for free, which is great, because I was I just messaged the dev, and I was like, hey, I want to make a video on this. Can I get a Steam key? And he was like, yeah, here you go. So that was pretty cool. I got so many hours for free. Uh, yeah, I love Factorio. Uh, and then I stopped playing it because they kept adding stuff to the game and changing it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to stop playing and wait for it to just be done. And then I'll play it when it's finished. And now it's finished and I haven't played it again. I keep meaning to. Right now I'm really getting sucked into Open TTD. Love that game. And I want to start playing like mini metros. That looks really fun. Ooh. And Outer Wilds as well. Just bought that. <laughs> Someone's coming to check on my sanity. Yeah, I'm slowly losing it. But um, we're getting there. How far are we now? Probably like 35 minutes away, right? Oh, how good was that? 36 minutes and 10 seconds. <sighs> what is your favorite game except KSP? So, in no particular order, some of my favourite games of all time. This, this is the Matt Lown GOAT list. So, obviously, KSP is up there, right? Uh, Planet Coaster. Uh, Undertale. I mean, in the top five, it would be discounting. I feel Planet Coaster and KSP don't count because I sort of played them as a job. So, top five for all time for me. Undertale has got to be up there. Subnautica. The first one up there. Sonic the Hedgehog. I guess Sonic Mania, actually. It used to be Sonic the Hedgehog 2. But actually, I think Sonic Mania is, is better than all the classics. Because it took everything that was great about the classics and just made them so much better. So I'd say Sonic Mania. Uh, although, I don't know. It's weird because I've got kind of such a nostalgic connection to the classics. So I'd say the classic Sonic game <laughs> would be the third one. Um, my heart would be Sonic 1, my brain would be Sonic Mania, my appendix would think Sonic 2. It, it chops and changes, really. Definitely not Sonic 3. That game just doesn't click with me the same. And when I say Sonic 3, that includes the And Knuckles expansion. Uh, Sonic 3 and Knuckles is by far the weakest. Anyway, that's, that's one of them. What's another top game? Just Cause. Just Cause 2. Definitely up there. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, the best GTA. Don't at me. Oh, what else? What else is good? Dark Souls 3. Brilliant game. Love Dark Souls 3, I think. I might just hate it and it's Stockholm Syndrome at this point. Um, Spider-Man PS4. That's another great one. What's other great games I've played? Um, could never get into The Witcher 3. I, keep, I, mean, I keep meaning to give that game a proper go. I feel like I just need to sit down and just get into it. I can just... I just never can. Uh, Legend of Zelda... Link Between Worlds is my best, is my favorite Zelda. Uh, the 3DS game. Uh, what are some good games? Mario Odyssey. Oh, how can I forget Mario Odyssey? What a game. Subnautica, I can't beat because something about deep, dark things with faint fun. Yeah. The second Subnautica is a lot less scary and it's almost as good. It's got a lot more out of water bits, which are the weakest parts of the game, so I didn't enjoy them that much, but. Uh, it's a lot less um, thalassophobia-ish than the original Subnautica. And it's much easier. And the map is smaller. So yeah, you could always play Subnautica 2. Don't get me wrong, Subnautica is brilliant. But I think once you play the first one, like you, you kind of know all the tricks it's got. Uh, oh, no Minecraft. Oh, yeah, Minecraft. Yeah, Minecraft's definitely up there. Love Minecraft. Um... I'm trying to sort of names like, like, there'll be multiple Legend of Zeldas in the top 10, but I'm just keeping it to kind of one per franchise. Simpsons Hit and Run. <sighs> what a game. It's not a good game. Uh, don't know. Astro Boy Omega Factor. That game is a hidden gem, and not like what Reddit thinks is a hidden gem. Like, Undertale is a hidden gem. Like, what are you talking about? It's such a critically acclaimed game. But Astro Boy Omega Factor is one of, if not the best Game Boy Advance games. Uh, it's great. And not enough people know about it. 
Oh, someone has um, given me a super chat. Hello from Holland, Michigan. Do you have any new whiskey reviews? I did a whiskey review uh, on this stream, actually, uh, about 11 hours ago. And then I went to bed and woke up slightly hungover. <laughs> I think I didn't eat much. And um, so I didn't eat much and I've done a lot of exercise on Friday. So I was kind of running on empty. So when you're not eating anything and you've kind of burned a lot of calories, it doesn't take much alcohol to make you a bit tipsy, which I learned the hard way last night. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, whiskey reviews, I've kind of, I've done, I've said what I need to say. I'm not actually a huge fan of, like, uh, alcohol, as uh, as opposed to what the, uh, this caricature I've painted myself as. <laughs> uh, I don't think there are any whiskeys I've had that I haven't done a whiskey review of. Like, I've done, like, 15 whiskey review videos. Like, they're all, I don't drink that much whiskey, guys. Um... <laughs> I've had Jim Beam Black Edition, like single barrel. That's um, that's pretty good. I'd say that's a good eight out of ten. I don't know. It's good whiskey. There you go. There's my whiskey review. <laughs> um, any Star Wars games? No, I played a bit of Jedi Fallen Order. Just bored. It was boring. I was just so bored. I just stopped. Like, this is just so boring. Um, I guess. Star Wars Rogue Squadron, the, the GameCube one, the one where you're just flying. Rogue Leader, that's it. That was a great Star Wars game. Oh, someone said, um, opinion on Doom Eternal, nowhere near as good as the first Doom. Like, the, I get that the whole point is that you're always running out of ammo and you need to farm it, but it just annoyed me. Like, the fact you're always running out of ammo. In the first game, it doesn't matter. Oh, Rollercoaster Tycoon got to be there. Probably Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 because I'm a Zuma, I guess. Even though I'm 27, so I'm probably more Millennial. I'm sort of in, I'm that awkward age where I'm kind of between Millennial and Zuma. Okay. What else? Did someone put something about uh, Space Engineers is good. I don't care for it that much, but when I first got it, it was early access and I loved it. And since then, they've added all this stuff, and now it's like a complete game. And it, I'm just, I'm just alienated by it. I've no idea what's going on. When I got it, it was literally just a uh, sandbox building spaceships. That was it. There was no planets or anything. Um, someone wrote something. Have you played any VR games? You mean Beat Saber? There are no other VR games. There are, yeah. Beat Saber is great. Love Beat Saber. I don't really consider Beat Saber to be like a game, though. It's more just like a, a toy. I mean, obviously it's a game, but I don't think of it as being like a game. Um, Half-Life Alex is great. The problem is I like... I bought my VR headset because I'd broken my hand. You guys remember that farce that happened last year? I broke my hand. I couldn't really play video games because you kind of need two hands. But I can I could just wave my arms about and I'm like, hey, I'm just going to get Beat Saber. Which meant I had to buy an Oculus Quest. I bought an Oculus Quest and I bought things like Half-Life Alex and stuff in the Steam sale thinking I could just stream for my PC. And I could. And Half-Life Alex was really, really great. I loved it. It's mind-blowing, honestly. It's one of the most incredible experience I've ever had in video games um, but it was difficult because I had a broken hand so there were certain things I just couldn't do like I, it was really difficult to reload the gun and stuff to the point where I'm like look I'm just ruining my experience here by having this broken hand so I'm gonna wait for my hand to fully heal and then by the time my hand was healed I was sort of over VR <laughs> so I keep meaning to pick it up and play it again but now we're coming into summer it's a bit too hot <laughs> So yeah, have you played No Man's Sky? Have, didn't care for it. What else have we seen? I've never played War Thunder. It's one of the things where I just never, never, never played it. <laughs> I think we are getting far away from the mun now, aren't we? Hello, how long till touchdown on mun surface? Oh no, guys, should we tell them? <laughs> The mud, it's done. We did the landing. It's all great. And our Kerbals, they're all here. They, they all survived. So we're just waiting on leaving the um, Mund Sphere of Influence, which will be in 27 minutes. 
And then once that is done, we'll have about four hours until, uh, yeah, four hours, just under four hours until we reach Kerbin. So for that amount of time, I'm probably just going to, well, I've got a few chores to do. I'm going to uh, cycle to the shops, pick up a few bits and bobs. Uh, we need to buy a new toaster. <laughs> after my last, after the toaster that I've got has just blew up and crashed the stream. I'm sensing maybe a lot of Americans are just waking up, possibly. Because <laughs> everyone's now suddenly asking, when are we going to land on the moon? Like, we did it. We did it, guys. We did that about three hours ago now. No, I don't know when it was. It was about 10 o'clock, something like that. So yeah, a while ago we did the moon landing. We're on our way back to Kerbin now. I am sort of keeping an eye on my Amazon app as well because I've uh, I dropped my GoPro oof, and uh, scratched the lens. So I've had to buy a new lens for my GoPro and it was the expensive Max Mod lens as well. So there's a good way of spending £80 unexpectedly. But that's uh, arriving today and I think I have to sign for it because it's not like Amazon delivering it. It's like a courier. Let's... Uh, See where it is. Out for delivery. Estimated time. Oh, it's not on the little map yet. How's my CPU? It's good. Maybe you're asking what it is. It's a RT it's a Ryzen. I was about to say RTX. It's a Ryzen uh, 3950X being cooled by a Corsair uh, AIO. The the three fan one. H100i, I think. The, the really popular one that's got three fans, basically. Um, so it's been cooled pretty well. It's temperatures sit around 40 degrees Celsius. Ah. I'm about to land my first rover on lathe. Wish me luck, guys. Uh, Mathia Kaminera. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, try and aim for the land, not the water. Ah, uh, STI33W, welcome to the lounge squad. Uh, yeah, you get the video get videos early when I can. So space this week. You should get that tomorrow, not on Monday. Um, that's it. Actually, that's all I have to say. <laughs> as long as he doesn't fall asleep, this is a success. Well, I'm afraid to say that this is a failure. Then um, Sky Skyro Technics. Why is it hard for me to read names? Uh, because I did go to sleep. I slept for about eight hours on this stream. Uh, I timed the stream, so I launched on Friday night, and then I did all my burn and got on a course for the Mun, where, you know, it was the big 11-hour cruise to the Mun, and then I could just fall asleep for that period of time, and then I woke up, and I was just arriving at the Mun by the time I woke up, so it was timed pretty well. Yes, believe it or not, I sometimes do plan things <laughs> for videos. Yeah, Daffo Reels RN. Yeah, you can just rewind the stream to when I landed. It was very nerve-wracking. So I'm not. I'm not I'm just like just uh, looking out the window for a bit, you know. <laughs> How long have we got now? Twenty-three minutes. Cool. So when system time is saying about twelve forty-five, that'll be when we're leaving. the ship. And there's the crew.
Oh, where is Kerbin? Good question. I think it's a cl oh, it's there. <laughs> so that's where we're heading. How do you get your cameras to lock onto planets? No, you uh, press V. So by default it's on auto, which is like this. Press V once, you get to camera free. And it's free camera that is the good one. It sh the game should always be defaulted to free. I don't know why it's always defaulting to auto. Rubbish. <laughs> Did you sleep or literally watch this all night? No, I went to sleep. I'm not insane. Well, I guess I must be a little bit insane to even attempt this mission, but you know. <laughs> No UI MUN mission next. I have done an IVA only MUN mission to be fair, which is like almost UI less. Like you have to rely on the instruments in the vessel. Um, uh, especially because I didn't have Kerbal Engineer. So ignoring, like, this is what IVA view is. Like you can still see things like, you know, your propellants and stuff. Um, this information wasn't there. Like all you could see was um, that. And uh, this text here wasn't here. This is a mod, and I removed the mod for that video. And there are no cuts in the video either. So you know, I didn't cheat. But so, so I had to use like the um, the alpha, like the nav ball that's in the vessel, and the uh, atmosphere gauge and the altitude gauge and all that, like all the stuff in the vessel basically, and the throttle gauge. <laughs> <sighs> I'm a five-year subber. Can I get a shout-out in your next video? I'd give you a shout-out, but I've got no idea how you pronounce that name. Uh, let's give it a go. Five, uh, where, here, what, there you go. There's your shout-out. And this is going to be a video. Like, this will be uploaded as a, uh, as a VOD. Ooh. Are we there yet? We're nearly home. When I say nearly home, we're like four hours from home. But, uh, you know, we, we've, um, we've done all the difficult stuff. Now we can just relax. And uh, I'm somehow going to just get blown up by re-entry eating, aren't I? <laughs> How big is the temptation to time warp? Nothing at all. I'm not going to blow it now after all of this time. <laughs> I'm just gonna quickly grab a drink.
Whoa, I'm back. <laughs> I wasn't asleep, by the way, guys. I was just um, sorting out my lunch. <laughs> but yeah, that's why I've got system time there. So you can see what time it is for me. So if you wonder why I'm not here, and then you see it, it's like 3 a.m. That's... um. That's why I'm not there. I'm asleep. <laughs> but no, I um, slept on the uh, on the journey to the man. <laughs> it's weird that people just join and then not think to just maybe like skim the mouse over the uh, progress bar at the bottom to see that we have actually already been to the man. Actually, I guess a lot of people are checking on their phones, aren't they? Maybe. Yeah, um, yeah, JB136. I'll probably just be coming and going for the whole coasting time. <laughs> you always scared when you go through the door and announced, yeah. I'm guessing it's sunrise on the east coast of America, because a lot of new people are suddenly joining, asking where we are. I suspect it's because the east coast is now starting to wake up. It's my theory, anyway. <laughs> Favourite space movie? I had that last night. Uh, couldn't tell you which one is the, because I don't have one. But it'd be a toss-up between 2001 A Space Odyssey, because of course. Uh, Star Wars Episode 4, New Hope. And uh, The Martian, probably. That was good. Good film. I find Spaceballs painfully unfunny. Um, I, that terrible film. I'm really sorry, because I know a lot of people think of it as a classic. I just never found it. I could never finish it, basically. Uh, Mechazilla, two pounds again, thank you. I'll catch you on the return, Matt. All right, Mechazilla, I'll see you. Is that a pun? Because you're Mechazilla, right? You'll catch me. Is, is that Was that a pun? I don't know, whatever. <laughs> well, no. I'm not gonna change the title of the stream. Because it's a Mun mission. We're still doing the Mun mission. We're not back yet. Like when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin like landed on the moon, 
the mission wasn't over. Like, they were still doing the mission. Like, we've got all of our science. It's stored in here. Look. We've got all of our data, you see. But we need to take it back to Kerbin in order for the mission to be deemed complete. Oh, hi, are we? Oh, look at that. Eight minutes away from the Munsphere. So once we escape Munsphere of Influence, I'll then probably go AFK for a few hours. Because I ain't, I ain't going to stay here just talking. <laughs> talking to you people! <laughs> oh my god, is it still going? <laughs> yes, I know. It's crazy. I think in total it's going to be 19 hours is the total runtime. Um, I'm guessing a lot of people who are just joining didn't hear about the uh, drama that happened this morning. So basically... Came downstairs about 7.30, checked the stream, it was all still running, I hadn't got blue screen of death overnight, which was good. So um, then Beth, my lovely girlfriend, decided she wanted to make some toast, put the toast on, and then the toaster blew up and blew the fuse of the house, which was fine because my PC is on a separate circuit to that toaster, so the PC was fine, the mission wasn't affected, but the internet router was affected so the internet in the entire the whole house went down basically for about two minutes which meant that the stream died and my phone immediately blew up saying matt 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 the stream's on the stream and i'm like i'm just texting frantic saying i know i know guys just bear with me i'm restart the router is rebooting but it's gonna take a little while for it to like be back online and then we'll um do it. why is slow mode so slow yeah i think it's because like at the moment there's only 700 people watching and there's not really a lot to comment on, is there? Because um, nothing's really happening. But when there were like big things like the man landing, there was loads of comments, and then it was really hard to manage. And slow mode, it's like really hard to edit this video. Like the YouTube studio isn't working properly. I'm having to use a Chrome extension to force an older version of the studio to make it work. But I can never seem to edit the slow mode well. It's really sporadic. So I've kind of had to set it and then just leave it. I can't really change it too easily. Um, once this stream is over, I can then actually go back and set up my YouTube live streaming properly. I didn't even open the live dashboard when I started this. I just did it all on Streamlabs, thinking YouTube won't have changed anything. But spoiler alert, YouTube had changed everything, and none of the stream settings that I'd set up worked anymore. So it was a real, it was a real nightmare. Um, but we survived the journey. Let's see, we're nearly at the uh, the alarm I set myself. Six minutes away. Oh my god, I swear if I get one more, you should do a real-time Elu mission or a real-time Jewel 5. I swear, my brother in Christ. <laughs> yeah, at a push, I could do a Minmus uh, in real time. But honestly, I think the money is at the upper limit of what's actually doable in a live stream that wouldn't make you want to just gouge your eyes out. <laughs> like, I did. I think there's kind of like a... Uh, a cool idea in doing a real-time Dune emission, like just building a ultra-low power dedicated computer that I'll just put in like a separate room in my house with like a small crappy monitor and keyboard and mouse and just literally just use that as a dedicated PC that all that PC does is just streams a live Dune emission and then it just takes like a year in real time to do and it just streams on like a separate channel as like the real-time Dune emission and people can just tune in whenever they want and tune out. And, uh, yeah, and it would take, like, a year. I think that would just be a one-way mission, though. Like, it wouldn't be... <laughs> I'm not going to do a return as well. So it would be, like, I don't know, a rover or something like that. <laughs> Min mistakes a month in game time. Nah, you can do it faster than that. You can do it faster than that. I mean, Scott Manley has been to and from the Munt in an hour, and that's an hour in Kerbal time. So without without considering time warp, that's an hour 
there and back by just building a gigantic rocket that basically just constantly burns all the way to the halfway point between Kerbin and the Mun and then flips around and then constantly burns retrograde as like a giant suicide burn. Basically hugely inefficient, but it's really, really fast. I mean, with ridiculous rocket designs, you could do Juna in a real in real time, in a in a day, just by using a Kraken drive to make a Kraken drive that actually goes super fast, and you can do Juna without um, without time warp. Just launch at a point where, like, if I open the map screen, just like wait for a point in time. So use time warp to set the mission up. So wait for a point in time where like Kerbin's here and Juna is like here, <laughs> like they're very close, and then just go <laughs> to get across. Either by using a absurdly engine it overbuilt rocket, which uh, wouldn't really be practical, or uh, crack and drive, and you can easily do it in a day. But I'm not going to do that because that's just that's dumb. <laughs> not that this is like less dumb, but this is like I don't know. It's hard for me to put it into words, I guess, because it doesn't really make any sense. But um, I think there's something cool about it. like this is almost like watching a real Apollo mission. I mean, it's not at all, but it's kind of similar. <laughs> Today. If I ever were to present this as a video, I would try and script some way of wording that little stream of consciousness. <laughs> Interstellar real time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, someone says, how to set a target. The target doesn't show on a map in a green triangle. A green triangle? What do you mean? Do you mean like... Um, well, I can't show. But like, you mean like the, the nodes that tell you how close they are? I don't know. I, just, I don't think I've ever changed the default setting. You kind of have to be fairly... Like your, your orbital line has to intersect the orbital line of whatever it is you're trying to encounter. A lot of it's just practice, though, to be honest. Right, we're a minute away. So we can use system time to know when the sphere of influence is going to change. Let's see. Three, two, one. And we're exactly a minute. So at uh, 12.47 and 45-ish seconds, that will be when we change. Jeremy Glass, people have like come up with like different versions of what I came up with. So basically, I w I used um, the inflatable docking port. Um, other people came up with an idea of using hinges instead of pistons. No one could get it to work perfectly, but I think a couple of people managed to get semi throttleable ones and ones that are a little bit more reliable than my airlock solution. But, uh, yeah, I mean, ultimately it is exploiting a glitch in the game. So it's always going to be a little bit janky because the game is not supposed to function like that. It's just exploiting a weird sort of physics quirk. Anyway, three, two, one, zero, and switch. There we go. <laughs> now the ship has to reorient itself again. So we'll make sure our periapsis hasn't been messed up. But it looks like it's correct, doesn't it? So yeah, we're not gonna. So we're gonna be going straight down now, basically. So okay, three hours and forty minutes. What I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna do this. Oh god, I'm I'm kind of scared about accidentally warping to periapsis. So if I set a time, let's see. Time to periapsis is. Three hours, 40 minutes. 
Oh, it helps if I go to the right side, doesn't it? So I'd say there would be a good time to resume. So that maneuver node, and you can tell anyone that joins and gets confused as to what's happening, you can tell them. In fact, I'll put this 10 minutes before to give you guys some warning. There, so that maneuver node is at the 10 minute point before periapsis. So that'll be, if you want to watch the re-entry, you want to be joining at this time. So three hours and 30 minutes from now. I'll probably uh, hang about for a bit, but Ooh, ah! I'm probably not going to be here constantly. Let's see. Just going to finish my uh, finish my drink. Oh, uh, Zeke Hunter two four seven has donated two US dollars. Thank you so much. I don't know. I'm not really that au fait with the comings and goings of the whiskey industry, unfortunately. Um, I just buy like the supermarket stuff. <laughs> I'm not really that clued in, unfortunately. Yeah, I agree with you, um, Kavitha Sunil Kumar MS. Um, planes are a bit limited. Like, there aren't there aren't many ways in which you can design like a Mark II plane. You end up always making something that looks like an SR seventy one. There are, of course, ways you can vary it, but like, it'd be nice if you had more options with wings. And it looks like KSP two is definitely addressing that. They do have like, kind of like procedural type wings. You can make the wings a bit like how you build fairings in KSP-1, where you sort of draw it out. Ah. Matt, will you make a new movie? I sometimes toyed with the idea of making like another film like Into the Warp, but Into the Warp, I feel like, was my... Uh, with my magnum opus, I don't think I could top that, and I don't know what else I could really do in KSP. I don't have conflict. My vision of KSP is similar to like the original Star Trek vision, in that there's no internal conflict between the Kerbals. They just have a shared goal of peace and wanting to explore, and you know there being like a war or something would conflict with that. So, uh, yeah, interact with aliens maybe, but I don't know. I, I think I've kind of said what I want to say with KSP movie making. If I have a great idea, I'll do that, but I don't have any plans to make another KSP movie. Aha, Farco Gamer 3. I did indeed transfer the data, as you can see. We have our gravity scan, our EVA report, our surface sample, our temperature scan, our mystery goo, and seismic scan. I forgot to put a barometer on the uh, lander, so I couldn't do a pressure test. Not that we'd really find much, right? Because the, the man has no atmosphere, but oh well, you live and learn. Malta, yeah, welcome to the rabbit hole of uh, KSP. It's a challenging game. Uh, don't get too disheartened if you see YouTubers like, you know, me or anyone else where we can get to, like, orbit really, really easily. We've just been doing it for so many hundreds of thousands of hours. <laughs> like, um, it took me, you know, well over 100 hours probably to reliably get to orbit every time, first try. And things like Rendezvous took ages to do as well. So, unfortunately... KSP doesn't really have a learning curve, it's more of a learning wall that you have to scale up using like your fingernails. But once you got past that, it's a pretty fun game. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's such a rewarding game. Like, I still remember like, in terms of like, top gamer moments for me, in terms of like, gaming satisfaction, uh, defeating Nameless King for the first time in Dark Souls 3, definitely up there, but honestly, achieving Orbit in KSP 1, and this very song that you can hear right now, started going on I was just sat there in my chair after stressing out for like hours and hours like I started playing in the evening the sun was coming up by the time I did it and I was like I did it 
I made it to space. And that was when I realized that uh, I loved this game. And then another big achievement was my first Minmus landing. Like landing on Minmus for the first time, which was obviously the first celestial body I landed on, with the help of Scott Manley as my co-pilot, as always. <laughs> um, that was like a huge, like, oh my god, I did it. I, ne I just never thought I would ever possibly do it. So yeah, there is, um, it's a very, very rewarding game. Matt, are you doing, doing the journey back from the Mun? I am indeed. We have done the Mun landing. Uh, we've been streaming now for uh, like 14 hours or something, 15 hours, something crazy. Probably a bit longer than that, actually. Um, do you, why is everyone asking if I've got the parachutes here? You can see the parachutes. Did you land yet, Matt? Yes, I did. It was fine. I landed on Earth to the edge of a crater. It looked flat from the air, well, you know, above the ground. And then when I touched down, I was like, oh my god, this is a really steep slope. Which was fine. The ladder didn't flip over, but I had to spend like an hour on the surface waiting for the command module to reach a point where I could rendezvous with it. And it was just slowly sliding down this cliff. As I was like, really, really hope the Kraken's not going to just cause something to explode. And then when the mothership finally came above me, I was like, yes, let's launch and get to the mothership. Oh, Adam Lee has donated US $5. Before I sign off for the night, I wanted to say thank you for watch. I wanted to thank you. Watching the Blunderbirds videos has taught me how to use the nav ball and reach the mun. You're very welcome. I'm glad you enjoy my videos. I hope you still US. So you must be on the west coast and it's like super early in the morning for you. I want to say. Let's guess. I'm going to guess you're in California. <laughs> That's like the... What else is it on the West Coast? Is it uh, Okla uh, Oklahoma? What's the one above California? Don't know. I'm pretty sure I could only name about 20 US states. Um, is it common like... Can how many Americans... How many European countries can Americans name? I reckon it's probably less than the number of American states that Europeans can name. And that's not really. That's probably not a slight against Americans. I think that's just because a lot of mainstream pop culture is made in America, so we kind of learn all the states' names through that. And a lot of YouTubers are American. We kind of know which state they live in, so it's sort of based on stuff like that. Whereas, like, there's probably less ways in which Americans would naturally learn. Um, European countries. I guess they get like Britain, uh, France, Spain, Germany, Italy, and then maybe some, maybe Portugal. You might get that. Sweden, Switzerland, Norway, Finland. And that's probably it. But obviously you've got the ones like Latvia, Russia, technically, uh, Slovakia, Lithuania, Hungary, hung, hung, Hungary, Hungary, where Danny comes from. Danny twenty four sixty. Who? That's his name. <laughs> uh, comes from. Um, I forgot what I said now. Malta is another one. Anyway, yeah. I'm trying to think. Um, well, let's see if we can keep going. There's Croatia, Slovenia, Czech Republic. Um, I've said all the Nordic. Well, no, Netherlands, Iceland, Denmark. Have I said Denmark yet? I don't think I have yet. So Denmark, um, Ireland. I guess it would be picky. England, Scotland, Wales. Um, did I say Latvia? Yeah, Bulgaria, Belarus, Belgium. <laughs> I forgot that one. Um, Lux, Luxembourg. Um, Vatican. What's the little one? By Greece. There's Greece. Uh, Turkey. I think Turkey's partially in Europe, isn't it? Oh, I've had another... Oh, Nakayama uh, Yasuki. I, I don't know if I've pronounced that name right. I'm sorry. You've donated again. That's really kind of you. Uh, KSP is a good game. Allows us to... Oh, I've scrolled up. Hang on. Allows us to seamlessly understand the connection between orbins, machines, propulsion, celestials, and many other elements. Austria. Did I say Austria? I'm sure I said Austria. I'm sure I said Romania as well, didn't I? Oh, there's Poland as well. Poland. Serbia. New Zealand. I don't know if that's a joke, but New Zealand is... Oh, in Monaco... Brazil, this is not in Europe. Sometimes I don't know if these 
people really ironic or not. Okay, let's see how many U.S. states. I bet I'm gonna set the challenge of. I reckon I can probably name twenty U.S. states. So let's go. Uh, California, Oregon. That's it, actually. <laughs> California, Oregon, Alaska, Oklahoma, North Dakota, South Dakota, North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, New York, Rhode Island, Washington. Maryland, Arkansas, Texas, uh, Ohio, Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, Nevada. What's the one next to Nevada? Arizona. Well, there you go. That's 20. <laughs> uh, could I keep going? I don't think I can name all 52. Or however they are. Um, let's see. I've, 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 there's like the three O's. There's Oregon, Ohio, and Oklahoma. And I can't even remember if I said all of those yet, so I've already lost count. But there's those three. Uh, I said New York, didn't I? Hawaii. <laughs> uh, Georgia. There's Georgia. I know that one. Uh, uh, see, I'm thinking of just YouTubers. Idaho. Because every astronaut's from Iowa. No, he's from Iowa. There you go. There's two. Uh, Detroit. No, not Detroit. Michigan. Or Michigan, even. Uh, <laughs> um, Tennessee. Have I said that yet? Kentucky. Uh, Maine. Is that one? Um... I don't know if I can't think of any others. It's like one of those things where, like, if someone told me another one, I'm not going to like, oh, yeah, I know that one. But how many Australian states can you name? Okay. There's um, Western Australia. There we go. New South Wales. Tasmania. Washington? <laughs> That's it. Eastern Australia. I don't know. They're not good with them. Sorry, Marcus House, if you're watching this. I know where Marcus House is. Uh, Tasmania. But, uh, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Where's Boston? Boston's not a state. Boston's in... Massachusetts! I know that because of the dropkick Murphys. <laughs> Georgia is a European country, isn't it? Not in Asia. Oh. New Hampshire. Oh, yeah. See, things like that I would never just think of, but I, I know of it when you say... Panama is not a state. I don't know if people are, like, being sarcastic. How many African countries can you name? That's a difficult one. Um, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Niger, South Africa, Mozambique, Kenya, M M M M Mad Madagascar... Um, Rwanda. Uh, this is great content, by the way, isn't it? Egypt, um, Sri Lanka, Sierra Leone. Um, I'm not great with African countries, to be honest. I'm very ignorant. That sort of thing. Uh, Matt forgot shoots. No, Matt didn't. And even if, even if I did, it doesn't matter because the Kerbals have got parachutes now, so it's fine. How long have we got now? Three hours, 17 minutes. Okay. I'm going to just set an alarm on my phone, I think. Oh, set an alarm for two hours, 58 minutes. Oh, someone posted all the um, Australian states. Tasmania, got that one. Queensland, how did I forget Queensland? Yeah, I did know that one. I just forgot. <laughs> New South Wales, got that one. Northern Territory, Southern Australia, Western Australia, got that one. And uh, I didn't realise the uh, Australian capital was its own thing. Because Australia's capital is really weird, isn't it? It was literally built as a capital city, and it's actually really small. It's uh, Canberra. A lot of people think it's Sydney or Perth or something like that, or Melbourne. But no, it's Canberra, which is like... Odd. 
Well, not odd, I suppose. It's just uh, you just unique, I suppose. <laughs> Do Asian countries? Is this like really interesting to people? Um, I guess Russia, Siberia, that's in Asia, isn't it? Uh, China. Um, I wasn't doing a racist accent, by the way. I was impersonating Trump, but I realized someone thought, might have thought I was doing a really offensive Chinese accent just then. Uh, yeah, China, uh, Japan, uh, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Kazakhstan, uh, Uzbekistan, all the stands, you know. <laughs> um, then there's all those little islands, like Philippines, Vietnam, North and South Korea. This isn't really that interesting. Uh, <laughs> talking points to go along. Yes, do Juno no time warp. I mean, I thank you for your um, kind donations as a channel member for so many months, but I cannot indulge that idea of doing a time warpless Juno mission. I, don't, I, I, I choose life. <laughs> Name a place in the Philippines, and this is expensive. Thank you, um, Clichy's Lesbian Fish has donated 50 of a currency that might even run I'm, uh, I'm not sure uh, what that symbol is. I'm guessing um, it's the Philippines. But the um, a place in the Philippines is it Manila. Manila? That's the Philippines, right? Manila is the capital of the Philippines. Don't quit me. I'm sure it's been min <laughs> vanilla. I'm sure it's Manila. <sighs> Best vacuum ending engine for direct descent Munlander. I mean, they're all they're all fine. It just depends what you want, really. I mean, if you want an ultra efficient engine, you can use an ion or a nuclear engine. I say a, the good all rounder would be the uh, Wolfhound. That's the Making History DLC. The Cheetah's pretty good as well. If you want the stock game, I guess Terrier. I used the Terrier for this mission. The Terrier is a great all rounder. Like it's pretty, it's pretty efficient. It's a good little small profile, so you can easily dash into like landers and stuff. Yeah. How many Canadian provinces? Well, not that many. Uh, Quebec, Nova Scotia. Uh, that's probably it. <laughs> um, again, if you told me them, I'd be like, oh yeah, I know that. But uh, which one's Toronto in? Um, no. Yeah, Wolfhounds are like seriously OP in KSP. Like the OP, ve the OP engines would be like the Vector, the Wolfhound. Uh, I guess nuclear and ion engines are pretty OP in a way, although they do have their own compromises. get this comment from schema matt doesn't see this chat he sees only the chat on the video i don't know what that means i'm looking at both chats are not all of the chats going on the video is there like a problem like i i can't name like regions of sweden like i'm really sorry i i, I don't like i can name a lot of british i can name a lot of english counties right but um I'd like to think I can name them all, but uh, I'm not going to make that claim. Because again, it's like, you'll, there'll be ones that you just can't think of and then you hear like, oh yeah, how did I forget that?
Oh, Matt Lam played GeoGuessr. You have, to, you have to pay for GeoGuessr now, don't you? I did see the Google Street View. I was cycling to work the other day and the Google Street View car passed me, so I waved at it. And I keep looking at Google Street View now on that road and I still haven't seen myself, so I don't know if I'll make the cut. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I'm not sure why the chat in the video is so delayed. I think it's because... Actually, no, I do know exactly why. It's because there is a, uh, there's a bit of a lag between the stream... So, like, when I say something on stream, you guys won't hear me until, like, 20 seconds after I've said it. So, if I ask you guys to say, like, oh, name something in the chat, it will be, like, about half a minute before you guys will actually start saying that because you've only just heard me say it. Uh, I think because that's because Streamlabs builds in a delay as well. So, if you, like, say something or do something happens that you regret, you can immediately just sort of stop the stream before it gets to that, I think, is the idea. And also, just that's just what happens with latency and stuff like that. So that's why, and obviously, the the chat on the video is part of that delayed system. So that's why the uh, the video chat is delayed. <laughs> Hi, Galaxy Gav. <laughs> hey, Stacy Sheets has talked about continuing space race speed run. I'm a bit, I don't want to do that series at the moment because I'm kind of on the Russian part and I don't like discussing Russia right now given the whole political situation that we're in. So maybe I'll pick that series up at some point, I'm not sure. I don't know how I'm going to frame it. I might just start doing the alternate history stuff like the Gemini Mun mission, so extended Gemini. So there was a, um, there was a plan for basically a giant Gemini capsule that had like a lab on board and stuff and that would have been a... A moon lander. Uh, or something like the, um, the, uh, the, 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 what's the rocket called? Soyuz. A Soyuz moon mission. A Soyuz moon mission. A Soyuz moon mission. I could do that again in Kerbal Space Program. A Soyuz moon mission. Which would involve multiple launches, refueling, that sort of thing. Like orbital assembly. Would have been complicated, but it would have used the R7 booster. Which worked a lot better than the N1 booster. <laughs> in that it, you know, it worked. <laughs> and the N1 did not. Say Worcestershire sauce fluently. All right then, Worcestershire sauce. There you go. That's that's how you say Worcestershire sauce fluently. Uh, do Ello in this format. Yeah. I've, there's been so many comments. People going, "Ha ha, you should do Elo. Ha ha, you should do Jewel." <laughs> yeah, guys. There's like, there's been 70 million of you have written that comment. <laughs> So, Starship, Vulcan, or New Glenn, which is your favourite of the three methane rockets? Well, I don't know, like, it's just a rocket. You can have, you don't have to like one over the other. Like, they're all good. And, th by the way, guys, there is nothing wrong with how I say the word methane. You guys are so self-conscious. That's just how we say it in British, you know? It's like we say aluminium, not aluminum. <laughs> it's, a, it's a methane in this country. I think Australians can say it either way. So Marcus House is letting the side down by saying methane. <laughs> I don't really know if, if that is the truth about Australians. Um, but yeah, no, it's always been... Me I've always learned it as methane. It sounds really weird to say methane. I'm like, it's methane. I did A-level chemistry. <laughs> so I did a lot of like organic chemistry, things like that. And methane came up quite a lot. <sighs> uh, 
do minless like this. Nah, I'm good fam, thanks. So, how far are we? So, if anyone who's not sure yet, this burn indicator here, this is basically just the amount of time left on the stream. Like, this is the, well, not time left on the stream. This is the 10 minute warning before periapsis. So this manoeuvre node takes place 10 minutes before my perigee. So if you want to like leave and come back, set an alarm for, in this case, uh, three hours and five minutes. And they'll come back to here. And there's only 10 minutes between these two points. And so I'll be like here engaging. I'm probably going to disappear at some point during this little course. But I quite like this as an idea for like, if you've got two monitors, you just have this on one monitor. It's like a little cool thing you can sort of keep watching as it goes on, you know. Oof. Oh, uh, the world of has sent a super chat of uh, two of the currency CHF, which I'm too ignorant to know what that is, I'm afraid. You need a good old cup of tea. Um... Uh, yeah, I ain't one of those tea boos, you know, <laughs> like people who like act like they're so British and are so obsessed with tea, blah, blah, blah. I've heard the word tea boo <laughs> being used, for that one, which I love. Uh, I don't like hot drinks. I never drink hot drinks. I'm not a fan of tea at all. I'll drink coffee, maybe, but if I want caffeine, I'll have an energy drink. And if I want anything else, I will just have water. Uh, unless I'm like in a pub or something, in which case I'll have a beer. Or if I'm driving, I'll have a Coke. But, um, yeah, I don't really drink hot drinks, I'm afraid. Get a new toaster. I do. I will need to get a new toaster. I'm going to look at Amazon right now. Let's whack we my phone out. Ah. Oh. My pets at home war. My pets at home order is now ready to collect at our Otto Exeter store. What? I didn't... I've not ordered anything from Pets at Home. I don't even know what that is. Where is that? It's miles away. That's in the north of England. I think uh, someone has ordered something from Pets at Home and they've accidentally entered my mobile number instead of their own and so now I've received the notification that uh, their order is ready to collect. <laughs> Shall I phone the store? Shall we do it on live stream? <laughs> uh... I better just check. I better make sure Beth hasn't ordered anything, but I think she would have told me if we, if she had. I better just. Uh, I'm just gonna. Yeah. Why would she put my mobile? I'm gonna have to just phone the sh the store because some poor soul is not gonna get their pets at home order. <laughs> I'm gonna do it on the stream. <laughs> Might be a scam text. It's not got a link, guys. It literally just says. Your order is ready for collection at Pets at Home. Use this code to collect it. And it's not a link. It's not a scam because there's no clickable link. It literally just says, go to the store, use this code, and you can pick up your order. Like, if it was a scam, there'd be a link there, right? I'm going to just, I'm going to phone the store. Let's give him a ring. Uh, hi, uh, yeah, I've just received a, um, a text message saying that my order is ready to collect from the store and it's got a code. But I think whoever's placed the order has put their mobile number in wrong and they've put in my number instead because uh, I live in Devon and I haven't ordered anything from Pets at Home. So I, did, I didn't know if there might be another number associated with the order. No, that's fine. <laughs>
Do you want me to tell you the number so you know which order it was? Uh, let me just, uh, I'll have to put you on speaker just so I can uh, find the number. Uh, it's uh, 8066. 172. Uh, so that was 8066. 172. That's all right. Hopefully they get their order, whoever it was. <laughs> all right, cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, that was fun. <laughs> Plymouth's not in Cornwall, Kerry Hoggard. It's very nearly in Cornwall. It's like on the, uh, it's on the border. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have read the code on stream, but I mean, I don't think anyone's going to care, right? <laughs> I'm going to collect it. And people correct me like, no, Plymouth's in Cornwall. Like, guys, I, I literally live in Plymouth. I know where it is. It's like basically in Cornwall. Like, it's right on the border. Like, you just cross a bridge in Plymouth and then you're in Cornwall. Like, it's almost like... The city straddles the border nearly. There's like a town immediately up to the border, which is Plymouth. And then as soon as you cross the river, there's another town called Saltash, and that's Cornwall. Um, so, yeah, Plymouth is pretty much as close to Cornwall as you can get. But it is very much in Devon. I really hope that, like, I'm not going to get a text message from Beth in a second saying, Oh, by the way, I've ordered something at Pets at Home at Uxeter. Can you... uh? Uh, just go pick it up for me. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> is like, is there anyone in this stream? I mean, there's only 800 people, which in the grand scheme of things is a very small number when we're talking about the population of Earth. And I think, like, if someone is actually a, in the position to go and collect this order for a mysterious, which, let's be real, is probably just going to be, like, cat litter or something then go for it, you know. <laughs> Will you do a bop bass? No, because that's just going to be pain and suffering, isn't it? Um, a bop bass will just float away. It's got terrible... Although, to be fair, I've done a gilly bass. Now we've got the ground anchor. Um, yeah. Maybe. Uh, maybe a git. Oh my gosh! I say, what about gilly base? Literally, just off the back of that, I was like, oh, no, I was just talking about gilly base. Maybe doing more gilly base stuff. Like you can have like gravity defying bases because the surface gravity of gilly is so low. But yeah, it would be a nice. Yeah, it's not Exeter though. Uh, Rhino is separate. Like Exeter is only an hour. Of if it was in Exeter, then I would have been like, okay, maybe Beth's ordered something or Beth's parents have ordered something and they've used my number or something like that. This is like somewhere in the north of England, like near Sheffield. So it's not, um, it's not going to be someone I know. <laughs> Prank call <cool> someone. <laughs> nah, I'm good. <laughs> That's wild, though, that, like... The number they put in happens to be another British person who was like, well, it, like the odds of that happening are like quite low. <laughs> Text your number, neighbor. Nah. <laughs> For those who don't know, you can like text your number, neighbor. So just take your phone number as a literal number and then add one to it. So say if your number. As an example, your phone number was just 1234. You would text the number 1235. Like, it's one above what you yours is. And yeah, you need number neighbours. Then there's that meme of someone who texted some dead guy's phone. <laughs> and his widow texted back. Which I'm pretty sure is fake, but it was still kind of funny. as a potential scenario. Yeah, order a pizza. Yeah, JB, you do raise a good one. The British numbers do start the same. 
But uh, yeah, still, it was wild that it was like a, a valid number. I assume that most phone numbers are um, like not like the phone number 07111111. That's not going to be a real number, is it? So there'll be numbers that like won't be valid. So it's kind of crazy. What I meant was it was kind of crazy that it's like a valid number. <sighs> yes guys thanks i concede that uh i was uh didn't really think that sentence when i said it's crazy they put in a british numbers phone number of course they're gonna put in another british person because it will start with the same code i meant like what i meant to say uh was uh it's crazy they entered a, a number that just happened to be valid and happened to be someone like myself who was willing to just phone the store and explain i'd say the odds of that happening are pretty low like, i think most people would just like ignore the text which I probably should have done until I'd valid, very verified with everyone I know that it wasn't them placing the order. <sighs> Alexa, play Ocean Man by Ween. I, d I wasn't actually talking to my Alexa. I just wanted to see if I could trigger anyone's Amazon Echoes that were nearby their computers. Let me know if I got anyone. <laughs> I'm now just wait I'm now just eagerly watching the chat to see if I triggered anyone's Alexas. <laughs> it's like that guy who um played COD, but he turned he made his username say Xbox off, which is the voice command to turn your Xbox off. And he'd like kill people and they'd rage like, Oh, that Xbox off guy and then the Xbox would start like, Do you want to shut down? And you hear them go, Xbox off you <gasps> Oh no <laughs> Hey I got someone's Alexa. Sakura's light. You just got trolled. <laughs> yes. I think I caught some people's Alexas. <laughs> we're doing a, we're doing a little trolling. We're doing a little trolling. <laughs> no, my Alexa is really stupid. I only have Alexa in my car. To be fair. I've not even got a nice car. I just put an aftermarket stereo in it. <laughs> yeah, and I can't even do the same trick with Google because I have a Google Home right next to me, so I'll just end up triggering my own Google Home. Granted, I could literally just flick the mute switch, but I'm too lazy for that. Like, my plan was to get up and do stuff during the coast back to Kerbin, but that was like half an hour ago, and I'm still just sat here because I can't bother to do anything. Yes, I got Jerry Glasses Alexa. <laughs> That's what I mean. It's a good song. <laughs> you can see the map screen. I mean, if you want, and I'll show the map screen in a second to, in response to Lachlan Zip. Uh, there's the map screen. But you can see I've got that maneuver node there. That's uh yeah. So I mean, the um the way you know when I've seen a message is when it, it will like sync up with the chat because the chat that you see on your screen, so this chat, is like the same delay as the rest of the stream. Like, there's like a twenty or thirty second delay with the stream, so that's why I'm answering questions like so late on, basically. <sighs> Matt, are you literally just gonna stay here for two hours until Kerb in orbit? I like to think I'm not going to. Um It's kind of cool that you can see the rotation of Kerbin, though, can't you? 
I think. Or is that the clouds moving? I'm not sure. Uh, SFS Astro, will Into the Warp be the in-flight movie? No, the in-flight movie is an iPod touch is an iPod touch with a copy of Over the Hedge on it. Worked for Tim Dodd, worked for me, <laughs> works for Mike Kerbals. Falcony, six dislikes. I'm actually pleased to hear that people who are using the return dislike Wait, do the streams still have dislikes? I'm not sure. But I use the extension return YouTube dislike and some of my videos it still says dislikes disabled. I'm like, I haven't disabled them. Why can't I see the dislikes? So it's, I'm actually quite pleased to hear that you can see that there are some dislikes on this video from that app, from that extension. I'm very, as are pretty much every YouTuber that I've ever known, um, is, has been very against the removal of dislikes. So uh, yeah, I wish, uh, I wish YouTube hadn't done that. Because it's very, um, because when you're looking at tutorials, like I look at a lot of tutorials and stuff, and I'm like, well, is this legit? Is this actually going to solve the problem I'm having? Because before you could just use, if you go in, there's two likes and 72 dislikes, you know that tutorial is trash and you're not to use it. And sometimes that can actually be, there can be tutorials that like tell you dangerous things. Like it could, or it could be like a troll. Like they tell you how to set up a batch file to do a certain thing, and the batch file is actually just going to delete system 32 or something. So, uh, yeah. How can he see dislikes? See, yeah, you can get a Chrome extension and a Firefox, uh, whatever extension, called Return YouTube Dislike, and uh, it brings back dislikes. So for older videos, it just uses archives of what the dislike count was, and then. If someone is using the return YouTube dislike app and dislikes a video, the uh, the extension, I should say, sorry, will log that and then add that to the dislike count for the extension. So anyone who's so the idea is if we can get as many people using the extension as possible, then we end up with a more functional dislike bar. Ugh. <sighs> Robert Wallhead, going to bed down in Australia. Looking forward to catching up tomorrow. To be honest, um, the, you, it'll be done, you know? If you do two hours and 47 minutes, it's gonna be like the final thing. So yeah. So guys, the uh, if you want the timer, and anyone who comments here, you can sort of reply to more clueless people uh, when they join. Uh, you can just see the uh, start burn time. Uh, indicator on that maneuver node that's not obviously a real maneuver node um that's just like that's your 10 minute warning for atmospheric entry basically so if you set an alarm on your phone for that and then you can go away and do something else uh and then you can come back and that'll be your last 10 minutes and then for the last 10 minutes i'll definitely be here talking and stuff Yeah, I mean, maybe I could just stream. Maybe I could do this mission, but with time warp, so it's not dumb <laughs> and boring. And I could just, like, you can just see my process, maybe. Uh. Ah. Why are people arguing in the chat, man? Let's just chill. Let's just have a chill pill, you know? <laughs> Gilly Rover. A uh, Gilly Rover, I think... I think would present an interesting challenge, right? Because you'd probably have to have an ion engine on the back of the rover. 
and uh, just have the iron engines pointing so that they're basically pushing the rover into the ground because otherwise the rover is just going to float away. <laughs> <laughs> you should stream more. This is great. Wow. Well, I'm I'm glad to hear that the bar is that low. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, Gilmore Space Static fired their Phoenix engine. Maybe a space this week appearance. Hadn't heard about that. I might look into that. Um, I've already, I don't like space this week being too much longer than ten minutes. So I don't know if it will make the cut because I've already got quite a lot to talk about. But I'll have a little look, and if it's worth, if I think it might be worth talking about, I'll definitely give it some consideration. Yeah, <laughs> cool. All right, so right now we've got two hours, 45 minutes. I'm going to, uh, I've got to do some chores now. I need to go to the shops as well. And the shops are about half an hour walk away. So I'm going to walk off to the shops, pick up a few bits and bobs. I'll come back. I need to have a shower as well because I'm a disgusting mess. And uh, just a few other tasks. So I'm going to head off. I'll probably be back in a couple of hours. The stream will just carry on running. And uh, hopefully it doesn't devolve into chaos. And... Uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in a bit. See you later. T I'll move the cursor up the screen. I might pop in and out for a bit, but I don't want feel people like they have to stay around and watch. Like That's why I've left that time on the bottom. Like You can just set an alarm, leave, and then just come back when there's the next interesting bit. What I'll do as well, if you join my Discord, yeah, link in the description, uh, I'll do an at everyone message when we're about... Uh, I'll do an at everyone on Discord, and I'll write a tweet to warn you 10 minutes in advance of when our atmospheric entry is going to take place so that you can just come back and you get sort of notified, basically. Um, yeah, <laughs> tasks like Among Us. I actually have an audio file of Nate Simpson, creative director of KSP2, uh, saying the words Among Us. Maybe I'll uh, share it, you know, <laughs> at some point. Uh, anyway, that's it. I'll see you guys later. Oh, I've got to acknowledge a super chat quickly. Um, Suka has pledged, um, I keep saying pledged, donated $150 from a country I'm not quite sure, NT. But uh, thank you very much for that. Super chat for a one-way ticket to low Earth orbit. Afraid Lan Aerospace isn't offering those services. But your donation is still very much appreciated. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, cool. And now I shall, um, I shall bid thee adieu. <laughs>
Oh, hello. Just thought I'd drop in and see how everyone's doing. I just got back from the shop. Um, bought a few things, cycled there, so I got a bit of exercise. I mean, it was very, it's like two kilometers away, so it's not really real exercise, but you know, got my heart rate at least going a bit for the day, at least uh, <laughs> second to uh, when I landed on the man, that was a bit of a heart rate pacer. But yeah, got that done, bashed out of the way. Uh, what did I buy? I bought pizza, some bread rolls, some cheesy topped fresh made bread rolls in fact. Some ham for myself and some fake vegan disgusting ham for Beth. Uh, I bought some fresh chicken, we're gonna probably have a curry tonight or something like that. Intense chair squeaking, yeah it's kind of a, I think something's a bit loose in this chair, I need to tighten something. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've got to head back out in a second though, because um, my bike has got this bit of an annoying squeak to it, so I've got to try and figure out the cause. I'm 99% certain it's the uh, the rear rack. So um, I've got a, uh, if anyone follows my second channel, <laughs> uh, you'll know what my commuter bike looks like. It's like an old mountain bike that I've sort of turned into a commuting beast, a traffic destroying monster. It's got this big rack at the back where I can carry loads and loads of stuff. Like I can get a week's worth of shopping on the back of that bike. Um, uh, yeah, so it's, it's good. It's a good, good little bike. And uh, it's got a bit of a squeak to it. And I think just something's coming a bit like one of the bolts is coming a bit loose on the rear rack. So I just need to tighten them all up with my torque wrench. Check, probably check the other bolts of the bike as well. I think I need to get it serviced at some point too. Uh, I don't really do my own servicing. I just tend to take that to the bike shop because they like know what they're doing. All right, it's only like 25 quid. I like supporting the local business, especially a local bike shop. Don't want them to go out of business, so I'll support them there. And, uh... Yeah, how are we doing with the mission, though, eh? Let's see. We've got a, little, got a wee while left, haven't we? Should we have a quick look at the uh, the map screen? So although it looks like we haven't made much progress, this will be exponential. So it starts off really slow, then gets faster and faster and faster. So, like, this between here is 10 minutes. Between here is, like, an hour. So, like, it will get faster. Kerbin will start rapidly approaching. We're just on the boring coasting phase, unfortunately. But we are plodding on nicely. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I just thought I'd do a little check of the systems. Let's see. We have a uh, fuel levels all look good. Well, not that we need the fuel. We've got our ablator. That's good. Electric charge is still full. Excellent. Uh, press the wrong button there. We want this view. Let's check out how our kerbals are doing. Happy to be in space as always. Beautiful. Beautiful. See the parachutes all look fine as well. Yeah, cool. <laughs> oh, I need to check my, my, my telephone actually. Didn't check it while I was out. <laughs> Just uh, going through my uh oh my uh my GoPro lens is eight stops away. Cool. Oh, it's been delivered. Left, left near the front door. I better go grab that before someone steals it. So I'll be right back, guys. Thank you. 
and I'm back. Yeah, my uh, I bought a new GoPro lens because I I dropped my GoPro on the floor, on like a concrete floor, and it scratched the lens, which was a big sad. So I had to buy a new one because it was completely my fault. What is something's loose on this? Something's loose on this chair. Let me know. Hang on, guys, we're doing some chair repair. Oh, it looks like a screw is missing. I don't know where it would be. I think it's because uh, I built this chair and so I didn't do a very good job. <laughs> Vanilla sounds like you need a case or protector. No, I, I think I just need to not drop my GoPro. <laughs> it's because I clipped it onto my um, chest mount and I obviously didn't clip it in properly because then when I stood up, it just fell off. And uh, the, the, here we are today. There's a lot of people, I was expecting it to be like dwindled to like maybe a couple of hundred people still watching, but there's like a good audience. Hopefully you're like not devoting your entire attention to this live stream, right? Because nothing's really happening at the moment. <laughs> oh. <laughs> a pie. Oh wow, you're still doing this. Yep. When I said I'm doing a real-time man mission, I meant what I said. <laughs> Yeah, it's going well, I'd say. I'd say it's going pretty well. Ah. <laughs> I'm focused on nothing else from Big Sorsky. Have we had any new super chats? Don't think so, no. Cool. Look at that Aurora Borealis right there. Right? <laughs> Why is everyone obsessed with the heat shield? Like you can see the ablator, right? In the in the top. Like it's here. Uh, not that one. That one there. We've got too much. We've got 800 ablative units. And uh, that, that's, just like, that's like 700 more than we really need, to be honest. I miss the story time with Matt, to be honest. I mean, I still tell stories. I, don't, I just don't frame it in the story time with Matt. Um, but I don't really have any funny stories that I can really think of. <laughs> Adjusting my little fan. I got like a little fan that's like blasting like a waterized air, air and water into my face because this room is pretty wham. I'm gonna open the window again actually. Ooh, well, I'll tell you what, the weather forecast today was maybe a bit gutted actually. I picked this weekend to do this live stream because the weather was forecast was really bad. It was meant to be rainy all day. So I'm like, well, I'm not going to go like on a proper bike ride or do any sport that day. So I'll just do an indoor activity like a big long live stream. And would you believe it? It's like one of the hottest days we've had and kind of bummed out a bit. But, you know, I went on a little bike ride up to the shop. That was good. Um, Got to work on my bike now anyway. Um, So... I'm going to do that in a second. People want an EVA. I can do an EVA for you guys. Hopefully I don't. Who should we get to do the EVA? Let's do... Uh, let's do Bill. Because Bill was stuck on the command module for the entirety of the MUN mission. So it's only fair that he should have a go. I'm going on a little adventure. But yeah, there's the ship. Hmm. 
And there's the uh, there's Kerbin. It's not hot, though. It's like 14 degrees in Chesterfield. Right, except I live in a completely different region of the UK to Chesterfield. I live in Devon, which is like the south of England, like the far south, where it's generally a warmer climate. So, yeah, in Plymouth. And Plymouth like is on the border of Devon and Cornwall. So it's essentially the same weather as Cornwall rather than like necessarily North Devon, for example. So, yeah, it's pretty wham. Pretty wham here. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think that some people are just joining. They're like, oh my gosh, Matt's still here and talking as if I've just been here talking the entire time. Like, I have been dipping in and out, guys. For example, I did go to sleep for like seven hours <laughs> during this live stream. I'm just happy to see that it's still running, to be honest. You know, when we're troubleshooting loads of... It kept blue screening of deathing right before I started streaming. And, I've got, and to this day, it's annoying because like I still don't really know what was causing it to blue screen of death. Hasn't done it now for, like, you know, a long time. So, uh, hopefully, whatever it was is no longer happening. Oh. Don't know what the temperature is right now. Let's have a look. What is the actual temperature in Plymouth? Uh, it is 16 degrees Celsius, which I know to, like, people in, like, southern the United States and Australia is not that hot. But we're not, like, adapted to heat like you guys are. And also our houses have loads of insulation because it's always cold. So that our houses are absolutely boiling. And we don't have any air conditioning. My car doesn't even have air conditioning. My house doesn't have air conditioning either. So we're kind of, like, not built. Like, when I visited Florida, yeah, it was hot. But every single building had air conditioning, like every single one. So it was really, it was pretty manageable actually. Even though, even though I wasn't adapted to the heat. But in England, like from like 20 degrees onwards, it's like, it's very, very hot. And also I'm a bit hot because I've just got back from cycling along a road with loads of shopping on my back. So that's obviously heated me up a little bit. So I think once I've cooled down from that, it'll be fine. And also, the sun is currently shining into my room, which is a bit of a sweat box because of how small it is and how I've got this massive PC churning out loads of heat. So, yeah, uh, there's, 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 um, there's ways I can justify in saying that it's quite warm. Uh, yeah, friends from Malta came here. Malta's, I've been to Malta. It's a really, it's a nice, it's a nice country. And uses British plugs, so I don't have to bring any travel adapters. Well, look at this, like an hour and a half to go. And like, Kerbin, as you can see, I feel like in the time it's taped been from me sitting down to talk to you guys just now to like now, Kerbin has really noticeably grown bigger. So we are definitely rapidly descending down on our home planet. I'm going to induce a little bit of a fun spin. Just to add some sort of visual somethingness to the to the to the video. Uh, Matt, did you see the Starliner docking last night? So I, I know it docked. I haven't seen the footage yet because I've basically been doing this live stream <laughs> since I woke up. And I haven't. I saw the news that it had docked. So I was like, yes. So I'll watch it at some point, uh, probably when this is all over, this live stream. And I can go back to doing something else. 
But uh, as of yet, no. No, I haven't done any reloads, that guy. Uh, and then Pi. <laughs> uh, no, no reloads. You might have seen me making quick saves as I've been going along. That's literally just a safeguard against the Kraken. Like, if the game suddenly crashes to desktop for no reason, then I will take no shame in loading a quick save then, because obviously that wasn't my fault. But if I make a mistake, like if I crashed the lander or something, then I would just have to accept that as that's the stream over. It was kind of the rules I set myself. So although it says... Uh, no quick saves or anything. I am making quick saves just as a safeguard, which I recommend anyone do, actually. People who play hardcore KSP, they say they don't play with quick saves, and I respect that wholeheartedly. But I think you should still make quick saves every now and then because there's no way you can go through a playthrough of KSP without at least having one or two glitches that are completely out of your control uh, that can just mess up your entire mission. You might have seen me also make like custom quick saves like this. There we are. And naming them something. That's again just so I can, uh, if I want to get a thumbnail shot for the VOD when it's all done and ready to be uploaded or ready to be posted, I should say, then uh, I can just grab pictures from various stages in the mission just so I can get like real screenshots of what happened. That land, what Starliner? So I'm assuming you might have heard of a uh, Crew Dragon, SpaceX. Uh, Starliner is basically Boeing's answer to that. So it launches on the Atlas V at the moment. And uh, yeah, it's going to be the, the, the other uh, NASA commercial crew launch vehicle. <laughs> Businessman, is this stream still going? How are you not tired or sounding like you are dead? Please tell me. I went to sleep. I slept for like seven hours on stream. Not like literally in front of the stream setup. Like I, I went to bed. Like during like the... Um, at the moment, we're just coasting back from the mun. So we're just literally just drifting through space uh, over the course of four hours. Which obviously is enough time for me to go in and do other stuff. Like I went to the shops <laughs> during this period. Now I've just got back. And going from Kerbin to the mun was a six hour journey or seven hour journey. Well, it might have been even longer than that, actually. It was a very long time. So I did my burn to the Mun, and then I just went to bed. <laughs> and then I woke up just as I was entering Mun's sphere of influence, and that's how I've done it. Where is the lander? Well, I mean, um, we did the landing. The landing's over. We're going back home now. So I, I left the lander in Mun orbit. Sorry, solar bears. <laughs> Ooh, ah, I'm going to just turn this fan off now because I'm nice and refreshed. Please tell the story of the Google car. There's not a story. I was cycling along and I was coming up to a roundabout and the Google Street View car came around the roundabout and went past me. And as it went past me, I waved at it. And that's my story of the Google car. <laughs> Will you publish the shorter version of this stream? I don't know yet. My plan was to record this whole thing, but I forgot to press record. And then it was like an hour into the live stream at that point. So I'm like, oh, well, there goes that dream. A stream deck, not stream deck, Streamlabs does save a video of the stream to your computer, but I've realized that apparently Streamlabs is set to 720p output for some reason. I'm sure I set it to 1080p because the source is like 1440p. So obviously I messed up or something went wrong. So the video that Streamlabs is saving to the PC will probably be 720p. So I don't know if I really want to upload that. What I might do is just do this mission again with an identical rocket, but not do no time warp, like just do a normal mission, like with time warp, uh, just so I can showcase the rocket a bit better and uh, and all the other stuff, you know. <laughs> and uh, I've actually, I do have the, uh, the time lapse me, but I didn't show the construction of this rocket on stream. Uh, but I do have the footage of me building the rocket. My plan was maybe make that a Patreon-only video, or like a Patreon and YouTube channel members video only. Don't know if um, I'm going to follow through with that, or I might just make it a public video for a week where I just didn't get a chance to make a couple space for a video. Haven't really decided yet. We'll cross that bridge as we get there, I think. <laughs> when are you getting to Kerbin? So yeah, I haven't said this for like about an hour, maybe. 
So they, as you guys, as you, pfft, let's try that again. As you guys can see, there is a manoeuvre node on the screen. It says start burn time in one hour, 28 minutes, but it's not actually a burn. That is your 10 minute warning for atmospheric re-entry. So the re-entry point is, actually it's not, it's your 10 minute warning from periapsis. So, you know, it's basically like maybe like seven or eight minutes. So from between here to periapsis is 10 minutes. If you want to go away and do something else, because really not much is happening on stream, you can do so. Just make a note of how much time is left on this maneuver node. Say, right, an hour and 28 minutes. I'll set an alarm. We'll just remember that. And I'll come back to the stream in an hour and 28 minutes. And something will be happening again. Uh, alternatively, just follow me on Twitter and enable notifications. And join my Discord, enabling notifications as well. And on that 10-minute marker, or probably just a little bit before, actually, will um, I'll make an at everyone announcement on Discord and make a tweet um, announcing that re-entry is coming. And that's what we're going to do. That's my plan. Uh, yes, Betox Gaming, I have. You can re -like, rewind the live stream if you want to see it. Oh, the Delta V reading is correct again. That's fun. <sighs> Thank you, Jeremiah Bantam. By the way, if you guys are wondering, like, why I'm only responding to the chat on the screen rather than in the chat box, the chat on screen is the chat box, but it's like a 20-second delay, and that's because the stream is like a 20-second delay. So the chat on screen is so you know that that's what the chat box looks like for me when I say this. So there's like a 20-second, like, delay or so. So that's how you know if I'm answering a question... The question will be on screen, but it will have probably disappeared from the chat box because it's all scrolled up. That's the uh, that's why the chat is on screen there. So it's a bit more, you know, yeah. <laughs> While watching this, I feel like watching SpaceX's live stream. I feel like that's a that's a big compliment. SpaceX's live streams are great. Uh, I'd say this is probably more of a NASA live stream though, right? Because it's 720p. Um, but I appreciate the compliment nonetheless. Oh. Well, let's see. We've got an hour and 26 minutes. I might uh, head off. I'll probably back it about... I'll probably come back for the, like, the last half hour or something like that. So, uh, yes. I'll leave you guys to it. You can chill out and have some, have, uh, have, some, have some jolly old conversations with each other. And I shall return like Palpatine. <laughs>
Hello, my lovelies. <laughs> How is uh how are things going? Just uh just been uh fixing my bike. I think I fixed the problem with the uh the creek. One of the bolts that holds the uh the rear rack onto the bike was like super loose and it was all smoothed out so it couldn't be tightened, so I just removed it and replaced it and uh seems to be uh seems to be fixed now. So where are we? Let's have a look. I like how sometimes people just come back the instant that I come back to it. Then it just looks like I've been here this entire time when that's not the case. Cool. He back. <laughs> Let's see. So. We're, we're closing in. Under an hour to go now. So again, it still doesn't look like we've made much progress. But then like from here to here... It's only 47 minutes. But then from here to here, that's 10 minutes. So you can see how it's exponential. Like 10, 10, 10. So yeah, it's like it's going to get faster and faster, basically. So I think we're starting to basically get close enough to Kerbin where we're going to start very soon, start seeing it like noticeably change in size. Like before, because we were so far away and traveling like relatively so slowly. It, we couldn't really see the difference. But it's going to start uh, rapidly getting closer, I think. A lot of viewers here as well. It's great to see you guys. Well, I've had a super chat from Pilky7. £1.79. Thanks for making all of these great videos, Matt. You're very welcome. I'm assuming the super chat is like calibrated to dollars, right? Because I think one seventy nine is $2, isn't it? That's the only reason I can think of. Because I've had a couple of people give £1.79. Unless it was always Pilky7 and I've forgotten. In which case, thank you, Pilky79. 79. 79, why do I keep saying Pilky7, who donated £1.79? Oof, can we put an interior view? Yes, I can. We're looking from Jebel Dyer at the moment, and this is uh, either Bill or Bob, one of them. There they are. Wow. Fun fact, this is how I did some of the shots in Into the Warp. Like, I literally just put the camera like this and then moved the vessel to get, like, a slow camera pan. So, actually, everything is moving around the camera and the camera is stationary. But you can get that just right and you get, like, a nice little sort of, like, interior shot like that. Obviously, the vessel is spinning a bit faster than I would have spun it in Into the Warp or something like that. But that's how I kind of got those sorts of shots. And the way I did, like, some people wondered, like, how I got shots where, like, you can see inside the vessel, but it's not got this big cutaway. You can literally just see through the window and everything else is opaque. And the way I did that was I filmed a shot like this. And then I filmed a shot like this. And then I overlaid the two and just sort of masked out where I didn't want there to be the overlay. That's how, um, that's how I did that. So people are asking how long this has taken. So this will be about 18 hours now. So the stream crashed halfway through because um, I had a electrical fault in my house. Uh, the computer was fine. So the mission itself was uninterrupted. But the Wi-Fi, the internet dropped out for about two minutes, uh, which meant that the stream went down. So I had to sort of reboot the stream. So that's why we're only seven hours on this side. I would have had to split the stream into anyway because uh, YouTube VODs, so basically streams that have been uploaded, posted as videos, have a limit of 12 hours, which uh, thanks to the kind chat who told me that, I didn't realize that was the case. So um, I would have had to split it at some point anyway. So it's lucky that the electrical fault just happened to happen about when I needed to stop the stream anyway. You missed the landing, Zeno Reborn. What well, does matter? You can um, rewind, have a look. Ah, oh, 43 minutes. <laughs> greetings from the UK. I mean, I live in the UK as well, so I guess it's just greetings, right? 
wonder if pets at home navigate got that order through to anyone <laughs> for anyone that's just sort of joining by the way um there's a maneuver node here that's not a burn i need to do this this will be your 10 minute warning so this is kind of like happens 10 minutes before atmospheric entry in fact it doesn't it takes place about five to seven minutes i'd say before atmospheric entry so it's 10 minutes from periapsis but periapsis is at 15 kilometers which is obviously well within the atmosphere so that's kind of your marker. So if you want to go away and do something, because I appreciate not really a lot is happening, we're just drifting towards Kerbin, then you could just make note of how much is left on this maneuver node and just come back for, say, that. So if you wanted to go and do something now, just come back in 42 minutes and 27 seconds. And that's how, uh, that's how you know. Is it going to be a Matlan 2 video? There is. It might be tomorrow, but it will probably be next Sunday because I haven't finished editing it yet. And, uh, I think my poor, poor, poor computer just needs a rest after this stream is over. So, uh, yeah. <sighs> Academic Sports, new member. Thank you very much. Matt, please answer what's the distance. What do you mean, what's the difference? Dis distance, sorry. It's just the, to the, the curb into the Mun. I don't know what the difference is. I don't know what the distance is, but uh, it took about seven or eight hours to get from curb into the Mun after doing the initial burn. And it took about five hours to get from the Mun to curb in. But that was doing a very inefficient burn that just got us home a little bit quicker. Um, if I wanted to do things efficiently, it would have been about seven hours to get to curb in. But I wanted to save some time on the live stream and I wanted to keep the... Uh, the live stream time under 12 hours, ideally about 10 hours so that both streams are about the same sort of length. Uh, so I, I did that by sort of cutting corners. How's Plymouth? Plymouth's great. Very sunny, very warm. Having a great old time. Imagine doing no warp Duna. I did think about it. It did cross my mind. Like I could just build like a cheap dedicated PC just to run a real time Duna mission. And I just leave it streaming on like a dead on like on some Twitch channel. And uh we just follow it for like a year and uh yeah i could maybe like work it out so that when it lands on juno it's like new year's day or something <laughs> i don't know that's probably a terrible idea actually because no one will be watching it ah. oh you're on your way back already already what do you mean it's been 15 hours <laughs> 15 hours of streaming crazy <laughs> only real fans will watch that to the end i guess i'm not a real fan then because i haven't watched the whole stream <laughs> like i've gone away and done stuff i've been to the shops i've had a couple of i've had three meals throughout the course of this stream i had dinner yesterday breakfast today and uh, a bit of lunch today as well so yeah i've had three meals i've had a sleep i've had a good seven hours of sleep like uh, i've done i've managed to have, be quite productive while also live streaming <laughs> charge my phone twice yeah i've charged my phone once too fair but it depends on the time zone right like i timed it so i would be able to sleep during the uh curb into mun transition that's so i'm like i'm not gonna be able to do this in one sitting i will die so i'm gonna i've got to sleep for part of the stream so i may as well sleep on the journey from curb into mun i might do more streams yeah quim Burreras. um might be fun. Could even do a live uh, The Stranded episode, but that would be hard to coordinate with the uh, the stranded guest, I suppose. That's the problem with like The Stranded is that like there aren't many British people to collaborate with, um, so usually it's someone in a different time zone, and usually that person is in America. So when me and the other person have jobs and stuff, it's really hard to coordinate. So uh, I've already got the next two guests sorted. One of the interviews is all done, so uh, well, you know, little backs and forths is already done, so I need to just record that mission now. 
Uh, that would be to Juna, that mission. Uh, and then the following guest, we're still sort of trying to work out how to work around each other's schedules. Because we both work full time. And that this person lives in on the West Coast, basically, or the West Coast time zone of the United States, which is eight hours behind me. Uh, and we both have full-time jobs, so it's really hard to, like, find a moment in the day where we're both available, essentially. Thank you, Omdev Shastri. You are awesome as well. <sighs> Our gaming beast apparently has calculated the distance from the curb from curb into the mun as seventy kilometers. So there we are. Whoever wanted to know the answer, seventy kilometers. No, I said that wrong. Seventy thousand kilometers. I'm like, no, seventy kilometers isn't that much, right? I mean, with thirty-five kilometers. From a curve in, and we're very close. So yeah, seventy thousand kilometers was the trip. Matt, do you have a way to appeal on your Discord? I can't join it. You have to accept the rules. So you go to the rules channel, press accept rules. Unless you were banned, in which case, usually that's with good warning, a good reason, I'm afraid. You can get to the mo to the moon more faster without time warp. I know, but I kind of didn't want it. Like I know Scott Manley has done Mun and Back in an hour. I'm pretty sure Stratum Blitz has probably done something similar. I feel like uh, you can just build a ridiculously gigantic rocket that just constantly burns all the way to the Mun and then constantly burns its engines all the way back to Kerbin again. But I kind of wanted to do a, like an Apollo style one, and not just in the sense that we have a separate lander and a separate command pod. But uh, I kind of wanted, like, you know, uh, Apollo proportions. So um, it just looks like an Apollo mission. Because that's kind of it. And then it's like, oh, you're following the Apollo missions in the 60s. And it's like following a... I know it's not the same. But this is kind of like same sort of similar sort of vibes. I don't know. <laughs> Are you regretting your life choices yet? No, nah, it's been pretty fun. I'm enjoying... Enjoying it all. Whew. Oh, well, uh, 35 minutes. So that's about 45 minutes till the end of the stream. When will you record the next space this week? So I'll be recording that tomorrow, you know. And uh, I think Mark Marcus House does the same, where like we basically record it very close to the actual publication date, because what we're talking about is very up to the second in terms of like how uh, um, recent it is. Like sometimes, because mine is two days after Marcus's video, my video will often have stuff that isn't in Marcus's because stuff just happened in that tiny, tiny space of time. Uh, so it really is um, evident that, uh, you know, we are editing all the way up to the second of upload. So I think you can, there are things you can do beforehand. Like, for example, I've written a bit about the Starlink and I've written a bit about Starliner and for, uh, not Rocket Lab, uh, Astra's Rocket 4. Uh, but stuff like Starship, I'm like, I can't really write much until I can see what's in front of me and we can really pick what the biggest stories were for the week and kind of focus on those. Because, uh... Yeah, like, like for example, I could have written this big script last week, and then suddenly on Saturday, Tim Dodd's video dropped, and suddenly that has much, much more exciting stuff than any of the stuff I wrote about. So it's kind of screwed the whole script. It's all really unbalanced. So, uh, yeah, it's like, start, I don't tend to write and edit and record it until Sunday, and then basically I just spend, like, eight hours on Sunday just doing it. <laughs> so Sunday's like a work day for me. <sighs> I 
Oh, I've had a... Um, oh, will space this year ever be a thing? I liked the idea of doing space this year. Um, but then I just never found the time to edit the episode. And then it was like, March. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's probably a bit too late now. Uh, Peter Moss has given a very kind donation of $10. 10 US dollars, I should probably add. Uh, you have been here the entire time. It's just your sleep period aligned with the cruise and mission control had a bug and lost the downlink for a few minutes and that's why the live stream stopped. That's right. I mean, the live stream only stopped for like two minutes, whereas I have actually been away from the stream for several hours at a time. <laughs> so, uh, but I like the, I like the, I like the head cannon there. I like the head cannon. Do you think Blue Origin copying SpaceX? I mean, they're obviously taking some inspiration. Project Jarvis, there's no real denying from any party that that's not... That, 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 that only exists because Starship exists. But, you know, it's good to have competition. I wouldn't want just one corporation, you know, do it, like, owning everything. Which is a... Uh, something that, you know, could well happen. If Starship does what SpaceX claims it will be able to do then it's gonna make so many companies obsolete because if you're only paying for the fuel and not a single aspect of the launch vehicle that's colossal so it's gonna be really interesting i think u.s government's always gonna try and go for a variety of launch providers because they want to encourage american business and to help that sort of thing but private companies, if they want to launch a satellite, they're just going to go with the, the lowest bidder. And if Starship can just undermine the cost of every other launch provider, and it's not even close, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. The Blue Wizard asking on behalf of a Discord member, will you upload the stream as a VOD? Uh, yes and no to the second part so yes i'm gonna upload this live stream as a vod video on demand for those who don't know so basically you can just watch the stream as if it were a video um no i'm not gonna edit it down just because i forgot to record it <laughs> like use like from like use my capture card software uh and this stream is only going out in 720p due to the fact that i forgot to check what my output was set to and i can't change it now midstream so it's a, it's a seven. It will be a seven twenty p vod, unfortunately. But I've, I have I thought about just doing the mission again with the exact same rocket, but I just have time warp, and that's probably a happy medium. But I could always stream that effort, and we can see I, I could just do a live stream again uh, of just this exact same mission with the exact same rocket. But I'm allowed to quick save and time warp and all that good stuff, and uh, that would be the equivalent of a shortened version of this live stream. <laughs> I wonder what the cost of refurbishing both the booster and Starship after a launch would come out to be. I mean, the problem is because SpaceX is a private company, we probably will never know. Like, we don't know, as far as I'm aware, we don't know what the cost of a Falcon 9 refurbishment is. Um, it's probably h fairly high. I mean, we can obviously get them turned around really quick. Like, I think SpaceX said that they managed to get one booster turned around in, was it seven days or nine days? Either way, a very, very, very short amount of time. So they're probably not... I don't know if they're replacing Merlin engines. They've probably got the Merlin down, so it doesn't need replacing. But uh, I'm just speculating at this point. I don't think we'll ever find out the cost of a Starship refurbishment. But yeah, that will probably get factored into the cost of a launch. So I think maybe Elon Musk and I guess SpaceX as a whole are probably making some slightly bolder claims than what Starship will eventually be able to do. But nonetheless, not losing any hardware is going to be huge. I have a big, big interview for a scientific program. Got any words for advice? If it's on, uh, if it's face to face, you know, wear a suit, be smart. If it's on webcam, still dress up like you're seeing them face to face. Obviously, you might not have to worry about, you know, trousers, but definitely, you know, your torso, suit and tie. I'm assuming you're a guy, by the way. <laughs> um, you know, and uh, maybe watch some video, like interview tips on YouTube, uh, especially if they ask you, do you have any questions for us? They want you to ask questions. Definitely ask questions. Don't just say no. Um, if you're not sure what to ask, I don't know what field you're going into. So you're going to have to maybe Google some idea, like go into some forums of people in that field. And there will probably be forum topics about what sort of questions to ask or look at the company or wherever it is you're applying for. See what they do. See if you can come up with your own questions you might actually be curious about. And uh, yeah, be confident. And remember that they, uh, they're they not out to get you. Like they want you. So um 
try not to overthink things. <laughs> like they're genuinely just trying to get to know you, I suppose, in the questions like tell me about yourself and things like that. There we go. There's some there's some interview tips for me. Oh, 27 minutes to go. Until the 10 minute warning. What do you think will end up being used more, SLS or Starship? Starship. It's not even... Even NASA has said that SLS is not cost viable. And then everyone was like, but my brother in Christ, you built the rocket. <laughs> How tired are you? I'm a bit tired. Not that tired, to be fair. Meg the shark. Hi, I really love your videos. How are you doing, mate? I'm doing good. Just sort of like, don't know what to do, because I was thinking about heading off and doing something productive again quickly, but don't have that much time. <laughs> How long have we got left? 26 minutes. Why hasn't NASA tried recovering rockets like SpaceX? Because NASA doesn't have any rockets, apart from SLS. Uh, before SLS, NASA just used United Launch Alliance and SpaceX and other launch providers. Uh, even Virgin Orbit, um, or Virgin Orbit, even Virgin Galactic and Blue Shepard have carried Blue Shepard. Let me try all this again. Virgin Galactic's space plane thing that Richard Br Branson flew on and Blue Orange and New Shepard have both carried NASA payloads to space. Like, NASA uses everyone. What do you think of the British rocket startups? I mean, I guess OneWeb is British, technically. Um, so uh, that's pretty cool. Biggest constellation after Starlink. What's your biggest rocket you've ever made? That's a good question. Bayamoth was an SSTO. That was pretty massive. That was a 500 seat late SSTO, uh, which was horrible to fly. I never want to do that mission ever again. In fact, I didn't even get it back from late. I was like, look, it's got the fuel. These, this is the maths. I can't do this anymore. It's just too painful to fly because uh, it's just so big. That was just, that was a pretty big rocket. Um, but that was obviously a single stage. Pro I've probably done bigger. I mean, the um, single launch International Space Station has got to be up there. The um, oh, my old school Eve rockets before I knew how to design efficient Eve ascenders were pretty big. There's another. Oh yeah, the spaceport rocket. That's got to be. I'd say that's probably the biggest one. So if you type in the words Matt Lown giant space station, the thumbnail says spaceport. I'd have that. That's probably at least in the top 10, but I think that is the biggest rocket. I've, I can't, I'm struggling to think of a bigger one than that. New life on late. The life on late, some of the life on late rockets, to be fair, have been pretty big as well. So, uh, so how many minutes until we re-enter? About half an hour, about 30 minutes. Where are we? Yeah, we're getting closer. I know it's not it doesn't look like we're making much progress, but we are getting faster and like you can see we are accelerating. And we're accelerating at a relatively fast pace. Like, look how quickly that number's going up, and that's gonna get faster and faster. So we are building up speed as we descend towards periapsis. So it still looks fairly stationary, Kerbin, in terms of like it doesn't like it's getting any closer to us. But there'll come a point where suddenly we will see it really start closing in. Oh, 
what is your favorite kind of mission to do? Um, I think I really like assembling um, low carbon orbit space stations. I find that really sort of satisfying, like piecing it all together using different launches. Those are pretty fun. Um, building surface bases is always really fun as well. Um, generally, the more simple ones. Like, I don't derive that much pleasure from doing the uh, insanely difficult missions. I like the idea of doing them, and I'm very satisfied once I've done them, but sometimes they can be a bit of a slog. Like, one of them was the uh, single stage to everywhere. I've done a video where I got an SSTO and visited every planet and moon without refueling. It was a really grueling mission. It took absolutely ages, and I had so much footage. It took weeks to edit it. It was a bit of a nightmare, but it was a fun challenge idea I had. I really wanted to try it to see if I could. And once I realized I, well, once I did it, I confirmed that I could, in fact, do that. And it was really a satisfying feeling. So that was a fun mission. Oh, my gosh. What is this Starship Onboard Lavatory development when? This is not a funny joke. I don't understand why that's funny. Is this a meme? Oh, I don't care. Whatever. Um, I did, like, I think a, a recent one. I say recent. It was probably, like, a year and a half ago now. was um, how far can we push the stock Kerbal X? I was always like, the stock Kerbal X can probably go to Elu. It's advertised as a Minmus lander, and if you're really brave, Mun. No, in fact, I think it's the other way around. I think it's just a, 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 a low-range crew vessel that, if you're good enough, can land on Minmus. And I'm like, I reckon I'm pr I'm pr I'm pr I'm pretty good at Kerbal Space Program. I'm reckon I I reckon I can push it further than Minmus, and I ended up landing it without any modifications, mind. I ended up landing it on Pol and Bop, which are both moons of Jewel. And uh, then returned to Kerbin without any tricks or refueling or anything. Just by doing a bunch of gravity assists and hyper-efficient flying to get it to make it. And I ended up getting back to Kerbin with very little fuel to spare. So that was a pretty satisfying mission to pull off. <sighs> Matt, how much do you think Starship development has cost so far? <laughs> I, I, you know, it's uh, it's difficult to say. Each of those vehicles will definitely cost millions, easily. Those Raptor engines will probably cost millions. I, I, but I, I really, I couldn't say. But yeah, I mean, it helps that they've got the literal richest man on the planet bankrolling the whole program. <laughs> oh, Marsman1234. Damn, bro, I was here for the Mun landing at 2 a.m. and then I just woke up at 8 a.m. and now we're still going. Like, yep, we are still here. We are still broadcasting. <laughs> that would be a good name for this live stream, wouldn't it? We are still broadcasting. Are you happy that Starliner finally launched? I mean, this is not the first time Starliner launched. This is the second attempt at launching Starliner. The first time they launched it, it didn't make the orbit. Like, it made orbit, but it didn't make the correct orbit. It wouldn't have been able to reach the International Space Station, so then it just had to accept its failed orbit, and then it just landed safely in the desert. Um, this is the second attempt at launching Starliner, and it's got a lot better because it made it to the International Space Station. There were a couple of failures, like um, two thrusters failed um, during its coast. Um, so there was a thruster that was burning, which then failed. It shut down unexpectedly early, so the flight control system then shifted its job to another thruster, which then also failed. So then that job was then shifted to a third thruster that didn't fail, and the Starliner made it to orbit. That was the only hitch that really happened. Which is fine, because these are redundant systems, that's what they're for, so the redundant systems work as designed. But obviously Boeing will want to investigate why that happened and see if they can do anything to uh, reduce the chances of that happening again, basically. Okay, we are 18 minutes away from the 10 minute warning. Here we built a lander combined with a rover. I have built, like, landers that have rovers inside them. And I've just built giant rovers that, like, um... 
are la they are just their own landers, <laughs> basically. Hmm. But I think I see what you mean. I think I know what you... You're... What's that? Well, I've just had a... A sort of weird noise going on. I think just some obscure app has just sent a notification. with me guys Oh, sorry. I'm back now. <laughs> How are we doing? 16 minutes from the final countdown. And yeah, Kerbin is getting bigger. We are getting closer. I probably won't um I probably won't decouple the lower stage until the final 10 minutes begin because I'm going to just send out a uh, mass discord ping and make a twitter post warning people that uh it's um it's about to start the final descent Turn off my alarm I set actually because I'm at my computer now, so I don't need the alarm on. Cool. I'm just gonna quickly grab a drink and uh some preparations for the final edge. So I might be AFK for like five minutes or so, guys. So I'll be back momentarily. Enjoy the views of Kerbin as it rapidly approaches and pray, hope and pray that I get back before we hit the atmosphere.
Oh, sorry, I just burped into the microphone. So this is it. We'll be re-entering very soon. Hope everyone's excited. Sorry guys, just eating a banana. Just talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, we are really, really accelerating now. As you can see. Oh yeah, have we had any um super chats? Yeah, we had a member comment though. Never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down. I always do appreciate that, so thank you. So time to pair ups is the one we're looking at now. So this number here. Uh, yeah, by the way, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry, guys, by the way, about it being only um, 720p. That's completely my bad. I just set it up wrong, and now I can't change that. <laughs> Are you also streaming on Twitch? I am not, I'm afraid. <laughs> hey Matt, are you going to do a proximity landing at the KSC? No. <laughs> Oh, class is here. Class. I'm going to make the uh, Discord announcement uh, once this Time to Maneuver node runs out, which is 55 seconds away. <laughs> My man's is good. What inspired you to do this mission without time warp? I've been asking myself that ever since I started, and I honestly don't know. <laughs> I just thought it'd be like, huh, wouldn't it be cool if someone did this? I think people have, I'm, I'm like, I know people have done this before, but um, I thought I would just join their rags. I don't know if anyone's ever done an Apollo style one. I'm not claiming to be the first one to do a uh, time warpless Apollo style, because I genuinely just don't know if the other missions were Apollo style or if they were direct ascent. <laughs> Well, I'm not eating any more, but I was uh, rad in one to three. I was eating a banana. Oh, and draw on a planet. The final countdown. Da, 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 da. And that's it. We are now less than 10 minutes from Kerbin re-entry. So let's 
send out the notifications to people. Ah, let's put out the Discord announcement. <laughs> Whoever set the uh, the banner image on Discord for the uh, the event is great. Thanks for near or class or whoever it was. <laughs> okay, we have sent out the ten minute warning for people. Well, let me get my... Let's just get Streamlabs back open. Okay. Hang on. All right. The viewers are coming in. <laughs> Turn my fan on, I think. Oh, there we go. That's better. Nice and cool now. You guys are like, oh, Mike, you've forgotten Pachi. It's like, my dudes, I've been staring at this rocket for the past 18 hours. I know it's got parachutes. You're not going to trick me. I'm going to make a little prepare for re-entry. I've said it ad nauseum now, but in case anyone's not aware of why I just made a quick save when I said I'm not using quick saves in this mission, I've just been making quick saves throughout just to bookmark various key moments. If I want to go back and make like a, a photo album of some of the key points or like get an image for the thumbnail, I can just reload those moments to get the photos. I have no intention of actually using those quick saves like as a as a normal quick save. So I'm yes, I'm creating quick saves. I ain't using quick saves though. That'd be the difference. So, there we are. There's 40 kilometer mark. Oh, now do a real-time moon mission in RSS. Super chat message from Kyle Devine, who's given me 10 US dollars. Thank you very much for the donation. And uh, I don't think you can do uh, moon missions in Rainbow Six Siege, to be honest. So I'm going to have to pass on that. <laughs> in all seriousness, um, I probably won't do this in uh, <coughs> uh, real solar system, no. If I was going to do this for anything other than the man, it would probably be Minmus, but pff, nah, I think Minmus is a bit too far, isn't it? Okay, so let's prepare for re-entry. Just fold all this stuff in. Not that it's going to survive, but it means that there's going to be less debris scatter when this lower stage explodes. Right. And there we are. There goes the spaceship. And then this was all that was left. As we make our final descent. And yep, the parachutes are now armed. It's an exciting moment. We've got our 1,610 people watching. Can we get it to 2,000? Don't know. No, I don't know. It's just, unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to be splashing down in the ocean, which is a shame. That would have been a real cherry on the cake, but I wasn't aiming for any particular location on Kerbin. I just, wanted to, I just, I just picked the fastest route home, basically. Um, 
you can sort of plan where you're landing based on how you eject from the MUN. Like, you can sort of cut the corner of your orbit, if that makes sense, by burning slightly radially in. And that helps you pick where you're going to end up on Kerbin. But I just picked whatever. I said, well, I'll, I'll land wherever, just whatever gets me home fastest. Because I don't want the stream to go on too long. Uh, Thomas Joyce gave me a very generous uh, 499 donation, US dollars. Tired yet? Hope you're doing well. I'm doing great. You know, I've um, I had a little sl I've had a sleep during, during this live stream. I've eaten. Um, it's been great. Yeah. Brandon Land has also donated uh, two US dollars. Shalom from Tel Aviv, Israel. Um, cool. And what's this comment here? We can get there if Beth reads us a story. Beth's not in, you know. She's a, uh, she's at a hair appointment, and she's oh, the atmosphere popped, so it's all loaded. Land on the helipad, yeah. Look how quickly we're accelerating now. Do you remember when it was like, when it when it was accelerating one meter per second per second? That was like a really high rate of acceleration, but now it's like just. Really, really rapidly. Jet, shall I do the heat shield? If I can get two thousand viewers, I will jettison this heat shield. Let's go. <laughs> oh, we're nearly entering the atmosphere. <laughs> Have me money from Brandon Land. Uh, two US dollars. Thank you very much. Oh, this is it. We're now under 100 kilometers off the surface. That's 90 kilometers. <laughs> 80 kilometers. Let's go, lads. I should have got beer or something to celebrate re-entry. I've not got anything. I've got a bottle of water. It'll do. Oh! The music stopped. This is it. Oh, here we go. Should we look inside? Kerbals don't seem phased at all, do they? Resilient. <laughs> and it's going well. It's going really well. Our apoapsis is now uh, rapidly falling. Our apoapsis is still not as low as we want it to be. It's still outside of Kerbin's atmosphere, but look at our trajectory. There is no way we're going to um, be an exiting the atmosphere again. Oh, and are we going to make it to the ocean? Hey, that'd be a pretty neat thing if we can do that. I don't think we are. I think we're going to just undershoot, but, you know, I can always hope. Our blader is holding up very nicely as well. Bit of a bit of a high G-force, though, the curls are tolerating, but they're pretty hardy. <laughs> Pop the heat shield. I can't deploy the heat shield now. And we're not even at 2,000 viewers. We're at 1,918. And there we are. We are through the plasma. Just got to wait for the parachutes to deploy when it's safe. Oh, there they go. <laughs> that was like a bit of a tense moment, to be honest. And where are we landing? In the desert. When if you had to climb, I landed like the peak of that mountain and ended up just rolling off and exploded. <laughs> I probably wouldn't laugh if I. Oh, come on. Let's see if we can land in the water. <laughs> Let's get a nice little photo. Oh, never mind. The clouds appeared. <laughs> 2K? All right. I'll, well, I mean, it's, it doesn't matter now, does it? <laughs> Look at that. Lown Aerospace, the Lown Liner. <laughs> I 
less than 5,000 meters from the surface now. It would have been absolutely f so funny if I landed in that lake. That would have been perfect. Oh well. Are the parachutes going to open? Sorry. <laughs> that was a bit scary, wasn't it? And there we are. I should have had my Patreon thing ready to just start scrolling, but I, but I don't. Oh, I can hear Beth coming back. <laughs> Whoop. <laughs> I was here. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> just quick save just in case. Oh, can't quick save while about to crash. Oh no. Where even is the lake? Yeah, it's too far. <laughs> Shall I do something epic for the stream that I might regret? Way! <laughs> Should we remove this helmet? Jebediah, ghost riding the whip. <laughs> <laughs> Witness me. <laughs> oh, there's the landing about to happen. And it's landed. Now I've got to make sure Jebediah gets down safely. And he's broken his neck. Can I get an F in chat, boys? <laughs> JK. And there we are. Let's get them all out. Come on. Whoops. I didn't mean to plant the flag yet. <laughs> well, there we are. There's the flag. <laughs> Let's just take it down. Got to plant the flag in a better spot than that. There we go. Remove helmet. And let's get um, Bob. Come on, Bob, you can do it. Let's uh, remove the helmet, remove the neck, and that's it. Let's just uh, get the flag planted. It's a historic moment, guys. <laughs> We made it home. And that's genuinely like, I was fearful for um, Jebediah and Bob's lives. Because like, I wasn't allowed to use quick saves on the landing. And it was a very stressful Mun descent because, uh, you know, it was, I couldn't use quick saves. And there we are. Let's uh, back them off a bit. And that's it. That's the that's the mission all done. <laughs> Jebediah is a uh, vibrating <laughs> there. <laughs> Maybe he's just a bit cold in the desert. Ooh, tw twin animations. I've had a few super chats. Oh, back on. Scrolled on the wrong screen. I've had a few super chats. Uh, Tailbox super chatted uh, 19 S E K. Thanks so much. Clubster Neon super chatted five euros. He was there. Well done, Matt. Crazy Chris, two of two super chatted two pounds. Well done on your deep space adventure. A dollar right, super chatted Canadian dollars of two dollars seventy five. Mission not impossible, just time consuming. Brandon Land super chatted two dollars. Have me have me money. Oh, I already did that one. Yeah, no, anyway, send a plane to meet them. I think I'm just gonna turn off Kerbal Space Program now. To be honest, guys, and uh, and just get blackout drunk. You know, it's, it's still, it's, it's half four in the afternoon. I, I can't, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But uh, yeah, guys, hope, hope this was a fun mission. I love how everyone's like, 
looking at the chat, like you wouldn't think from like the reaction is like all I've done is a man mission, not knowing that it is a the ridiculous rule of um of of, of no time warp basically. Uh, Beth sent me a text for some reason. Uh, cool. Well, that's it. Uh, I'm going to just end the stream now. So, guys, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. These past 20 hours or so have been a real roller coaster. Let's, uh, yeah, we'll do this again sometime. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to water. Oh, Commander Shmir. Elu next. That joke again. <sighs> Thank you for the super.